PKA 464. Kyle? A couple of sponsors tonight, Smart Mouth, Casper, and Morgan. And Morgan, because you don't need a cheat code to get full compensation after a car crash or other injury, you need Morgan & Morgan, the personal injury law firm that's for the people, not the powerful. They're a family-owned uh, firm that never represents large corporations. Morgan & Morgan will take on the insurance company so you can focus on getting back to full health. For, uh, for all their services, visit ForThePeople.com slash pka for a free case review i like i like the pantomiming from uh, from taylor like never, <laughs> well, they, never. They, get, they get me amped up because they're not about corporations they're, they're about the, the people, people. Mm -hmm. and pka that's a podcast of the people from now on and <laughs> <laughs> and so you know we're really amped up to have morgan and morgan uh on the show so yeah i mean i mean you really do need someone like them if you if you're in that situation i've known people that had personal injury issues with car crashes and stuff and it's a it's a real hassle but if you can get somebody in there to represent you you can come out well taken care of and you can compensate appropriately you know who Good. else has real life cheat codes ti taylor why don't you tell us about ti yeah. Well, I actually, Kyle seemed to have a take that was different than mine. And so you, you lead off with the story, Kyle, and I'll, I'll jump in. Well, it came out that I guess that T.I. has been going to the gynecologist with his daughter for years now. Hell yeah. And, and sitting in the office during the exam. And the, 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 the guy's like, you know, um, you don't have to be in here with me, T.I. You know, no, dis no disrespect. Do they specify if he's staring down the barrel? Right down when, the barrel. In the office is the exam room. Speculum. I assume <laughs> I assume waiting room all this time. Oh no, he's in there. He wants to know what's up. Yeah. And uh the whole purpose of this, of course, is he wants to know is his daughter still a virgin? Is her hymen intact? And he's getting the lowdown from the doc. And I, I just feel like the whole time in and, and the doc I just imagine you know, the docs under there checking things out. This is how you do it, by the way. Mm -hmm. And and, and he, he gives T.I. the thumbs up, and, and, and T.I. is like, yeah, my daughter's still a virgin. All right. Meanwhile, she's getting railed in the ass. We right. all know that, right? I, I like to think the gynecologist <laughs> is like, is her butthole normally this loose? Oh, God. <laughs> I, hope, I was going to. I hope I the gonna... gynecologist doesn't use the phrase butthole. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, Doctor. she does appear to be a virgin, but she shit on the examination. <laughs> she might have butthole cancer. I don't know. That's not my specialty. <laughs> it looked. It looked like the uh, rubber glove after you done take it off. Yeah. <laughs> like a, what, what did Borat say? It looks like a wizard sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> like sleeve yeah. I was gonna put Ti in cool guy of the week category for this it's until best. I found out that he brags on his son. For getting laid, and his son's only fifteen, and so as a cool gender, guy of the year, as an where you headed with this? I was going to say that now it's sexist. If he got his son's penis, uh, you know, scent analysis, analyzed, and like you know, yeah, to make sure that DNA no, testing, yeah, look yeah, for a little girl DNA on testing, it, then it would be cool. But you know, Ti, I'm not down for treating men and women differently, so that knocks you off the list. Men and women are exactly the same. Yeah, that's why they should be able to fight against each other in the UFC. Clearly, that's my that's my new opinion of the whole trans fighter <laughs> thing is that they don't need their own league. One step further, women don't need their own league. Mm -hmm. Mash it all together. Just see how it goes. Just work. Think harder, of the girls. viewership. Think of the money they would raise. I never have bought a UFC event. The only time I watch it is when a friend of mine who's really into it buys it and he has us all over. If they say there's a, a dude fighting a chick. Even if it's like 120 pound fly weight or straw weight, whatever it is, I'm buying it. I'm tuning in. It's going to be entertaining as fuck. Like, you know, they give the people what they want. Mm. Do you think that uh, ancient <clears throat> Roman emperors thought that the Christians had a chance against the lions? No, <laughs> of course not. But it was good for for morale and Roman uh, Zeus and the rest. <laughs> like, that's, that's why they did it i would be okay if they started like if they put out a new belt out there for like the mixed gender championship mm. and returning a uh, mixed gender champion mel gibson and he, just, he just comes out he, he, he alex he's, baldwin he's two weight classes right. higher oh. gives it a go <laughs> <laughs> no mel gibson identifies as a woman one hour every eight weeks during his fight and like okay you see mel gibson he's jacked shredded. For is a he dude jacked. Oh, yeah, yeah he's, he's on HGH. Yeah, he's jacked. He's huge. 
Hmm. And good for him. And he's got a beard that just won't quit. He's got the yep. kind of beard, Woody, that you could emulate if you really <laughs> pushed yourself. Actually, like the, yeah. You distinguished like gray stripes down the middle. Mm. It's he's good. Got that, he's got that pointy like, like, like chin hair. I'd have that... some level of gray on the sides with like a, a Reddit downvote arrow <laughs> coming Sick. off of my chin. That's perfect. That's it's intimidating. <laughs> it's <laughs> discouraging. <laughs> <laughs> but is Getting back to T.I., isn't this creepy as fuck, though? It's like, absolutely like, creepy as fuck. Like, like, I don't know how I feel. I, this is something that I feel that was definitely probably done in olden times by really creepy, overbearing parents, for sure. And it just it reminded me of a part in that book, It, where <laughs> Beverly's father is like, it, it thinks that maybe she's been fucking all those boys. And he, he's like, take, our, take your pants off. I want to check to see if you're intact. And she's like, no. And she's like fucking backing away and running from her dad. because he. When wants you said to olden her. days, I didn't think you meant like mid 80s. <laughs> like, well, that was, like, that was the 50s. That was the, that 50s, was the that, okay. Yeah, yeah. But I was actually, you know, even farther back is when I think. 1500s, he'd be like, doctor, is she a virgin? And he's got his big bird mask on. <laughs> and like, the good news is she is a virgin. Bad news, she is a witch. <laughs> <laughs> she was a virgin until I deflowered her with my bird mask. <laughs> <laughs> I leaned in a bit far. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, she is. No, n- no, no, not, no, not just like blood, that when she blood. got here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I need one of those masks. And I, I don't oh, yeah. think checking the hymen cool. is a reliable way to, to tell. Well, of course, a hymen can break from a bunch of things, right? Horseback mm-hmm. riders get deflowered at like eight years old for their horseback riding. It's part of the deal. Um, so that's why it's Woody's favorite sport. Right? That and the kegels. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Depending on kegling. Yeah, it's just... Well, no, like uh, apparently, apparently horseback riders, tight as fuck, because they're effectively like kegling with their knees on the side of these horses. And I mean, it's on the internet. It's Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't lie about um, that. But, but also, there are a bunch of reasons that a girl right. might not have a hymen. One of them being genetic, some of them being lifestyle. You can't just go in there and check, I think. Or that she's a whore. Yeah. yeah it's probably, you know, Occam's razor here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? You think that guy would have phrased his whole thing differently if he knew how we used his, his razor now? Like, <laughs> like, like, if he would have been like, simplest thing off in the explanation, but not in like instances that are super retarded. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a nice little addendum. I, I just, uh, I just don't think Ti's daughter rides a lot of horses anyway. You know, it's it, that seems unlikely. Mm. Uh, and what would he do if she were found to be unintact? It, it, uh, what's okay. his reaction? And is the gyno covering for her? Because I would think that's like the ethical thing to do. If you had a weird dad checking on you like that, the doctor would be like, yeah, st- still fresh. Still still fresh. Yeah, yeah still, uh, I don't know, as the fresh out of the fact- factory stock, maybe? What do you go for here? It's got that new pussy smell. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> that, that is actually what the doctor would say. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah, still, it's, got the, it's got that new pussy smell. I'll cover for you. I'm going to put this scented tree between your legs. So he's <laughs> like a like, credit card like my swipe. New Acura. <laughs> Jesus Definitely not my pussy. Yeah, but yeah, uh, T.I. seems a little unhinged if, that's, if he actually does that. And... I mean, it, it, he definitely he doesn't. It. Shouldn't have said actually. He tweets it. He yeah. said it straight up. He tweeted I go it in like it sure was I, a life. He's bragging that he had figured out. Like, like I, you know what? I'm a little cleverer than the average dad. I go into the gynecologist's office and figure out, you know, and ask. Dude, about someone go to Reddit life hacks and put in. Want to make sure your daughter's not a whore? Go in with her to the gynecologist and. and see <laughs> that is. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to do that. That's so weird. Yeah, we well, should we do it on Saturday and get our fans to upvote it and yeah. watch it like we go somewhere. The telekinesis subreddit. You go over there now and it's a bunch of our listeners trolling people who think they're psychic. Oh no! <laughs> no, it's it's really funny though. Good, good for them. Why? What, what are they going to do? That? Mind bullet you? Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> it's a legitimate profession, Taylor. Telekinesis? Is it telekinesis yeah. moving things? That's moving things. Yeah, yeah. moving stuff in your mind. Isn't that what you said? Am I crazy? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what they think they can do. It's like mm-hmm. they can focus really hard on oh. a coffee cup will shake or something. When I was a little kid, I didn't think I could do it because there was no evidence, but I tried. I thought oh, we all tried. I thought You know how you can tell it's fake? It's not a single one of those people has talked about beating themselves off with their mind. Mm. That 
That's pretty cool. That'd be the right? go-to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you you pleb sitting on your hand to get it numb? Nah, I just imagine. <laughs> Two big, burly, I mean, feminine hands. <laughs> <laughs> I like might be into something. Now. I'm not. He's like, yeah, you know how you sit on your hand to get it numb? Like, like yeah, that, that's everyone, right? No. Don't you remember when you heard about that when you were like 14? The stranger. And then you, you, like, you did it once and you're like, this doesn't. This doesn't put your hand to sleep. I Just was sitting on your hand. I was with you until the did it part. I, I, that do doesn't, it? Work. doesn't work. <laughs> Man, I thought we all did it once and realized this is just a way for older kids to make us sit on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it work though? I think I could put my hand. It's to sleep awful. You like, need dexterity for that job. <laughs> you know, when your hand falls asleep to the point that it's just like, like the guy in what is it, Scary Movie Two? He's like, take my hand, take my strong that, hand, yeah, take my strong hand, <laughs> my like, strong hand. Your hands like that, like you can't even grasp. Like you're, mm. it's like, it really is like somebody else's hand. Well, somebody hypothetically, else's hand if you had a flashlight, could you operate that? No, you it's can't. Like, I, I it's feel like, like a hand drop from a disabled stranger. The numb hand and the auto blow just seems redundant. Yeah. Have you ever taken a shit so long that when you stand up, you almost fall over? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's I think a lot like of that, that is like having your, your elbows on your thigh, like like the top of your thighs, though. You know, oh, texting. I thought That's it not helping the blood flow. Where the seat hit the back of your legs. Yeah, too. That's I think I, I think it's thought. I think it's the combination. You're you're just What's cutting the that blood flow off. When that happens to you guys, what I do is I will move my feet back, like more to the side of the toilet, and I'll do almost like a wall sit. But I'll like elevate myself off the toilet, give my legs some more blood I feel flow. Like I have a better and method. Then, Sit down. Okay. I feel like my shits aren't so strenuous that I require a technique. <laughs> this is after a, a night of like nothing but double cheese pizzas and wings. And it's like we're talking about how to do with a proper deadlift. It was like, so how do you guys shit? You, the, do you do the Russian squat? That's me. I, I like I, like wide stance. Well, the right, important right, thing is you can't let back. your back curve or you can throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> so let's I, I, for the purposes of the description, we'll pretend that the toilet seat is square. What's making it numb is you're on the leading edge and it's cutting across mm -hmm. your legs. The solution, if you're in that situation, is to slide back and get your legs on the parallel part of the square. Or the squatty potty, which Ooh. I wish is a, is a product that I wish sponsored us because it is absurd. And I, I, it's, it, I, apparently it works. I've heard people talk about using it and it seems like they're far too rich to have to lie about a pooping device. So I believe them. <laughs> Uh, I, I we have them so in every bathroom of our house, and we had them. And I, I don't need one. I don't like it because I feel like guests come in and judge our pooping habits. So now it's like <laughs> master bedroom, and I think it's in the downstairs guest, which I wouldn't choose. But uh, <laughs> they they like drag it out in the living room, thinking it's a, a dinner tray. They're like, oh, this thing's great. It's a little low. Oh, 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 oh. One of your like guy friends comes up and he's like, I love your elevated pissing stand. <laughs> <laughs> Just standing there. Death Gives an from extra loud ball. splash. I feel alpha. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hitting that toilet hard. I've never used a squatty potty, but uh -uh. like it makes sense. Because our bodies are designed to shit in like a, a real squat position. Like it gets your intestines and, and all the parts and bits in, in a line. So it just shoots right out. But okay. we're kind of kinked up when we're sitting at right angles and such. Uh, so it makes sense. Do, do, do. Yeah. 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 We're, we're, we're like that, that one Tetris block that's like a, like a weird S. Yeah. It that's makes that, sense. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's we should just poop standing like. straight up and, and let just let what ha whatever happens, happens. <laughs> That's that worth a try. <laughs> just as straight as an arrow, and just 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 give it hell. Somebody get a video of that and put it on Reddit somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Standing shitting. Ever wonder what <laughs> happens if you power poo? <laughs> I think we watched on the show that clip from like it, this might have been years ago, where it's like a security cam from Six Flags, oh. or some shit, and this big fat bitch is like trying to do the. Oh, I'm just kind of meandering around this mostly quiet area. I'm definitely not scoping for people. Perfect. She pulls like her <laughs> jeggings down and just fires a hot magma rope right onto the pavement and, and then just walks away. Just walks away. The I've seen crime. so many of those. It seems like the Asians are more prone to that sort of street shitting. But I, I've seen several clips of very cute Korean and Japanese girls just being like, oh, must have pooperoo. 
and just fucking <laughs> scope the place out and then just drop trow right there in a very public setting and just give it hell. Kyle's and right. Just, the Chinese oh, yeah. brought the social credit system upon themselves. Strong point, Kyle. Yeah. I mean, I would be in favor of that if they <laughs> only focused on street shitters. <laughs> yeah, Nose I mean, pickers what, what, what and a lot of spitters. Is it? is it San Francisco that's having a street shitting problem? Any listeners in San Francisco, get good good footage of someone shitting standing. That would be great. I wonder where I the truth that. is on that. I, I, I'm just trying to find us a nice video of exactly what we're talking about. And I, like a fool, Googled Asian girl shitting in street. And I, I was... I was Directed to poopygirls.com. <laughs> I'm not going to that. <laughs> Again. It sounds upsetting. Yeah, I'm not going oh, to that. Yeah, Kyle, oh, I'm not it, going it's back exactly to what that. you thought it was going to be. <laughs> you know what? I'm not I'm not typing that in because it's already on my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why are they going for extreme close-ups for this? I wanted like a, that high above looking down from a window angle. Yeah, I don't want the, you know, Jim Carrey escaping from the rhino in the heat angle. <laughs> That's what we're getting. Uh, I want the camera to point up towards the boot. Poop on the GoPro. That's like a that, like a like a simulated glass bottom boat almost is what you're looking for. Yeah. Oh, what celebrity is into that? Is it John Travolta? I think it's probably R. Kelly. Like that's a safe guess for anything. Yeah. Then, no, 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 no. I know who it is. It's uh, it's um, it's um, the guy who played Rocky, Sylvester Stallone. That's what that's his kink. He likes to get underneath a glass Ooh, coffee table. And get the girl to sit to like squat on top of it and watch as she shits down onto the glass. That's Wait, his kink. What? That's Stallone's kink. That's Stallone's kink. I hey, to believe yo, it. we'll need you to get up on that table. Oh, okay. That's a little hot. <laughs> I'm going to get up underneath. Cool, cool. You're going to watch. You're going to get a nice view down there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I, got, I got a whole pantry full of five of one bars. I don't mind waiting. <laughs> <laughs> What's a 501 bar? Fiber it's, one. Fiber one. Oh, yeah, right. fiber, fiber, fiber one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he sounds absolutely retarded. I love it. Taylor. Computer sure. update? Uh by my count, I'm this is business day nine. And so the absolute latest it could show up based on their website is Tuesday, which would be business day twelve. Okay. But and it didn't so come I, up today. It didn't come today, no. No, I, if I'm being honest, I didn't even check their shipping times before I ordered it. And so it, that was longer than I anticipated. I played COD with Kyle this week, Kyle and his friends. I, I, I played it, yeah, terribly. That was unfortunate. But Kyle and his friends were very nice. I enjoyed my time. I, um, I think I'm going to play a little more and suck less. What but are it, you guys playing? Don't Call of Duty. Like, oh, oh um, capture the flag. No, no. Headquarters. A little mixture. Headquarters, like Team Deathmatch, and Domination. Yeah, it's a cool thing. You know how before you used to choose the game. Now you could say these are the three games I'm interested in. Surprise me. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. I've been playing it a lot. Yeah. Um, I, my opinion of the game is, is is very fluid. It it sort of changes every every day after my experience with it. They're about to nerf that goddamn shotgun. Thank God. So that's <sighs> not going to be. I'm like about the, to open it. I thought you well, guys were just sitting in in buildings with the claymores fucking. With well, we people. did that for a little shotgun. while, but but after a while, we just you know start running around. I don't and, know that we did that for more than a game. Yeah, did it for like a game or two. Well, everybody quit out as soon as we did it. <laughs> we like, did like, get like a whole team to quit. That was. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not fun to play against that nonsense. <laughs> yeah, well, um, retreat is also a victory. So. It it it's a lot of it. I like the multiplayer. I really do. Um, I, I like the single player. I hate the spec hops now. I see that it has no re replayability. I was wrong mm. at first. I, I don't know. We played it one night. And it was just so much fun. But then I tried to play it again and got nothing out of it. But uh, but yeah, I'm digging it. I'm playing a lot of hardcore. I like that. Uh, I'm, I'm still not very good. I got like a 1.3 KD or some shit. But uh, but I'm enjoying myself for sure. I'm worse than not very good. I'm actually bad. My KD's. I mean, not only is my KD below one. But I think I had two positive games, and the positive games were shit too, like a six and two and a six and three. Like, like uh, I'm bad, but I had a good time. I don't know if it makes for a good stream. That's one thing that bothers me. Like, it, if you're shroud, great, everyone wants to see that. But you know, they were in the chat saying I didn't read the chat. I'm like, man, I'd, I wish I could, but then I'd go three and twenty. You know? yeah, this is me. At, <laughs> this is me fully focused on the game right now. You understand <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> that's my worry with the Twitch thing is I feel like just trying to get good at it. I'll be sitting there for like 10 minutes, really giving my best fucking 
suck an ass and I'll forget to talk. Is See, I think it's a mistake to go into Twitch with the mindset of like, all right, I just need to get as good as the rest of the people who play video oh, games yeah. for a living in the world. <laughs> <Suffer under laughs> like, that like, we'll get to that level first. First thing is it, it, that'd be like anything. You're like, all right, so I'm going to get into playing baseball for crowds. First thing I got to do, <laughs> learn to play baseball at an extremely high level. All right. <laughs> then you got to work on the whole charisma thing because you, you can't just hit dingers all day. People want some quips in between, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I don't know. I, I think I just you just make it your own. Like, I mean, it depends what games you're playing. Point, yeah. It depends what games you're playing. Like, like first of all, like your issue is you're going to be like bumping into walls, and like you're going to be your character's going to be doing that thing where you're like he's clearly only working on you, one axis at a time. Are you that I'm I'm really just not good. Yeah, I'm bad. I'm bad. At WASD. I'm like bad you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's I only like, know how to do no WASD pretty well on games like Total War, where it's like just kind of manipulating the field of vision for an RTS game. But yeah, as far as he's like operated the, a camera. Yeah, the, um, the actual gun itself, like even when I went six and two on my friend's game playing, it was because I was walking around like a pussy, like ADSing most of the time. And I was only like doing that thing where you run around the absolute edge of the map, hoping mm -hmm. to catch people from behind. Like yeah. any one on one gunfight I got in, I lost. I lost way more than half of my fair fights. And part of it was like for I'll say a third of the games I hadn't unlocked good weapons. And then when I had, they were iron scopes and stuff. But the overwhelming percentage of the blame goes on my aim, you know? Yeah. 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 But it just depends what games you, you, you're going to play. I, I think recommend? we should. Um, I think it would be fun if you played some games with me and, uh, and some of my friends that involve like silliness and like, like the code names. It, I think is a lot of fun. Mm. Um, that's that 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 requires zero WASD. That's literally like a board Perfect. game in a virtual world, and you get this game called Tabletop Simulator, which is like buying oh, every that. old board game you've ever heard of in your life. It's like hundreds and hundreds of games. <clears throat> I think there's a lot of stuff in there you could play. But as far as like something for the crowd to watch, I think um, RPGs would be good. Something a Fallout game, um, an Elder Scrolls game, something like that. Because you're in that world, it's, it's low risk. Um, you you know the vampires aren't going to kill you or it's whatever. Like I have Skyrim. Skyrims. Skyrim, for example, you know that game. You can engage and disengage. There's a lot of safe spots in Skyrim, and you can use that to pay attention to the chat. Mm -hmm. That makes yeah. sense. And then I, once I can you're... see myself getting back into Skyrim, it's been like I played the fuck out of it for years. But I mean, it's been what six <laughs> years since I. It's played a whole different thing on PC, Taylor. Like, 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 yeah, I know. You can download tits and shit. And all not that. just tits. Not just tits, Taylor. Tit Taylor's is for Pussies. <laughs> <laughs> Pussies also. Taylor's expanding. There's a butthole modifying application. <laughs> can I play that on Twitch or will no, they go? No, no, no. No, no, no. no. As a matter of fact, when, oh, Kyle, why don't you go? You have to click, put the clothes on, like the, the panties and bra on your character for like any game that involves nudity. But but what, 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 what I was really going to, um, all jokes aside, I was going to say, I don't know about Skyrim, uh, but I, I play a lot of Fallout, and I've modded the shit out of that game. And you can mm -hmm. just throw in new DLC, like that those DLC packs that you would pay like fifteen or twenty five dollars for, or fifteen dollars whenever they would they would come out. Over time, they depreciate, of course, to like three to five dollars. But people just write whole DL DLC missions that are cool as shit, and you can just plug them in. You're like, ah, you know, I wish there was a mission where we went to space. Like, oh, well, there it is. Let me just download it, and, and now I've got it. There's there's so much content that you can download for those games. Yeah, I need to look around to figure out what games I'm gonna play. But you know, guys, there are gonna be a handful of games that are just for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's not. I, I'm planning on like a hundred percent of my gaming being on Twitch because I just like aside from playing Age of Mythology some this past weekend because I finally fucking got it working again. Yeah, I saw you playing. Yeah, I I haven't I, I haven't gamed in forever unless you count Magic the Gathering like six or eight months ago when I was getting into that. I will play that on stream. That game's fun. I can't wait to feel like, yeah, this is the game that I'm I'm okay at. I get the mechanics and then have a bunch of people in chat being like, fucking idiot. Fuck, why Why would you put a play a giant growth there? You could have saved up, played it next turn with this combo and done that. And then I'll have to say stuff like, well, I saw, I foresaw that and chose against it. Like, <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm looking forward to magic. Hopefully, enough people can give a fuck about watching that. Doubt it though. That's what Filthy was doing for a while. It, like, it was his main game on there was magic. 
I, he has an established following of like strategy minded people though. Like they do shit like that. But I think that your viewer base for the longest time is going to be there for you. This is my line of thinking. I'm certainly no Twitch genius, but like um, the game is a entertaining backdrop to the Taylor show. So if you were to play COD like I did, for example, I think the Taylor show wouldn't be as good, right? Because you have to focus. You know what COD is like. You, you got to yeah. give it your full attention. But if you were to play Skyrim, well, shucks. Sometimes there's like 12 minute walks in that game. And that's when you can interact with the chat, answer their questions and do their thing. I think that's what would make yeah. for a good Taylor show. I think. I think you're right. That, that's more what I want to do. Like, I want to be just making jokes and shooting the shit and, and interacting with people more than like, oh, right. rats, my <clears throat> KD. <laughs> and Total yeah, War, I mean, you, right? You're good at Total War. But I don't know that that makes for a good Taylor I mean, show. <laughs> okay. But I don't yeah. know that because that, that would also is a game that occupies all your attention while it's happening. Yeah. Taylor, well, Taylor played mostly single player Total War. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah I played single several player. single player games thinking that I've developed some skill. And then I get into the multiplayer world and realize that I'm not right. You, you know how it is when you play that first like Call of Duty like mm -hmm. campaign. You're like, well, I just dominated the entire <laughs> nation of Iraq, essentially. <laughs> and then we went to Afghanistan, won that, pretty much all by myself. Now let's take on some children on the internet. And you're like, ah, oh, well, they're not playing fair at all. Usually they slowly walk out into the street, see me, and then, then, then you know, how yeah. come they throw grenades towards me? These guys aren't standing up behind a burnt out car yelling three sentences in Arabic and then slowly <laughs> aiming at me. What, what Why hell? is it my strategy of standing in the door as if that was cover working? <laughs> yeah. I can't even quit dragging off quickscope people. <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how Total War is. Total War has a very um, high so level weird. online community. Uh, I watch a lot of the competitive uh, Total War on YouTube. I watch a lot of Turin and he, he hosts tournaments and stuff. And... Um, I'm not at their level or anything, but I've played against them and I don't I get my shit absolutely pushed in. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a fight and I've went back and watched his stream to like, see what he said about me. And, and he wasn't rude. I was like, yeah, that's a win. <laughs> he's like, all right. All right. He's got, okay. All right. Okay. Oh, so he's doing this and that. Like, <laughs> like little things where he's like, not a bad army composition. You're like, not a bad army composition. <laughs> well, I did copy yours from two months ago. Thank yeah. you very much. So, the, yeah. the most fun I had on it? Total War is, is when we do two V2s. I'm sorry, Taylor. We do two V2s, Kyle and I, on Total War. And like we would play a couple two V2s versus random people, win occasionally. And then eventually Kyle would be like, hey, gaming bros. Buy Total War and join our lobby. And they'd be like, I don't know how to play or what to do. And you're like, just get it and join. And then they join and be like, all right, so uh, which one of us is with Taylor? Which one's with Kyle? It's like, neither. It's both of you versus both of us. <laughs> <laughs> just just going like a 10 game, just steamroll streak. And that was, it, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like your favorite scene from, from like any movie with like the army on horseback that just comes charging down the mountain and the plebs are just like, no. <laughs> and they just just right just destroy it. that was every single game it was so much fun and we all we would do is like it got to the point where you know Kyle would be like hey Taylor can you just build like a normal infantry build I'm gonna build nothing but mountain giants this game <laughs> just just twelve of those guys storming ahead and fucking them up <sighs> that was great yeah or just no, nothing but minotaurs. Just minotaurs. Yeah, that works. That works. Yeah, it did work. We tore the, the best example of us doing that to people, though, was when we had everybody download Age of Mythology. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we had it. And meanwhile, like, like we've told this story before, it's an RTS. but goddamn. Yeah. Um, it's clickety click, clickety click, RTS, micro matters, but, but army composition matters. Resource and it's one of those timing based games where it's like that mad rush to like assemble your. Mm village that that is basically your your military might making machine you know it's it's your army factory and you've got to assemble it in the right order down to the, like if you're off by a few seconds you've kind of fucked up yeah. and so i would just watch like professional players tournament level players and copy their build order down to the second for hours at a time every day marijuana helps with this sort of thing it is a performance <laughs> enhancing drug i'm sitting there like nope off by two seconds restart <laughs> just, uh, again and again and again so when we played against those children who had never played the game before, that was a lot of fun. It was great. That was a lot of fun. That's a strong strategy. And if too they're too good, go younger. Voodoo, man. Two, 
Two of your friends, Vulome. Orthos. Orthos. Yeah. <laughs> Two of your, uh, of the gaming buddies who bought it and played. Like, I remember you're like, I'm just going to, you know, basically SimCity back here with Zeus and all the most powerful infantry. You play Loki Rush and just get like a couple uh, Herseers, these like little cheap heroes. Loki is a Norse god and like his like strategy. If you try and SimCity with him, Late game, you're going to get fucked. Like, your guys have too low armor. He's all about heroes and myth units, like fire giants and mountain giants and shit. And there's a strat with him, which is just start off the game, build a temple, get a bunch of... Uh, or start off the game, send your builders deep into their territory, just out of their vision, build a temple, and then just pump a steady supply of these heroes into there. Not enough to win the game, but enough to kill every villager. Brilliant. And so for like the first couple <laughs> games, we did that. Like the people, in, because all four of us are in the same chat, the same audio chat. Yeah, yeah. And they'd be like, "Ugh, these fucking NPCs are showing up at my base again, <laughs> slaughtering all of my villagers. This is bullshit. Are you guys dealing with this?" And we're like, "Oh yeah." yeah <laughs> they we, know we, it's but you. we killed them though. And then like maybe three games in, they're like, "Wait, they, these say Taylor Marka. You, where'd you build these?" From? <laughs> <laughs> it's a hilarious strategy. Like oh, like funny. like Taylor said, like instead of building this like. Thing in your village that you build like a temple and then like a, uh, a stables and, and each of these things builds different kinds of units. But instead, your your whole point is to find their base and then put that temple, which is the Herseer creating. Herseers are like these badass motherfuckers that you can build very early. And you're, you're building units in their backyard and the units are just going and massacring their villagers. And you need those villagers. If you lose one, you've fucked up. Desperately. And, yeah, yeah, it's, it's that. And Kyle would be Sim Citying, and I would be focusing on just fucking with him. And so Kyle always had an abundance of resources. So I'd be like, "Hey, I need five hundred food and six hundred more gold to keep fucking with him." And he'd just ship that over. And the thing with these Herseers, if you play Loki, is as they're attacking, they have a special ability of they will randomly summon myth units, and so they could just be hitting a house. And then, like, a troll will pop up and start <laughs> fucking the house, too. And then a second later, a Valkyrie will pop up and start fucking. They're like, this, this isn't fair. Oh, it was so much fun. We should do that Yeah, again. we can get into that. Like, I don't know if people... I bet people would like to watch that. I would need so much practice to get good at that again. Same. It's I been forgot so all long. the bell doors. I forgot all... Like, I, I used to have, like, that whole uh, whole notepad. And I would, I would, like, tape the notepad next to my monitor. But after a while, it was just, like, memory. Mm -hmm. God knows where that notepad is. That If I looked at that now, I would feel real sad. <laughs> When we were I, like, trying to, I was like, to... <laughs> how much time did you, dear God, <laughs> Kyle and I would work up 2v2 playing like, all right, we, we can dominate moderate in like five minutes now. All right, let's play hard. Let's play Titan or whatever. And there would be times playing where we'd be 31 seconds in and Kyle would be like, well, it's over. Restart. Misclicked on the villager. Now I'm yep. going to have to wait for the classical age until a minute seven instead of 58 seconds. And it's like, all right, well, deal. we got to restart. We're not going to, we're not going to waste nine seconds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wanted to be perfect at that game. And that was a game where you could be perfect. Like in Call of Duty, you can never be perfect. There's always the ceiling cap never arrives. But in that game, you could be perfect. There was a, an absolutely perfect way to do the things. Yeah, mm. I enjoyed that game a lot. And it's such an old shitty looking game too. Like, like I bet there are some people who don't know what this game is out there. Maybe one or two. And they're <laughs> they're picturing this right now and they're like, oh yeah, trolls and Valkyries. I bet they're I bet it's a beautiful no, this is like a 25 year old RTS. It came it looked, out in October 2002. There you go. <laughs> 17 years yeah. old. <laughs> a little over Not 17 a good looking game. Old. Oh, that's yeah. funny. Dude, it's fun. There's a new Age of Empires coming out. What's the modern equivalent? I was I was about to yeah, okay. Uh I, I guess it would be the new Age of Empires. That is a good bet. There really isn't a mod Age of Empires. They should have redone Age of Mythology. Mythology. The redone Age of Empires because the mythology aspect and picking a god and having the like the special powers you can use and everything is way more fun than just like, oh, I'm the Britons. I have long bowmen again kind of shit. It's still yeah, fun. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I like yeah. the mythological units and 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 all that made up nonsense. That's the game I played when I was like 12 in my room when it didn't look shitty to me because that was like, you know, early 2000s. And my mom would be like, what are you doing? I'd be like, I'm learning about the ancient world. <laughs> like, Not really, though. <laughs> Anyway, nobody gives a fuck about this. We can we can move past that. We can talk about Ti's daughter snatch some more, <laughs> dude. I, I I don't know if this is everyone's cup of tea. Uh, both Chiz and I had this topic planned. The forward is going 
deep in with these electric cars, which is interesting to me anyway. Uh, they came up with a new Mustang. I know we have a, a Mustang fan out there. Um, 900 horsepower Mustang. It's an 800 volt electric vehicle Mustang. They're also working on an electric F-150, which appeals to me. And uh, I don't know. I just think it's interesting. A thousand foot pounds of torque. What is the current Mustang? It, could, it seems like a lot. 900 horsepower and a thousand pounds of torque. Probably 400 and 450, somewhere in there, like for the, for the, like the GT. I'm just guessing, you know, roughly speaking about that. Yeah. And, and. Ooh, the interior with that crazy blue. Yeah, I agree. So I'm showing it to the audience right now. It's, it has a big screen. I'm going to call it iPad sized, like, you know, the bigger iPad sized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um. I don't know. It just looks fantastic. This to me, it's carbon fiber dashboard. And also, so I'm not a huge fan of what Tesla does with, they're like, there's no buttons in this whole car. Everything's on the display, on the display. Mm -hmm. Do you want to open the glove compartment? Well, that's four menus deep on your little iPad in the center. Like, why is that a feature to you? Why is it a feature that like, uh, do you want to adjust your seat? Yeah, there's no buttons anywhere. Look for the seat menu, fuck. And, and I, like, I don't know why everyone thinks that's so, they love it. So I, I'll, I haven't tried it. So maybe I could be wrong, but I'm just like, man, I don't know. I, I really like buttons that do like the thing they're supposed to do. Oh, here's a button like by the, the light that turns yeah, that light on. You should at least have a backup button. I like the feel a of button. a button and I like the feels, uh, the feel of buttons and knobs. And, yeah, and I really do. Typically a, like a single fun function button does is, is like a one step way to do the thing that you want to do. Whereas if it's buried in your iPad interface somewhere, then like it's six clicks down while you're driving. Well, somebody tell wings it's time for him to upgrade again. Yes. Yeah, Wings, you need a 900 horsepower, 1,000 foot pounds. The, the electric thing I'm mixed. How do you, are you guys excited about electric vehicles? Because I'm, yeah, I'm not I, sure. I'm really I, I think if, if they, if care. they put a warranty on that thing, um, you know, if they, if they, if they would give you like a, a really uh, good warranty, I would be absolutely like sold on years. something like this. What's really good? Oh, eight years for sure. Like I was thinking like, I'm going to say six. It's like, oh, no, eight's crazy, but six is, yeah, okay. it's pretty similar numbers, but six, I think, would do it. If it was like a six year, 75,000 mile warranty or something like that, just spitballing, like that would make me feel very comfortable. Or just for the drivetrain, like, like you don't have to cover that fucking iPad in the middle of the console. You don't have to okay. cover like, you know, little, little odds and ends, but I, I worry about the battery and, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, having issues and and the, the the expense of fixing that and the expertise required to fix that it's not something that any shade tree mechanic can just get out there and do like like I can fix if something happens with my car I can fix it mostly I mean I'm not going to rebuild the engine I'm no wings of redemption but I I can I could find someone who could rebuild it for fairly cheap but electric car I don't know but on the other hand you probably won't have to rebuild the engine or a bit you might be able to swap an electric motor just mm. thinking out loud. Yeah. I, and I, the power really it interests me. Like, like that, that thing is, in, those they're numbers so are outrageous. Fast. Yeah. They're outrageous. They just destroy an uh, internal combustion engine. Nearly all of them. Right. Like it, it's, it's crazy. Um, I, a lot of people are excited about electric itself, but I, my driving use case isn't that normal. You know, I do a lot of normal drives, like take Colin with speech therapy or whatever, but a lot of my drives, I'm towing a trailer to Georgia and stuff like and that. That's the kind of thing where gasoline really thrives. There's a little more energy in a tank of gas and it's so quick to refill. And yeah, you've got long haul drives like, with like, a trailer. Me, if people don't tow, they the might not realize worse, that cuts yeah. your fuel economy in half on a gas engine. Like, it, Yeah, it would be just fine for me. You know, I'm, I'm in a major city and, and my drives are usually... 30 minutes out and 30 minutes back. Like it'd be ideal. Uh, so yeah, I, I would definitely want one of these. I bet it's kind of prohibitively expensive. I, this is probably one of those $80,000 fucking Mustangs when you could, you know, get, get, get a, get one like wings got for 17,000, which is a really yeah. nice car, by the way. Like not, you know, no jokes. Um, looking at it, it looks really nice. I rented one of those things about a year and a half, two years ago, the eco boost. And it's got so many functions uh, for like, like like driving modes. Like there's like drag race mode or something like that, like quarter mile. And I was Ooh. just like, I was playing with all of them along the way. I got the convertible and uh, it was pretty quick. It wasn't as fast as my car, but 
It was quick. Your car is fast. It was plenty quick. I, I follow this kind of news. Ford has the largest or will have the largest recharging network in the country. And you'd think, yeah. what? Tesla's been working on this for five years. Like, how can that be? Apparently, they just got a bunch of existing charging places under contract. And now they're mm-hmm. all Ford places where you can charge your electric Mustang or F-150. I wish so, they would all come under one umbrella. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, like, that, like, like Cooperate. <sighs> Right now, it's not like, oh, yeah, I've got a Chevrolet. So I've got access to 18 Chevrolet yeah. <laughs> gas you know, stations in my area. What they oh, should really do, well, Ford has 27. Yeah. <laughs> the debit card model, right? Like, all right, you bought a Chevy. You can charge for free or at a discounted rate at the Chevy gas station. Mm. Or if you put a Ford there, you pay a little more, just like debit cards. I'd be yeah. okay with that, as long as it's not ridiculous. Like, if it was like a $2 surcharge which is what they do to you on the debit card or three dollars. What's the biggest surcharge that you can ever remember an ATM <laughs> fucking slapping on you? Cause I've been at theme parks trying to get like $150 to buy some Annie Ann's pretzels or some shit. And it's like $7, $8, stuff like that for, for just to get your money out. I want to see, I've seen a mm-hmm. 10, maybe it was a casino. <laughs> oh oh yeah. 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 Casinos are the worst. That's right. That's right. But you don't care because you're already getting money to throw away. Well, I've already <laughs> lost a bunch of money. You're like, yeah. they, they need one of those candles on the side. Uh, jokes of on you, casino. Now I'm only using. Now I'm only going to lose ninety because yeah. I lost ten right, on, right at this ATM machine. They should. They should have one of those levers on the side where you put it in. And it's like ah. Well, I got 140 of my 150 back. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do? Oh, I'm playing the ATM. <laughs> so it's a net return, you know. So <laughs> it's giving me money every time. Yeah. I was thinking about wings last night, and I was like, uh, as I do. Asked, oh, I, I was thinking know, about them in the shower. I'm sorry, Carrie. I was lying in bed, <laughs> and uh, I was just thinking, like, you ever have somebody ask you for proof of residence, you know, to fill out some yeah. form or something like that, and you got to go get like your electrical bill or Driver's something license. like that he just hands him the keys jesus <laughs> <laughs> you think about him a lot <laughs> <laughs> poor wings <gasps> poor wings he's doing I, he's prospering I, poor wings he plays video games for a living and when gets I all that him, pussy and I drives new cars prosper yeah. He is prospering. He's been prospering for a long time. I'm start. I, I think maybe Wings boohoo's to 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 get those pity donations. He seems to be doing real well. He's always complaining about money, but he's always got plenty to spend. That's all I'm saying. Plenty to borrow. You mean? What's the difference? Well, there is a difference. <laughs> well, once he borrows, he spends it. <laughs> but I, it's. I'm just saying he didn't buy that Mustang with cash. Um, yeah. he made money trading in the original Mustang, Woody. Don't you understand? <laughs> I'm sure he got one over on that used car yeah. salesman. He, he so did that, that dumb where noob. You trade a toothpick into a house. <laughs> oh, wow. did, uh, would you like a toothpick for those three jelly bellies? Uh, would you like these three jelly bellies for? It was a those red paper tacks? clip. I think I know what you're talking yeah, red, about. Red paper clip. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Dude, that guy he, needs to be called out on his shit. Nobody believes you, red paper clip guy, and you're trash. He didn't trade that into a house. Oh, he Absolutely might have. Not. Really? Come on. Unless he found a ri- ri- like a really rich, retarded guy who's like, now, I can't ever give you this paper clip because this has magical properties. He's like, but what about if I give you my entire house? He's like, well, even then. Okay. Let uh, me. I suppose. <laughs> he did it in 14 trades. Let me uh, line them up for you. And you can tell me if you think it's it's reasonable. I make my mark. <laughs> <laughs> he traded the red paper clip for a fish-shaped pen. And then he traded the pen the same day for a hand-sculpted doorknob. And then he traded the doorknob for a Coleman camp stove with fuel. That for a Honda generator. Whoa, big step up. Um, he traded the generator for an instant party, which is an empty keg with an IOU for filling it, a Budweiser sign, and some other stuff. Um, he traded the instant party for a ski snowmobile. God damn. He traded what that for a two-person trip, a vacation. He traded that for a box truck. That for a recording contract with Metalworks and... Mississauga, Ontario. Who is this man? <laughs> How does he, he know these people? He traded yes. that uh, for a year's rent in Phoenix. 
He traded the year's rent for an afternoon with Alice Cooper. He traded the Cooper afternoon for motorized snow globe. That seems like a downgrade. The snow globe for a role in the film Donna on Demand and that for a two-story farmhouse. You know, the I think what we should take what? from this is this guy was so well connected that that none of this even matters because clearly he knows lots of people in the entertainment business and, 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 and lots of rich people with lot with, with just frivolous spending habits. That's the key to doing this is knowing a lot of people who just don't give a yeah. fuck. And people with like drug problems. The snow globe Ooh, part fascinates me. He had an afternoon with Alice Cooper. All right. First of all, he had a year's rent and he traded that for an afternoon with Alice Cooper. That seemed like a downgrade to me. And then an mm. afternoon with Alice Cooper for a snow globe. What the heck? Was this a solid gold snow globe? I'd like to see the snow globe. A year's rent to a snow globe is a huge downgrade. Yeah. Depends where you're living. Yeah, I wouldn't take steps. an afternoon with Cooper for free. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, don't want to hang out with that guy. I honestly wouldn't either. Like, like if, if, they, if someone told me, like, hey, um, Alice Cooper wants to hang out with you all day. He's, he's across the street. But what do you wear to that? <sighs> I'd no, probably go no, with cargo shorts size. and a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly wouldn't go. I don't care to meet Alice Cooper like, like at all. Like I'm not a fan. The, name anything. an old school rock guy that you would want to meet. Ozzy Osbourne. I'd love to meet Ozzy Osbourne. I yeah, think he, he is. Funny. Yeah, yeah. That, he's my that, least favorite. Wow. Oh, um, did so did you ever watch the Osbournes on MTV? That's why. So, so maybe he's different now. <laughs> But he had the Woody, shakes. He was kind of come here, Woody. I found his flying contraption in your in your garage. <laughs> Please, sir, if you could just put that down. And a rifle. I found a rifle. <laughs> no, the flying machine's totally safe. I think I already broke it. <laughs> <laughs> He's so shaky and burnt out. Yes. <laughs> See that? That's. I don't think I'd enjoy my my time in that. I would. I feel like he's one of those rich guys that, that that like you need to know if you want to turn a red paper clip into a fucking house. Like you could you, you could probably arrange two or three steps up if you're hanging around Ozzy Osbourne long enough. Yeah, definitely mm. more than that. It's shiny. Can I have it? Just says yeah, the stories like, across the shit. You would be, if you met Ozzy Osbourne, you could directly trade. That would be my article. It'd be like Taylor traded a red paper clip into a house. First, he duped Ozzy Osbourne into <laughs> trading a house for a red, a red paper, paper clip. clip. <laughs> and that's the end of the transaction. <laughs> I don't know why I did it. I must have been on something, but he did say there's something special about it. Yeah, it's just, it's just, <laughs> This this point, sure. right. I, I when I first heard about the red paper clip, I'm older than you guys. Um, it was still ongoing, you know, like like people were. It became a media sensation type thing. So like I, he might have had, I don't know, the afternoon with Alice Cooper or something like that. So a lot he might have had some favorable trades deeper in the run. You know, the paper. What celebrity the, would you pay ten thousand dollars to spend? Not just a day with. Let's let's say you're getting to spend like a, a an night entire with weekend. Emma with Watson. <laughs> well, em, oh, Emma no, Watson is. I don't is, have enough is, money to be throwing 10k around. I'm not doing that for any celebrity. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. But which, if the core of the question is who would you really want to spend time with? <sighs> I be... like politics a lot. So one of the last, the current or previous president would appeal to me. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I, He's it's, dead. It's not I hate everyone. those people. Uh, that that Toronto mayor that died, who was fat and on crack and did a bunch of crazy shit, Rob yeah. Ford, I think. Yeah, Rob Ford. It seems like he'd be a barrel of fun, even um, dead. I wanna, well, he, he he opted to hang out with Rob Ford's corpse, <laughs> and he's dying of pneumonia, so you have to do it. You know, so you have to <laughs> excavate this and. I'm so just it's like that Key and Peele skit. That there's a Key and Peele skit where um the kids uh, like one of those Make a Wish kids, and he's like. I want to pee in your mouth. And they're like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I want to pee in your mouth. <laughs> like, fuck. Well, last, I guess I got to let him do it. I'm up to the last three presidents now, and it's not any more entertaining. Um, George George W. Bush would be cool to hang out with. Now, right? That, for, for, uh, I yeah, guarantee, like, like, like stuff. Obama was a good president, but I don't know if he's fun to hang out with. You know what I mean? He was. I think he did Mark Maron's podcast, and Mark Maron was blown away by him. Or who, whoever interviewed him that I heard interviewed after the fact, but I don't think I'd have any fun with Obama. I don't think we would like have any sort of interesting dialogue with one another. 
but George W. Bush, I feel like he's, I mean, that guy did cocaine and he was a raging alcoholic and these are all things I like in the people I spend time with. Did he run somebody over? But only the later years. Or did his wife run someone over? (laughs) He was like totally senile. Um, (laughs) I want Schwarzenegger. I think Schwarzenegger is the best. Good one. That's a good pick. Good one. Schwarzenegger and OJ Simpson are my top two. They're on my Mount good Rushmore points. of celebs to chill with. And if I have to choose between them, it's OJ. Yeah, he is fun as long as he doesn't, you know. Do as long as you don't cheat on him and steal a house from him. You know what? That's all it took. I'll try right? not to. All right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the juice is going to be uh, cutting my head off as long as I don't mess with his lady friend. I've got Joe Rogan in my head, but I think he'd get preachy on me. I don't need him to tell me how I'm not making the most out of me. I don't want to talk about DMT all day. I don't okay. want to be told that I should exercise more by Joe Rogan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do, because you would exercise with him. Wouldn't you want to exercise with oh, Joe Rogan? I like, Half go back of to his gym guests, it's like, heaven forbid you come on the JRE show with Dad Bod. He'll tell you all about it. How you, well, you know, they're the lifestyle changes you need to make and how you need to sleep and have some fucking elk meat or I don't know. Yeah, well, you yeah. know what, Joe? You can't get any taller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so take that. I'll give up my shoes. That'll add two. You know, Joe, I can't help but notice that surgery. the HGH has made your internal organs swell to the point where your your abs stick out further than your pecs. What's up with that? It's a, it's not a human look. It's not a human look you got going on there, Joe. Your head. <laughs> what what the fuck is wrong with your did head? Did anyone ever I, say that to him? No. Oh, because you're doing a Bill Burr impression. I'm like, did this happen? <laughs> Bill Burr, we Joe, perfect to the, say these things. What the fuck happened to you? <laughs> you're a monster. Like, you and new, how how was your <laughs> how was your head grown twice the size since you left news radio? That was the late nineties. You were an adult. <laughs> <laughs> his hair's gone and his head volume's even bigger. It, it, yeah. <laughs> it makes no sense scientifically speaking. It, it, it's so it, if that transformation happened in a Marvel movie and nobody said anything about it, you'd be like, ah, Come on, the CEO of the company's head suddenly starts getting big and nobody realizes that their boss is Brainiac. Of course it's Brainiac! I got a thing, though. <laughs> I think Joe Rogan is smarter than he was in the news radio day, <laughs> which ties <laughs> into my head-sized intelligence theory. And that's been proven many times. There's this well-respected field of phrenology. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that would have been the best way to be a scientist. In olden days, you <laughs> no just training. take a bunch of skulls and you got like a whatever. Uh, what the, the head fuck scratcher? Is that thing? Yeah, it looks like a big scratcher. caliper. Yeah, it's a caliper where you're like, ah, this guy was a rapist. <laughs> 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 it's like, look, well, you know, I'm no doctor, so I take his word for it. <sighs> yeah, being a doctor gets more and more fun. I think the further back in time you get. Oh, for sure. Just, oh, for like, sure. At some point, like, you're just making yeah. shit up as you go along. You're just like the guy with the cleanest hands. Yeah, <laughs> you're just the guy with oh, the cleanest no. hands. Someone's got to pull it out of my tumble. What about Billy? His hands are very clean. And he is a very good doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, Put your I hands think... in the goat piss and then come over here. Yeah. <laughs> 3,000 years ago being a doctor, that would have been pretty sick. Yeah, I was watching this. Rogan had this guest recently who was talking about the pygmies in Africa or some shit and how, like, it's like that thing we always joke about for some reason where, where the, you know, you're always, like, talking about how they want to crack open the white man's skull to cure the AIDS or get the gold <laughs> out or some whole shit. Topic. Yeah. They, want, they were literally holding this pig, this little boy down and cutting him and bleeding him because they wanted to drink his blood to cure their AIDS. Was he albino? Did it work? He was black. He was just a pygmy. You know, they're the little folk. Oh. And, and oh. they were raping all the women, just raping the churches, burning the women, just going ham. Why were they doing this? To get rid to of cure AIDS. cure their AIDS. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, it's a real thing. Like I don't think that's people, a real thing. Be, no, no, being, well, it doesn't work, but, <laughs> but it's a real thing they try. I thought like, that's the angle we were about to take. <laughs> oh, no, it's a real thing. All right, I'll me. back you up, Taylor, but I don't think he's going to bite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, the, we all know the cure is to inject yourself with $200,000 cash, <laughs> as in South Park. But, like, yeah, it's a real thing that, like, being born albino in some of those areas in Africa, the roughest spot in life because you are going to get fucked with. Like people Even are, if they don't fuck with you, you're going to, you're in Africa and you're, you have no, what is it? Uh, melatonin? Mel- uh, melanin? melanin? Yeah. yeah. Melatonin's that's that, that, uh, that other stuff. Yeah. It helps you sleep. 
Yeah. Well, <laughs> they say it does, but I don't think that's true. I think research showed that it was the sodium and the fat or something like that, that huh. from, from the turkey. Oh, oh I bought my Thanksgiving thinking, no, turkey. That's, we'll get to that later, though. You're, you think of tryptophil. That's fucking tryptophan. Huh? It's, there's way too much for us to keep track of these days. That I agree with. I, yeah. Those people are roasting under the sun. Imagine, like, like, like I get sunburned pretty badly. I've got kind of fair skin. Taylor's even more fair than I am. And... Uh, but but like someone like Bill Burr, who's like a ginger, like oh he's the he's the worst of the worst until you see that albino African boy, uh, just hiding in a hut. Suddenly, <laughs> suddenly oh, go down. You're right. I never thought about that. That sucks. I'm a. People think of me as you know, maybe not as white as I boat. really am because I get a lot of sun in the summer. But I'm not a ginger. I'm a ginger factory, right? I I'm a ginger <laughs> producer and actually quite fair skinned. Uh. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what kind of factory I am yet. So <laughs> we'll see. I'm closed for repairs. <laughs> Shit is Until not happening. The day you die. Uh, yeah. Did you get a yeah, vasectomy? Well, is that what I'm? Maybe you I, told plan to. I, I plan to. I absolutely plan to. Like, 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 I don't see. Don't I, do that. Don't... Roll the dice, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Be a man, Kyle. See what happens. Yeah. No, no. Roll the dice, man. bitch. That's solid life <laughs> advice. Xbox Live <laughs> taught me long ago that I did not. I do not want a child. I do, and, and I have made fun of far too many younglings with disabilities to roll those dice. If there is a god or karma, karma, yeah, they're gonna get you. Then I, I am gonna spawn a mutant with with fucking octopus arms and 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 an eighty three IQ and. I, it's not going to go well. On the I just have a stereotypical topic, Asian. <laughs> yeah, this is the, <laughs> if you're, <laughs> if you're a black albino person, what are you? Well, you're still African. Yeah, I didn't Racially ask where you're from. <laughs> I asked, well, no, but like your ethnicity would be African or whatever. Like, yeah, you you still wait, be African. American's not it. Like, it, that's a that's a geography, right? Am I crazy? Yeah, yeah ethnicity, ethnicity, ethnicity is geography. Na- no, nationality is what you're thinking of. Ethnicity is like race, right? No, right. no, no. Nas- because Africa is a continent, not a nation. It's African American is a geography thing. It's uh, a distinction of geography. Yeah, I think and, you can and, be and African and, and white, as such as South African. There you go. Like uh, uh, um, Scarlett yeah. Johansson. Scarlett Johannesburg. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's, I think, that's I think you left from. out a syllable, Kyle. <laughs> There's yeah. two hands in there, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, like they would still carry an African with albinism, albinism, however you say it. Would still, they, I guess, they'd be more likely to have a child that's albino, but most likely, it would the child would be black, right? Or no? I, 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 I do. Why I just straight up want to know what a Black albino is is that a is that a white person? Well, no, it's not a European person. It's a it's a black person with a well, skin. Uh, yeah, all right, thing. all right. Yes, that is a white person because they white are color, white. Yes. But that is and not they a don't Caucasian. Have yes, they're not Caucasian. Melanin. Thank you, God. That's the way to say it. I believe the scientific word starts with an N, but it ends I'm, with an I'm O. Not, it ends with an O, but I don't want to get o. close to it. It's too close. We're gonna call close. him brother in this climate. <laughs> <laughs> a brother. <though. laughs> yes. It's the safe angle. I think Man, we are all coming off as ignorant. <laughs> yeah, no. How did that happen? That's never happened once. <laughs> Not once in this whole show. But yeah, I don't know. I, but the same way that, like, if you have a genetic defect, you're more likely to pass it on. But or no, I guess it depends on the genetic defect. Yeah. Sometimes you're like almost guaranteed to pass it on, and then other times, like, you can. Like have a totally normal kid as long as yeah the other yeah person doesn't I carry don't know it. how that works like it, could you have a it yeah like there's some in utero things that can happen to you right you know like a little cut off the brain blood flow for a moment or something and you won't pass that on I think no you won't pass that on we just yeah, Google like, how yeah, do they, albinos work we're talking about recessive and dominant traits and right and, and, and whether or not things are likely or are not so likely to be uh, passed on to your offspring it also depends on what your partner's like, what their genetics are like, because sometimes like you're fine as long as your partner doesn't have the same recessive trait as you. But, but if both of you have it, then your child is definitely going to have like octopus arms mm-hmm. or whatever the fuck. Like there's all sorts of stuff with genetics. That's why you should always get the person that you're going to have these little mutant babies with checked out. Right. To make sure that she's you think I heard compatible. That. Yes. Yeah. Genetically yeah. compatible. So how did you do it? Did she volunteer? Or did you steal a glass she drank from? I held her down and cut her hair. 
(laughs) (laughs) You got to pull her hair. Get the roots. That's where the good DNA is. is That's true. Like vitiligo, vitiligo. 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 Is that... that I ain't is black. Like late- this is reverse vitiligo. <laughs> this is reverse vitiligo. <laughs> a, uh, Dude, there's an, so we've talked about him before, but there's an MMA fighter who had vitiligo, and uh, he was he pretty much turned white. Like you would think that he was a white guy at this point. Yeah. Uh, it turns out that vitiligo is accelerated by like rubbing on that area, right? So you, mm. as a normal person, you might get white. Like in your armpits, around your neck, maybe between your legs your first, hands. right? At hands, right? Things that move a lot. But him as a grappler, like his whole body's being just dragged across the mat daily. That, that's part You know of what it. I don't like? So he turned white. Hmm. I don't like whenever they take a picture of somebody who's got vitiligo and they're like, she's beautiful. And it's just like, why can't we all admit when someone is unattractive or when something is wrong with them that is not appealing to the eye? I'm only I halfway with you. With fat people. I think yeah. that... A really like structurally beautiful person with vitiligo can still be beautiful. Like if you had, if you if you Agreed. applied vitiligo to, I, I don't know, I'm bringing up Emma Watson. I talked about her earlier. I think she'd mm. still be beautiful. Uh, but a morbidly obese person with vitiligo. You just take a really fit chick, nice happy trail. Vitiligo or not, we all agree she's rocking. The hair turned white too. <laughs> See that whole that whole body acceptance movement should be for people with like vitiligo, Burn a victims. missing leg. That from Afghanistan, a burn victim, an acid attack victim, but it has been entirely co-opted. Appetite by discipline disorder. Yeah, yeah. I just can't stop eating. <laughs> yeah. So that's a shame. Like someone out there with like burns on their leg and their face is, you know, getting shut down because they have thin privilege or something. <laughs> it's kind of funny. To <laughs> I like them, to think but, that there's some yeah. poor person with burns on their face. Like, what are you worried about, Skitty? Yeah. Oh, what are you talking about? You can probably eat whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. It's hard to chew. So he's sitting there like, actually, every day is a struggle. <laughs> uh, you know what I'd give to burns? be 85 pounds like you, you privileged cunt? <laughs> I don't have any legs. Yes. <laughs> burn <laughs> segues us. into that next topic. Can we watch this? I have a group watch thing to do. Oh, yeah. Have oh, you guys yeah. seen this already? Yeah, last year. Not. Uh, oh, that is possible, actually. It's a year old. Have we watched it on the show? Yeah. Oh, we we'll watch it again. I mean, I mean, that's never stopped us before. Especially me. <laughs> <laughs> we can watch it. Yeah, I, I don't remember. It, it, it's a really cool video. It's, it's fun to watch. All right. So what you're going to see is a dad and a son, I guess, trapped in a forest fire. For reasons I can't explain, the son is driving. And what's interesting in the video to me is the tension. The, the kid is scared to death. Dad has like a forced calm that I'm not buying. And let's listen. Are you guys ready? Mm-hmm. Yep. Ready, set, play. A beta, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a little beta. Um, Bitch is never getting laid. Mm-mm. The yeah, so. I guess the, they weren't announcing, you know, fire schedules nice. on their Polish radio. Siri thinks I'm talking to her. Um, Are you yeah, trying to escape a forest fire? <laughs> it, it said, <laughs> my sis is a little bear. I'm like, kind of. Anyway, um, what happens is they, they drive up upon a flaming log that's blocked the road. They decide mm-hmm. they can't back up. They can't K-turn and they can't go backwards it's like they just, where they just came through. So they get out of the car. They run down the flaming hill and get rescued by boaters. And it turns out, wow. okay. I guess that's how we got the footage. I'm glad they ended. Well, yeah. Oh, damn it. I should have bought in more. Like, I, I, or I guess I was totally bought in. I'm like, do that. Are they going to make, are they going to be okay? But the fact that footage survived, that's what made the Blair Witch Project not as scary. But didn't they well, all it's die? Found footage. It's yeah, found footage. Died. Yeah. All those people died. Yeah. Oh, I guess I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe his head's not as big as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'm a solid counter argument to your phrenology point. <laughs> the size of this frontal lobe. Oh, but it's all full of retard thoughts. <laughs> oh, they're like dissecting my head 500 years from now. They're like, nah, it's nothing but hockey stats and impressions of retards. <laughs> Damn. They all say, like, oh, it's not the size of the brain, it's the amount of wrinkles on it. I've heard that many times. I don't know if it's science based, but. 
I'm like, but it's the surface area and the wrinkles add to that. Right. But you'd think all things being equal, more size is more surface area. I get it. Wrinkles add surface area quite a bit, but so does size. A wrinkly big brain's better than a wrinkly small brain. Well, yeah. Neanderthals are smarter than us. They had bigger heads. That, I, the science is indisputable. It's indisputable. Hmm. It's something that I remembered just now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to me, it's, it's unquestionable. The three-body problem put it forward in an interesting way. They're like, like I, I don't know the right answer to this, but how long would you say that human brains have been as capable as they are? About a quarter million years. No, okay. not that That's long. longer than that's I would have guessed, we, but I don't know. A species. If you had yeah, told me 30,000 sure. years, I'd, I'd have... Let's say somewhere between 30,000 and 250,000 years, right? It's a quarter million. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I did that on purpose. Like, that wasn't an accident. Like, somewhere between Kyle's guess and my guess. Human brains have been this good. But human advancement is what? Like, 2,000 years? Like, maybe, well, like 7,000 You could years even argue first... a lot of it is 400 years. You know, from the sailboat to where we are now has been a huge advancement. Like a sailboat, I'm saying, like Columbus sailboat. Um, so, I mean, how, how long ago is the actual first civilization we can track? It's in like Mesopotamia, like 7,000 years ago and shit, right? Or maybe in China, like 5,000 BC. As maybe. far as I know, yes. I don't know. <laughs> what, what, what's, what, well, what came before that? Like, you know, the Fertile Crescent, Mesopotamia, the Assyrians uh -huh. and all I that shit. I remember all like, these words from school. What, what, what came before that? Obviously nothing. And those people didn't exist either. Obviously so nothing. <laughs> the world is only 6,000 years old. <laughs> so I guess if you were to hack the genome so that like humans were upgraded, if you think about the advancement we had in the last 400 years, if you were to vote like, devote like 100 or 200 years to upgrading the wet work, imagine what would happen to the tech. Like if, if your brain was literally better. Yeah. Well, I think we can do that. Um, yeah, that, that'll probably advance real quick, right? With yeah, CRISPR right? and stuff. I mean, the Chinese are going to do that. Yeah, there's I know. some Chinese kid whose head is just this fucking big. He can't even hold it up. They've got like straps to keep him upright. And he's thinking <laughs> up all sorts of He's stuff. obviously Bradyac. We can all see. Yeah, yeah. He's new kinds of Szechuan sauce, all kinds of stuff. Only I devoted to traditional Chinese food, though. Yes, <laughs> yes. Americanized Chinese for... He's thinking of all kinds of cool fortune cookies. Ooh, I went to a we like could a, use improvement there. Uh, one of my mm. my good friends is married to a Chinese woman, and she's from China, but she you know, grew up here, like saw his family there. So she goes back and everything. She doesn't have an accent or anything, but she was like, she's oh, that's called yeah, a banana. Are you not familiar she, with this? I am not. One of my Yellow friends. on the outside, white on the inside. One of my oh, friends okay. is a banana. I yeah, that. yeah. But anyway, she was like, oh, we got to take you. You guys out to like incredibly real offensive Chinese. when I think about <laughs> not yeah, to him. <laughs> I have a I have a a, a, a rice patty pass, <laughs> so I'm rice, okay. Rice patty pass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Carry so on with your story. We we went to uh we went to a like real legit Chinese place in a Chinese community kind of, kind of micro community here in St. Louis, and there's like you'll go driving down this road and it'll be like. Fucking Lion's Choice, which is like a local fast food place. Uh, Burger King, Taco Bell, Ying's uh, takeout place. And it'll like almost metaf like, like be a metamorphosis down this one road happens where it goes from like normal, like American stuff to like Chinese restaurants written in English to straight up signs on the side, like uh, characters, Chinese characters on the side of buildings. And we get to this one. And we're, I'm like, oh, interesting. Okay. There was a, a Chinese market next door and the wait was a long time. So I went in there and like poked around. Pro tip, if you want strange meats or even <laughs> normal vegetables at an insanely cheap price, find your local Chinese market because it, I was blown away at how cheap this shit was because <laughs> I'm serious. It was insane. Like this is beef? carrots. Yeah, sure. That's that's beef. It's whatever you want it to be. <laughs> you want and monkey? So we, went, we got monkey. <laughs> we got Where's monkey. my dog? Don't ask. There was a whole, you know how there's like ramen packets? They yeah. had that same style, but with a clear opening on the front, and it was called squid head. And it was just squid heads in there. And she said that she used to eat them all the time as a kid, and I told her, I'll, I'll take your word for it. It looks gross. So anyway, we go to the restaurant, 
And it's like everyone in there, aside from my girlfriend and I and my friend, are Asian. Chinese specifically, all of them. And that's how you know. It's legit and it's good. Like all the talk from other tables, not in English. I'm expecting great things from this restaurant. And the food, by the way, spectacular. So <sighs> fucking good. And the decor, though, <laughs> was like what I imagined a Chinese person showing up here and just going, American decor, and just searching <laughs> that. <laughs> and they had the entire restaurant's wallpaper was like this wide strips of just street names in New York. And it was over and over and over. And so it'd be like, oh, wow, Broadway, 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 Broadway. Broadway, Broadway. They didn't even stagger them. It was just all the streets over and over. But they, they, they couldn't read it. They didn't fucking know. Yeah. So that was, that was cracking my oh, they're like sense. Their drink policy, I was like, yeah, do you have like a, a, a Bud Light or something? And they're like, like the, the waitress didn't speak very good English. And she just like pointed at a cooler in the corner. And I was like, are you going to get it for me? Do <laughs> I go get it? I don't, I don't want to be rude. And like literally my, my friend's wife is like going, me, me now. And then like she said something back and she's like, yeah, Taylor, you just hop up and grab your own. And I was like, oh, okay. We're on the honor system. Here, I guess. <laughs> we're on the honor. <laughs> like, How many foot lights did you have? A fucking zero, bitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> But uh, I was I was just getting such a fucking laugh at the fact that they clearly did like one Google search and then just Broadway all around the restaurant. Great food. I'll end up going back. So, but uh, yeah, the Chinese. Taylor, are there any cultures it. where it'd be like, oh, everyone's speaking in certain native language here. This food's going to suck. Oh, oh, I'm trying to think. What's like a British accents? nationality of food? Maybe, but I like fish and chips, and that's a fair fallback. And they seem to do that really fucking well. Shepherd's pie, that's solid. I don't have two dishes that are good in their (laughs) nation. Shepherd, something that seems gross is beans on toast. Oh, what a way to start your day! (laughs) Just a (laughs) bunch of beans on toast. Oh, I'd like to have gas in 40 minutes (laughs) as I drive my go kart to my London job. (laughs) I know how to start the day right. (laughs) With three wheels. (laughs) Oh, I've tipped my car again because the fart blew it off its axes. Uh, yeah, that one I don't get. Oh, I don't I'm, get. Uh, t- <laughs> look, I'm gonna get in a fight over a soccer match. Yeah. <laughs> hooligans. Yeah, I don't. I, There's I, I, a, I do think that culture is cool. German the hooligan culture. That, no, Germans have great food. All the worsts, the I'm, all the schnitzels, schnitzels. That's good. They got pretzels there. Pretzels Ooh. are great. They got beer cheese. They got big titted like ladies that cheese. come around with with big beer steins. Big steins. Yeah, Stein. Uh, there's this new movie coming out that I'm really jazzed about. The Hitler movie. Uh, what's it called? It's like Johnny Rabbit or something. I- I'll find I thought it. you were going to say Johnny Depp as Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> he's up walking around like he's drunk. Yeah. Yeah, it's Jojo Rabbit. Jojo Rabbit. What makes it Let interesting? Me... It's full of music. Yeah. Like, 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 the trailer is literally a music video. <laughs> It's, it's a Hitler music video. Well, the trailer is so it's it's um, written and directed by the guy who made Thor Ragnarok, whose name is oh TT unpronounceable. Yeah, Taika yeah. Waititi. Taika Waititi, and uh, it looks fucking hilarious. Um, it it looks to me like it's. I, I try not to watch too much of trailers, but it looks like it's going to focus on this child who's in the Hitler Youth, and uh, he's being trained. To me, he's like he tells his friend he's like oh i'm a soldier for you know they have british accents because it's, it's silly yeah i'm a soldier and his friend goes but you're 11 he goes oh no <laughs> and so like they're they're at like hitler youth camp and who shows up but hitler himself and he's like running with the kid like 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 having fun with him during the training like there's a scene where the kid mm-hmm. throws a throwing knife at a tree it bounces right back and hits another kid and like stabs the kid in the thigh it, it looks really. This is Hitler's good. We haven't really kid. explored the comedic aspect of Nazis yet. Not thoroughly. No, right. it needs um, to be explored. Inglorious. It Bastards looks like a, a lot of fun. I'm I'm really jazzed about it. Speaking of Inglorious Bastards, let me Th- see. This, this is comes the same out, guy that's... who's in. Uh, have you guys seen What We Do in the Shadows? Oh shit! It's out. I gotta find this. Uh, I did. I did, and I really liked what we did. What we uh, do in the shadows. That was a weird 
vampire movie. Yeah, it's this very is funny. The, uh, this is like he's like the like he, walk he, through. He's like, and this is this is Victor. He is seven thousand years old. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he just opens the tomb and gives him a chicken that he eats. No, no, <laughs> Peter. Peter. <laughs> oh. I've been watching a lot of deep fakes. Okay. Yeah. I, and uh, my favorite, uh, do I, my favorite one I've watched so far, I think might be Adam Sandler as the bear Jew. That's Have a you deep seen, fake. Uh, I'd like to see that. You, you remember the scene where, um, where the bear Jew comes out of the tunnel and he's like hitting the bat on the wall, like, cock, yeah. cock. and then he comes out to finish off the Nazi, like sergeant or whatever. Like, He's coming, but he's making Adam Sandler goo 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 noises like go lo do do. And when he shows up, you know they do such a good job. It's fucking Sandler. It's it, it's. Let me see if we can find it. It's probably a fucking music video too. Deep fakes. You know that a lot of politicians are secretly stoked on deep fakes because they're like, oh, oh, thank God when that comes out, I can claim deep fake. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's no like, it wasn't me molesting that kid on little saint james island That's a deep <laughs> there was a stat that came out that said we had more governors with blackface than we had black governors and i'm like i wonder snopes is like yep that's true that's <laughs> like, so uh, fucking funny yeah we have more canadian prime ministers in blackface than we do. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh full of God. music but you can just see from that screen yeah. <laughs> shot right there that like that's fucking at and it makes me wonder how he would have done. I think uh, Eli Roth maybe plays uh, the Bear Jew in the movie, um, but but I would have taken Sandler. Sandler's got a new movie coming out where he looks unrecognizable. Um, Is it, it, it like it, a drama that he's? Yeah, it looks it? intense as fuck. Uh, last thing under his little searches. Grown ups. Oh, gems. Uncut gems. Is that it? Yes, uncut gems. Uncut Gems looks insane. It looks like a real, like, um, uh, high, pa- uh, like, fast paced. Um, the only thing the Jewish community likes uncut. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's going to be really good. I want to see that too. Um, a lot, I'm, I'm looking forward to some new movies coming out. I really enjoyed going to see, um, what was that movie that we, were, we, were, we all watched uh, recently? Joker. Joker. I really enjoyed going to the, the theater for that. It had been a while since there, um, a decent movie, or at least one that I was interested in, had come out that I felt was... Yeah, there's Endgame. Oh, I, think, the I think we watched this trailer on... That was the PKA one before that, recently. yeah. Yeah, because this looks good. I know I've seen this trailer. I'll see this. Yeah, I saw... That was in the previews at Joker. Uh, that that was that's, that's where I saw the preview the first time. So yeah, I'm definitely down to see that. Uh, I could see Joker again. That movie was so good. Yeah, I've told everybody I know. I was, I, I, you know, if, if you want to watch it, let me know. I want to. I'll go again. I'll take you. Whatever. Let's do it again. Huh. So if I missed anything the first time. Yeah, for sure. That's gonna be one of those Blu-rays I definitely purchase right away. It's still so funny that people are ruining those stairs for everyone who lives around them, like were, the Joker dancing down the stairs. I looked at the Joker reviews. There were actually a lot of like it seems to be not a love it or hate it movie, but it's definitely a love it or like it movie. You know, there are a lot of people who thought it was a little one note. Like I, I thought it was going to be the only one. But that wasn't the case. No, I like that. Maybe. I, I never really read reviews of movies. I just kind of watch the trailer and see if I think it looks good. Yeah, I like to form my own opinion. I like to, you know, I like to look at the reviews and see if it's going to be a real stinker or not. Because like mm-hmm. the, the two movies I just mentioned, I'm going to watch regardless. Because I think I can tell that these are going to be good. Just reading these books by their covers, I suppose. Or not so much. You see the trailer, you see a lot of it. But sometimes I don't know, and I, and I like to see like is it a three percent on Rotten Tomatoes because that might be telling. But some of my favorite movies are have have really low Rotten Tomato ratings, and I think they're really high, well respected. Like, like whenever I I'm on the 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 movies subreddit, and um, you know, some will be someone will ask for a good like sci-fi horror movie. Everybody's always recommending Event Horizon, and then you look at the Rotten Tomatoes for Event Horizon, it's like. 30% something like that it's it's real shit what's your guys i mean i don't one is hard what's like in no particular order top 3 movies all time and if it's a if it's a series <clears throat> of movies just name the series so you don't have uh, to split it godfather 2 is my number 1 um the shining is number 2 and 3 is probably shawshank redemption 
Solid I struggle list. with recency bias a lot when topics like this come up. You know, like the first one that popped in my head was Endgame. Like I really, really like that movie. But is that just recency bias? You know? Maybe, yeah. Like <clears throat> like try like think about like you as a like kid or a young man. Like well, those Okay, like old school Star Wars I liked a lot. But I rewatch them and I'm like, oh, this was actually slower paced than I thought it was. Like it it was better in my memory than it, if watching what I'll call the fourth one, which is the oldest one, yeah. uh, it's not as good as I thought it was at the time. Yeah, they're pretty garbage. I would say the Lord of the Rings, American Psycho. Uh, I really like The Thing, Ooh, that Carpenter movie. Yeah, John, yeah, yeah. John Carpenter movie. I th- Kurt Russell. Of all the horror movies I've ever seen, I think that's my favorite one. Because it does a it's, good job of like usually like I love thrillers, but I like the horror aspect. And a lot of the time, the thrillers you see that are really good aren't very scary. It's more just like, what's going to happen next? What did they just discover? Where are they moving? What are they just got like that kind of thing? This yeah. is like a thriller horror that genuinely is scary and keeps you on the edge of your seat. So yeah, probably- the thing is an excellent, excellent movie. Um, John Carpenter made a, a lot of cool movies like that. I like the 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 music. I like the the setting. Um, I like all the characters. There's a lot of good character actors in there, but the practical effects steal the fucking show. The practical effects in that are amazing. There's no CGI. Mm-hmm. It's fucking. It when 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 that body fucking he's it, like he's doing chest compressions on this guy, and the guy's entire chest opens up, sprouts teeth, and and like because he's doing chest compressions, yeah. his hands go inside the man, and the body bites the guy's arms off up to like the elbow. It's so fucking crazy. I've got my yeah, three. It was spooky. They're not going to be go. great people to make fun, but here it is. Endgame, Indecent Proposal, a movie I didn't even enjoy, but I was really impressed with how much it made me feel, like it moved me. And um, the first Paranormal Activity, another one, not a cinematic great, but um, it scared me, like it moved me. And that's what impresses me. And that's what I guess I'm judging it by right now. In theaters, that scared the shit out of me. Like yeah, I at the t- well, it scared me more than I let on to the people I was with, where they're like everybody's jumping and I'm just kind of like, haha, bitch. That didn't scare me. <laughs> <laughs> Some of that paranormal activity has had me completely engaged and wrapped up and vulnerable to what it was trying to do to me. Yeah, so good movie. Uh, it's uh, it's a very good movie. Uh, I think it was, I thought it was excellent too. Have you ever seen Requiem for a Dream? Yeah, sad as fuck. I was going. Heard of it, I'm not sure. If if indecent proposal made you feel something, and that and and for you that's you, it sounds like that's what it sounds like what you're going by. Like like what makes a movie good is a movie that can make you feel something and have like an actual reaction to it. And and all three of those you named have done that for you. I know because you know we talk about uh, Captain America picking up the hammer and that triumphant music, and you get kind of choked up, but you're you're pumped. And then you know indecent proposal, the the sort of emotional shattering that the, that that. We, putting yourself in his shoes, the, the whole, uh, you know, indecent proposal as it were. And then what, what did you say your third one was? End game. Is that the one? End. Oh, you did end game and decent proposal and, uh, and paranormal. paranormal activity. And obviously paranormal activity, you have this visceral reaction, you know, your, your mm. heart is literally pounding. That scared me so, so much when I watched that. I have another Requiem one. for a dream. will fit right in there for you. If you really? watch that. I'm going to write that down. I'm, I might. Oh Yeah. But yeah, uh, let me know right after the, the moment you finish it. <laughs> There's finish another, it. I forget the name of it, but I'm positive you guys will know it. Clint Eastwood is in there and he's coaching a female boxer. Million Dollar Baby. Million Dollar Baby had an impact on me too. That was mm-hmm. like triumphant and sad. And it, it's it, like old yeller with a white chick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a really good movie. There was a scene yeah. in there, like it just, a, it, it worked on me to illustrate how passionate she was about this dream. She's learning boxing footwork, and she she's a waitress, so she's mm-hmm. waiting tables this way, never crossing her feet. Like her whole movement around the restaurant was proper boxing footwork because it had consumed her life, and it was her passion. And it, it was really good. It was a really really good movie. So great movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Clint Eastwood makes some real fucking. He's got another one coming out. Dude's oh, yeah. like ninety, and I think he's working on a new film. Oh, um, I think we've talked about it before. That it that not that's the mule that you're probably thinking of but but like and that was like last year's movie he's got a new oh the richard jewell movie so um yeah that's the uh, centennial olympic park bombing the the 1996 atlanta olympics Ooh. and richard jewell found the bomb and he saved everyone he was like there's a fucking bomb here everybody run and like they send the bomb squad in they defuse the bomb and dozens potentially hundreds of people don't get killed and maimed at the olympics 
And the first thing they do is they're like, so you found the bomb, huh? Lucky you. Why'd you do it? He's like, whoa, wait, what? <laughs> wait. It, the, here's, you're going to love this little tidbit of trivia. The guy playing Richard Jewell, Taylor, mm-hmm. remember the Juggalos for Life episode of It's Always Sunny? Yeah. That's him. No. He's the Juggalos for Life kid. Yeah, he's still got a juggler. No, I'm, I'm a juggalo. <laughs> <laughs> they, Kyle, do you remember that like from real life or were you too young? The bombing. Oh, I remember it very well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to yeah. say the guy who actually did it fled into like the mountains of North Carolina and he was caught. He was like on the run for a while and they caught him coming down out of the mountains, like find forage for food in a dumpster and they caught him that way. The way I remember it, Richard Jewell's name was slurred, scarred, like damaged. S- scorched earth. Yeah, for sure. For a while. Like it wasn't like they looked at him and then two days later said, hey, everyone, just so you know, he's innocent. No. It was like a footnote two years later. Like, yeah, because they looked so bad. They're, they're not going to, you know, the FBI isn't going to come and say, hey, we goofed, you know, uh, best law enforcement agency on the planet. But uh, <laughs> we were really wrong this time. Also, the entire news media, they should probably, uh, you guys are coming out next to apologize, right? <laughs> no? Yeah, <laughs> let, let's just cancel this whole thing. It's good because it was fucking CNN and like all the major oh, networks yeah. and the FBI shit on this guy's name for like a year and a half till he's getting death threats. His life is being ruined. Mm-hmm. He's hiding. And that's what this movie is about. And and in reality, actual, I don't, I, I don't like to throw around the word hero, but saved a lot of people by doing his job well because he was a security guard or something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's And sad. that's Clint Eastwood's new movie. Yeah. And he died at 44 from heart Oh, spoiler alert. Diabetes. Wait, he diabetes. died at 44 of diabetes? Seven. Yeah. Uh, dude, there's, I have a local story here for, uh, here, here in my neck of the woods, Wake County, North Carolina. A football coach. Oh, no. Got fired from his job. Did he molest someone? No, he said something mm. racist. So when I first heard it, I thought like, ooh, that's unfortunate. I wonder what he said, right? Like sometimes people will say something racist and it's uh, it's not the worst thing you could say, right? And then I was like, well, maybe he dropped the N-bomb. That's no good, right? That, that, that You're not supposed to do that. I'm expert on this topic. Well, no. <laughs> Turned out this gentleman said, white power, Nightdale. I still love you, brother, but not brother. And uh, uh, he didn't mean it in a negative way, though, he says. But he did say through the years, his friends who are black have said it's okay for him to use the N-word. He had a hood pass. Oh. He said this is the... Re- ads. Yeah. Um, he says, he explained to me that this was, quote, locker room talk, which was... <laughs> cond- he, this is true. I'm not making this up. Locker room talk condoned by his black players. He used while celebrating Friday with friends. Goodness, boys. I don't know if any of you have ever used the phrase white power outside of this show right here where we like to have a good time. <laughs> I have not. On the show. Uh, I have not. Oh, wow. No, but he should have said because he's from Nightdale was night power. He, I, I feel like Trump would have been like, y'all misheard me. I said night power. He asked well, what kind Trump of toothpaste I y'all. used. I was just telling him it's white power. White power. <laughs> <laughs> he misunderstood. It blasts um, away states. I would know. Ask anyone. I've been around <laughs> them for so long. We're friends. I mean nothing from it. The word can be used in multiple ways. They treat me as any of their own friends. Multiple he does ways. seem like there's a little distance there. I, I, I don't know him. I don't know what to make of this. He's like 12 years of my career ruined in 15 seconds. And, and through that lens, I almost feel bad for him. On the other hand, who says white power in the N word? And like the same sentence. Well, too. well, the most important thing in this is 12 years. And he was still the assistant football coach. Oh, so maybe it's not panning out for you. Sir. <laughs> maybe go somewhere else and do something else. Yeah. Like this might be a blessing in disguise, brother. <laughs> I, had, I had risen to the prestigious title of assistant coach of the local high school football team. And all of, of the... that was ripped down, <laughs> torn asunder. Wait a minute. Wait, what, did they pay you for that job? Well, no, but I don't. Well, think I'm an accountant me. by trade. <laughs> Not anymore. 
God damn. It's more by for fun. So yeah, you can't they don't say that. that. Uh, like, like, if you're not, I feel like certain people should be able to say whatever they want. Like, like especially if it's satirical. But this wasn't satire. This was him like making a public statement, and it like, like no tongue in cheek. No, it, 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 this is how the guy was talking, and he even admits almost in his explanation that like, hey, I say this all the time. Nobody's got a problem with it. All right, well, we do. Uh, I don't like him saying white I, power. I, 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 I completely stay away from the N word <laughs> now. Uh, but I do did used to find the A and R thing a little weird. It's in media. Like if I read Tom Sawyer, can I still not say it? If it's in you can song, say it if you're reading Tom Sawyer. It's just yeah. funny that every you top can't 40 say it if you're quoting someone. Now times. I know it was a misquote, but you can't say it if you're quoting someone. Can you say it if you're reading something? Like like where the, yeah. the rules are very See, complicated like, uh, for me. Like, but you, the white power thing. <laughs> that was that's not a close call. What were you saying? Oh, I was saying like you're saying like can you read it and stuff and like the like what is it Tom Sawyer? Yes, like Huck that Bear. book where yeah Huck Finn where it's in there the whole time. And like part of the character development is by the end, he's going, oh, you're just Jim. You're Jim. Okay, Jim, you're not N-word Jim that I've been calling you the entire book. And like, if you remove that from the book, then you remove the entire you character lose the meaning. arc, which is him coming to the realization that this is a person I'm talking to that doesn't need a qualifier like that in front of it. You're just Jim. Yep. You don't need N word. You're absolutely right. And so when you take that out of certain like historical texts like that, because that is historical at this point, like you lose a lot of the punchiness and the original meaning. Like people right now are like, oh, that book's like a racist. It's like it was literally an anti-racist book showing yeah. the progression of someone growing to realize their past mistakes. Yeah, that was an escaped slave. Anyway, I mean, criminal. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Well, you don't have to argue that point here. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, so I find you the know, rules it's, around... it's the white power that puts it over the end. <laughs> yeah, the N word is very complicated. The rules for that, uh, and I've simplified them for myself. Just, just use the B word. But yeah, uh, it's funny. Uh, I feel like we're gonna be real loose with it now. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> What's up, brothers? It's all good. But the white power thing, I, I don't know how he could possibly. Do. What was he thinking? How funny would it be if like. They're like that. That's like a two hundred year old like school slogan. There, they're in all white with white helmets. He's like oh, wow. chanting that, and he's like, "No, no, no, not like that." Like, it's because of the uni George. It's because of the uniform. You can't say it, with Jerry. You can't say it. Do you know who's doing Steinbrenner's uh, voice? You know, they always I do go. Larry David. That was Larry David the whole fucking I'm time. Such an idiot. Me I too. Been able to hear the cadence. I never caught it. it. I never caught I it, caught Costanza. It. <laughs> George, George, bring in these, bring in these pieces. Or what is it? Uh, the uh, the the calzones. Bring these calzones. Bring these calzones. You know what? You got a lot of great ideas. A lot of great ideas, Costanza. A lot of a lot of good things we're gonna bring for you. You know, don't don't walk away. Come on. Oh, no, he never says don't walk away. He just <laughs> leaves as he's yeah. talking. <laughs> I, I love, love that. My favorite one is where George wants to get fired, so he's just. He literally takes the World Series trophy, ties it behind his car, and starts doing laps out in the yeah. parking lot. And, and Steinbrenner's like, I love it, George. You made a statement. Out with the old, in with the new. Forget yeah. about all that. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I never did like I never did like Babe Ruth. I found out recently, wasn't even a sultan. He was just a fat man with little legs. He gets these out. And he stands up, puts his leg up on the desk. He's like, these are Lou Gehrig's pants. Oh, I hope that nerve disease he had isn't catching. <laughs> <laughs> God, that show, I, I, I don't, I can't imagine myself ever getting tired of rewatching Seinfeld. I, I don't know how they wrote it. it. The writing is so good. Here's another example: the the episode where Jerry and Elaine are in some like antique store, and he and and she spots one of those uh, cigar yeah, shop Indians, cigar one of those big wood, wooden Indian guys. Later on, he goes to her apartment to give her this as a, as like a peace offering, like, like like because he had like he had done something. You know, he's always like fucking shit up. And her friend, she's having like a girls' poker night, and one of the ladies there is Native American. Woody doesn't know. Um, Jerry doesn't know it, and and uh, Jerry's going, 
he's like rocking the Indian. Hey, yo, ho, hey, yo, ho, hey, yo, ho. He's like, he's like making all these Native American like faux pas. He's like, yeah, I thought we could smoke them the peace pipe, you know? <laughs> I, I brought you this, and uh, the girl gets super, super offended. But Jerry's really into her. He goes and he apologizes, and she's like, all right, well, I guess I'll go out with you. And then like, <laughs> fucking Kramer's driving down the road in a in a in the backseat of a taxi, and he's got the the cigar shop Indian with him, and he goes, <laughs> hey Jerry, woo! <laughs> And she's like, "What the fuck?" Like every time he he's trying so hard not. Isn't that to the like... same one where he's like, "Oh, we'll go for Chinese. Let me uh, let me ask the mailman if you guys have a good Chinese restaurant." And the mailman's bent over like doing something, and he's like, "Excuse me, do you know where a good Chinese restaurant might be?" He's like, "Oh, why must I know where the good Chinese restaurant is? Is it because I'm Chinese?" And she's looking at the whole time. <laughs> he's like, "No, it's because you're the mailman. You know the neighborhood." Like, yeah, <laughs> it's fucking great. My, he was trying to. He, he got tickets for like a, a show. He was like, "They were they were sold out." But I found one. Of, I found a, uh, you know, one of those guys who, you know, yeah. she's like, "What?" You know, the guys who sells the tickets for uh, things that are, uh, and uh, and at the restaurant. I also at the re I called the restaurant. And I made a reser. Um, you know, I I arranged for a, 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 a table for. Her. Like he's trying so hard not to use any of the words. Uh, then he ended up calling her an Indian giver at the end. <laughs> Dude, that, Dude, the best Seinfeld so bit, man. for me anyway, by far, was the girl. He was dating her and he liked her, but he didn't remember her name. So he had people stop by, tried to get them, tried to get her to introduce herself, but she wouldn't. And, and then she dropped a hint that her name was after a female body part. Yeah. And he's, he's like, uh, Mulva? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is your name Hest Laureola? <laughs> like, you know, did you, I remember what it actually was. Yeah. Dolores. <laughs> it was yeah. Dolores. Yeah, after she left, he's like Dolores. That, that was fun. Like he invites Kramer in. Bovary. Like, Kramer, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, Bovary's like, hey, do you want to introduce yourself? Like, <laughs> to get the name, and Kramer's like, hey. Cosmo Kramer. And then he just fucking leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Her name was Gipple. <laughs> yeah, Gipple. <laughs> I love when Kramer goes on the Leonardo da Vinci sleep pattern where he sleeps 20 minutes every three hours. <laughs> I feel great, Jerry. I feel great. <laughs> he fell asleep on my couch. <laughs> so, oh, it's so fucking funny. I, I, I'll never get tired of that show. That, yeah, I, It's Always Sunny, South Park, like a couple others are shows that I just need to give like a year or so time in between and then i can rewatch the whole series and love it yeah i do that lay off so much dude i've seen i've seen the office so 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 many times late seasons i don't like rewatching as much Once yeah the last first season's season's not great. first it. season's not so great first season offended a lot you know they completely remodel michael scott after right. the first season yeah he, he was yeah. the star of that show Oh, for sure. No doubt. Yeah. Well, him, Dwight, and Jim were like the trifecta of funny, except Jim was more just a straight man. He was never that independently funny. It was like... You root for Jim. Jim's your guy. You know? You, you want good things for Jim. Jim. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And everybody else is like the zany world that, that, that Jim and Pam sort of inhabit. If you're a girl watching the show, you might see yourself as Pam. If you're a guy, you probably see yourself as Jim. And then they just sort of exist in this world of zany characters. Yeah, Kevin's Kevin and all the characters are really interesting. I like Kevin a lot. He's one of my favorites. Me like Kevin too. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. I wish I could find like a modern show that's still out that I feel the same way about. Huh? Uh, I guess Sunny. But oh, Brooklyn Nine Nine's pretty good. I tried watching that. I I couldn't get into it. Like it just uh. didn't make me laugh very hard. The only guy I thought was funny was occasionally the very autistic black uh chief who just uh -huh. didn't care what was going on and then andy samberg but even after a couple episodes i was just like yeah i'm like I'm disappointed that andy samberg and his wife amy in the show aren't like a real life couple like they're so perfect together they're written well but that yeah. shows, is it still on yeah like still coming out uh, it comes out oh, in january okay. huh. have you guys watched any of the new season of it's always sunny not yet no I'm up to date on it. Is it um, depressing? Is it not good? Some good, some bad. They, they're aging. Yeah. Who isn't? Uh, Mac. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Touche. Yeah. Mac's that looking better bad. than he did in season three. Is, yeah. <laughs> is he, he looking better than episode? last year? Yeah. He got yeah, jacked last year. Now. He's still yeah. ripped. Uh, they did an episode that's sort of like an allegory for global warming where like they're trying to tell everybody in the bar that, hey, hey, hey. 
everybody stop dancing around so much that it's getting hot in here. The, the air conditioning, you're overtaxing it and we can't afford to turn the air conditioning so low. And he's like, like, and, and the girl's like, but I want to dance. He's like, well, we all want to dance, but yeah. <laughs> maybe for the betterment of everyone, we don't dance so much, maybe a slow dance. And she's like, and, and, you know, we're running a little low on liquor. Maybe instead of 10 shots, five shots. She's like, but I want 10 shots. Somebody's like, you don't tell her what she needs. Yeah. And, and <laughs> so they, they've all stripped down to their underwear and Max just sitting there like fucking Jesus, just super duper ripped. Just it's, it's absurd. J I, honestly, Dennis is in really good shape too. Like not on the level of Mac, but like a top 5% body. He Max on steroids, right? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I want to see. I'm getting better at identifying the uh, Car Camaro Usman, that guy. I was mm -hmm. looking at his pictures. There is no photographic evidence of that guy not having hard nipples. He has to be on roids. Who is who is it? He's a uh, the current 170 pound UFC champion. What's his name? Camaro Usman. U S M A N. Um. Yeah, you look at him. He has hard nipples in every shot. Yeah, cut glass with these bad boys. You know what's even harder than uh, Usman's nipples? <laughs> yes, I do. Kevin Lee's <laughs> belly button. Well, that leads us into our sponsor, Blue Chew. <laughs> have, have you seen Kevin Lee's belly button? It yeah. protrudes oh. out like a giant nipple on in the middle. Of, instead of a belly button, he has like a, a, a belly button nipple. That just sticks out, and it's the grossest thing I've ever seen. And I was on poopygirls.com earlier. <laughs> <laughs> poopygirls.com. Yeah, That's this, funny. This Look at Max's arm. Looking good. He's got that nice tricep definition. Look at his it's... upper abs. I'm more envious of that core than the arms. Traps Every... aren't huge. They look good. They're defined, but they're not steroid level so i think he's just a hard worker and he throws that girl around like she's weightless in that and that scene that this photo is taken from when he's fucking twirling her it's it's really impressive what he's done uh you mentioned a sponsor let me tell you about casper mattresses because they actually are a sponsor tonight this episode of pk is brought to you by casper mattresses casper is a sleep brand that makes expertly designed products to help you get your best rest one night at a time casper products are cleverly designed to mimic human curves providing supportive comfort for all kinds of bodies their breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulates your body temperature throughout the night casper offers two other mattresses the wave and the Essential. The Wave features a patent-pending premium support system to mirror the natural shape of your body. The Essential has a streamlined design at a price that won't keep you up at night. Casper also offers a wide array of other products like pillows and sheets to ensure an overall better sleep experience. All designed, developed, and assembled in the USA. They've got affordable prices uh, because Casper cuts out that middleman and they sell directly to you. And you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100-night risk-free sleep on it trial. So start sleeping better today and get 100 bucks toward any uh, toward select mattress uh, purchases by visiting casper.com slash PKA and using code PKA at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. That's casper.com slash PKA. Promo code PKA at checkout for 100 bucks toward select mattresses. Check I just got another out. Casper the other day. They're genuinely good mattresses. Yeah, I've got I've got two of them. I uh, put one in the guest bedroom. Yeah, like I, that's what I'd buy. Good stuff. You know the uh, the Free Folk subreddit. Yeah, they really remind me how bad Game of Thrones got. I almost forget, like, like Bran warging into a bird the entire White Walker Last fight. <laughs> like, hey guys, to, remember to, to when... no avail, to no avail. To no avail. Nothing come came. There were so many plot points that are just like dead ends. Yeah. Where they, they teased so much and paid off almost nothing. Like, like, like I always th think back. <clears throat> one of the big things that I remember was when they were the fist of the first men in like season one. And I think Sam discovered that underground like parcel that had like that horn in it and the dragon glass daggers. Mm -hmm. And it was like, holy shit. This is going to be key to the plot. Never came back up. And, you know, Sam getting his dad's sword. That That's on to the top nothing. of Free Folk right now. I Sam saw getting too, his yeah. dad's sword. And I'm just like, they, they remind me more and more. Like, uh, I, they just, so many, uh, that, that, it's like Lost, right? Lost, every episode of Lost made me want to watch the new thread that they opened up. 
And then yeah. at the end, it was just a big frazzled knot. Like it was yeah, just... fuck those guys, man. They they really shit. And and, and the they they did it on purpose out of greed. I'm glad that they didn't. They're not getting the Star Wars project. It's like they weren't interested in Game of Thrones anymore, so they just threw it away. That, that's exactly what it was. I mean, I've said it before on the show, but like my bet is that they were locked into a contract for like what they're going to get paid per episode of Game of Thrones. And HBO was like, hey, you want to do 10, 20 more episodes? And they're like, at that rate, we'll, we'll knock it out in six. And, and and meanwhile, they've got this other project that God knows what they're going to make because they just came off of the most successful television of all time. Uh-huh. They, they just wanted to get out of this current contract, just like any any like professional athlete would do the same thing. Like, hey, uh, you want to play a couple more seasons? Like, no, my contract's up. I'm going to go play for the Lakers and make three times as much. Oh, speaking of the Lakers, did you see LeBron's hair fall off? I oh, did. I didn't. <laughs> Oh. It's like me a clip. That sounds funny. Dude, it's, <laughs> it's funny so, you mention that because there is an actual clip of LeBron's hair falling off. You have a I link. He at, got plugs. Yo, yeah, yeah. No, Did he, he not get plugs? I don't think so. So uh, LeBron's hairline has been regarded as one of the best comebacks in all of sports. I thought that it was real. That if you had unlimited money, you could get really good replacement hair. That's what I thought. It turns out. He's been gluing his hair on. Yeah. In this clip, so I think you want to scroll. Um, if you scroll down, there's an image you can see, and it basically, it like slid up. Like it comes unglued and it slides up. Um, but in this in this clip here, um, I could, I, I, I'm on YouTube. Uh, it's a one minute and 20 second clip. Yeah. Oh, are we gonna, oh, wait, hang on. Can we show this footage? I don't know. With NHL, if you show... We've shown people shooting like between period goals and the NHL like copyright strikes it. Like, I don't know how much we can show. Yeah. You know, like when the fans shoot it and there's a board in front. So there's a small hole. Yeah. Copyright hit for shit like that. All right. So, so yeah, I, I agree that this is actual, like, I don't know what channel, but TNT or ESPN footage is, is what this is. So so if anyone wants to see this, it's the video is by a YouTube channel called PHP. <laughs> uh, and it's it's the title is called LeBron's Hair Falls Out During Game, but doesn't know. And then Anthony Davis lets him know. It's a long, wordy title. But that's what happens. Like he's got like a um like a, uh, a headband on and, and it has <clears throat> slid up and his whole hairline has slid up with it and bunched up like mid head. And Anthony Davis is like, hey, hey, your fucking hair's coming off. <laughs> and he's laughing your at fucking, him. He's <laughs> laughing at him. And LeBron's like, God damn. Anthony Davis is one of you the know, few people in the league who can make fun of LeBron. Like, they're peers almost. You know, he's younger, so he doesn't have the accomplishments. But he's a, he's a very, yeah. very good player. He's him and us. Okay. Touche. But, yeah, so I, I, I thought he had plugs. I thought that they did his hair great. It looked so it. good. It made me wonder if maybe black people hair was easier than white people hair. It was so good. But I guess it's glued on. And the headband took his hairline and pushed it up to where, like, I don't know what's there, like glue and hair residue yeah. or something. <clears throat> I'm uh, LeBron that James hasn't happened before. If it's just glued on, it he's got to be getting it sweaty. Has. That's so what I've read that, it, that it's happened uh, before, and it's it's very thin in the back. Like it's it. He's losing it completely. There's no reason for this man not to shave. Losing his head. it a long time ago. Yeah, like yeah. Like, like there's no hair. reason for him not to shave his head. Like like first of all, it's you know, black people look just fine with that look. It's it's a classic look for them. You know. I, and, yeah, I uh, think black people pull off bald a little better. They really do, and he's got the beard to 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 like offset it. I feel like guys who have like uh, there's a there's a Twitch streamer, um, what is it uh, WTF Moses? Okay, and uh, he's completely shaved, big beard, looks great. Or uh, binging with Babish, the guy who does the cooking channel that you may have seen. He does like meals from TV and movies. Same thing. Rings nice of redemption. Beard. Yeah, these are all equivalent. Yeah. <laughs> Right, big big bushy beard shaves his head. Does Wings have a? Is Wings still rocking a beard? I don't even know. He's yeah, got the strap. it. Uh, when, when you're heavy, the beard helps a ton with the whole. Neckline. Yeah, with with the chin. Yeah, like it's, definition. It's facial contouring for men. You know what's not good is you can gain, like when when I'm clean shaven. Mm-hmm. Like I've definitely been fat as fuck clean shaven, but. I know I'm getting fat, and I know when I am fat. 
like clean shaven. Okay. I have to rely, rely on like thigh and belly looks when I have a beard because it's very easy to hide a bunch of trash right <laughs> under here when you have a beard. And yeah, I, I'm never shaving it. Not unless, well, yeah, if I have to, I will. But I just look, I, some people just don't look, some people look fucking terrible with beards and some people look way, way better with them. And every single bit of feedback I've ever gotten from anyone is like, yeah, that's probably for you, you round-headed, fat-headed <laughs> the, the equivalent trap for women is stretchy pants. Uh, they can wear stretchy pants and just be unaware of their gain. And then they put on a pants with a, you know, no stretch and a, and a button. And it's like, oh. Oh, yeah. I, I blame these newfangled elastic uh, band jeans you can buy. Not the, um, not the... What pajama are jeans. Jeggings or whatever the fuck you're wearing. I wear uh, pajama jeans. Not, not the pajama jeans that are they stretchy all the way through. Me. Are Just you still wearing pajama band. jeans? Every day, all day. Okay. Oh, I I have no room to talk. I'm in cargo shorts right now. So they're sick. Dad I'm power. In pajama pants. They're real <laughs> pajamas. They're sick. They they look like, like I before I tell anyone that I'm wearing pajamas, I'll be like, hey, what do you think of these jeans? They're pretty nice, huh? And they'll be like, Yeah, that is a nice pair of jeans. What are those? I was like, I was like, how much do you think this this pair of jeans cost? And they'll do what Taylor does and go, I don't know, eight, nine thousand dollars. <laughs> it's a funny bit. It never gets old. <laughs> <It never gets laughs> <off. laughs> what do you, what start... do you think I got this Mustang for? Seventy dollars. <laughs> no, fourteen, fourteen thousand. <laughs> they're, they're fucking pajamas. They're fucking pajamas. They feel, you know, there's no you button. Yeah, I sometimes I fall. I, I took a nap earlier, fell asleep in them all the time. Yeah, I, uh, pajama jeans. Get them on Amazon. I don't like, like long pants. I, I wore long pants today. I was grumpy. I had my grumpy pants on. Put you into shorts. <laughs> Suddenly, I had a, a better outlook on life. <laughs> You're a Barney character. Uh oh, here comes Mister Grumpy. Pants. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I might wear I shorts know. all I, winter. I pretty much never wear shorts. Really? Like, unless, if I'm working out, I'll wear athletic shorts. If I'm going to like an event in the summer, I'll wear like khaki shorts. But as soon as it's like acceptable to wear pants, and sometimes not even, I go back to jeans. Like I just, I feel like I look better in jeans because my, my legs are so pale and so hairy. I might look like, better in pants too, but I'm not more comfortable. Doesn't tell the whole story. I'm literally I have a brighter outlook on life in shorts. I fair enough. <laughs> you gotta keep you going. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really am a shorts person. That's where I should be. Yeah. How's your working out been going? Pretty good. I want to run. Um, so I've been, I've been doing the calisthenics thing mostly. I, I, and some overhead press because I don't really, I can't do, um, vertical push ups like the, mm -hmm. against a wall or anything. So I do a uh, overhead press, but, um, I have this posterior tib, I think it's called, this tendon that goes like from your calf to your foot. Mm -hmm. It's, I thought it was related to the broken ankle. They say it's not. They say that uh, it's actually just walking around barefoot, flat foot. I have flat feet. And uh -huh. uh, because I don't work outside the house, I exist barefoot almost all the time. And, uh, and that, so anyway, I have to wear shoes. It's getting way better. I'll go days in between even noticing the problem. I'm hoping Good. to be cleared to run later this month, and I want to run a mile a day for 30 days. Uh, I think I've talked about this before. Saw yeah. a hot chick on YouTube do it, said I should do that. Because obviously, hot people on YouTube are experts. And I want to see what it does to me. I think if I run a mile a day for 30 days, one, it's like a, a mile run is not that long, right? Yeah. Even a regular, I don't want to call myself, let's say unfit, even an unfit person like me, can get to a mile without stopping in no time at all. The end of the first mm -hmm. week, you know, or maybe even the start. Oh, even before that. Yeah. Right. I might even start running a mile ish. And, uh, but I think at the end of 30 days, I might glide through it. Right. I might throw in some longer ones. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what it does to me. And I want to make like a little video montage. Like here, here, here I am on day one laying in the grass and then like, you know, all right, now I'm on day nine. I got a thing going day 22. I'm gliding. Like, let's see how it plays out. Or maybe it doesn't work out that well. Well, I don't know. No, it, it will. I, I'm a fucking terrible runner. I could run a mile right now. Nonstop. Like it wouldn't be a pretty mile. I, it would probably be like 
eight min eight and a half minutes or something like that, but I could do it. The I, actually, I don't even know. I haven't run a mile in so long. A little, I, I know eight and a half minutes is a long time to run a mile. I always think of like eight in and the half, sixes as good, right? I think eight and a half minutes would. I would be pretty proud of that if that's what I hit, and that would be like a track mile. The mile in my that I have planned out, like starting at my driveway, is a little hilly, and that'll add to it quite a bit for me. Well, mm-hmm. I suck at running. I suck at running. Even the most fit, old school version of me didn't run as well as you'd think he might. Uh, and then the current version of me just sucks at running. So we'll see how that goes. I'm trying to start well, soon. You and I have a similar body type, probably a little Ish. different, but yeah, like yeah. just big upper bodies, boxy, wide. big wide torsos. And then good birthing hips. Giant I have. <laughs> Uh, right. I don't know about my birthing hips, but I, <laughs> I think I've got nice birthing hips. That's why that girl made fun of me at 13 do, <laughs> doing this shit. You know? Oh, what a bitch. And she, you still remember at 13. <laughs> the you one that I, that you know, the slap day. story, you've surely yeah. heard it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She, you know, she'd do this to me. Like, like I got good <laughs> birthing hips. What a fucking cunt. <laughs> I bet she's fat now and unhappy. So it's No, okay. she's super hot. We have friends in common on Facebook. Damn. I mean, hot for 46, but yeah, <clears throat> she held well, up well. Yeah, well, what, what do you do? You do five by five overhead or do you do something else? I literally just do three sets of 10 or something. I've, I've oh. helped my weight and lowered my reps a little bit because when I start a new exercise, I do like a stupid low weight and I do three sets of 12. And I'm just, I'm really learning form and sort of breaking in the muscles. And then as I think that I'm getting good enough not to hurt myself, I'll raise the weight and lower the reps. That's what they're they say putting, to do. Yeah. Oh. I think they're putting in uh, Robert Downey Jr. for uh, for an Oscar, man. For what? Really? For Endgame? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I think um seemed like they, they didn't want to do it. Disney wasn't. It, the article says Disney is submitting the Avengers. Oh, I misread that because it was like a shortened uh url disney is submitting the avengers endgame cast for oscar consideration best supporting actor and they're basically all of them. Uh, everybody from robert downey jr to don Cheadle. uh they, they dominate they're submitting everyone now that i look at it hmm i i'm so it was scorsese <clears throat> right who said that the the marvel movies weren't cinema he did that to me is the ultimate okay boomer like Oh, if you're not making movies in the style of Taxi Driver like I did in the 70s, it's not really even a movie. That's a TV show or something. I don't know. Okay, Boomer. So the way I see it, the Marvel movies are, are popcorn movies. It, it, it When you start talking about what a good movie is, it, I think you need to – I think that's too um, – too, too, you're giving too much – it's too too much of a blank statement. So like 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 when we talked about movies earlier, you interpreted that as – which movies do you like a lot? Which movies affected you a lot? And you gave excellent answers because they were honest answers. You know, like like when I try, the the move for me, I, I'm thinking I, I took it as what are the greatest films ever created by people, and 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 that's what I gave. And they are some of my favorite films, but I also like some popcorn movies, man. I really love Super Troopers. I like Dumb and Dumber. I don't put them up as the greatest movies of all time, but I, I think there's a lot of roles. And a lot of movies that don't get any Oscar consideration, and it's bullshit. I think it's bullshit that you never see horror movies up there. Like, yeah, like, that's true. I don't even follow thought, the Oscars, and I know that meme. I, I thought that um, that that first Conjuring movie. I, I I thought that that should have been nominated for something. You know, sound design or fucking special effects or, or maybe not an acting performance. Maybe just best movie. It was amazing. I don't remember what won that year. Probably something much better. Recently, that movie about the girl fucking the fish man won. Oh yeah, I didn't watch that, but uh, right. I do remember yeah. that. I, but the I heard that was very dumb. I to me, like I wonder if Scorsese's watched enough of these movies to have an informed opinion. Like I think there's a chance he hasn't. Yeah. Um, and when I think of in uh, Endgame, for example, I don't look at the special effects. I look at the special effects just supporting a story. When Captain America got that hammer, sure, it looked like a real hammer flew, flew through the air, and like that's great, but. It wasn't the effect of it that got me. It was the what it did to the storyline that got me. When Robert Downey Jr. did his thing at the very end, you know, it it wasn't the look of the glove that got me. It, it was you know the, what the character did and, and the completion of his arc. That's cinema to me. Yeah, I 
again, the ones I, I, I look at them differently. <laughs> um, I don't think it was the best movie of the year. I, I think I think it's a popcorn movie. I enjoyed it. Which I liked one do it you a think lot. Might be the best movie. Do you, can you have, can you name a better one? Maybe Joker I, for you. Maybe you like Joker more. For see, I didn't I didn't watch a lot of movies this year. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> but but I would have to look at. I would have to really think about it and sit down. Uh, and, and do something. Joker's really high up there for me. There was Tarantino but, uh, did a movie and I didn't watch it. I, do you remember yeah, the name? Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I was in. I was locked up when that came out, so I'm, I'm waiting on that, that to come either. out on for, on uh, Blu-ray, so I can watch it then. <clears throat> it can't be as bad as Hateful Eight. I was looking forward to Hateful Eight, and that was just not. It just I think I like that more than you. I think I saw it twice. In the it's theater. thirty minutes too long. Like very much, yeah. It's thirty yeah, minutes it too, too long, long. And, uh, and and there were some choices that I I thought weren't great storytelling wise. That may be the first movie I, I, he uh, the girl who edit who has been editing for him like forever. I think maybe she passed away and she wasn't part of the editing process for that movie. And um, it, you're gonna get into some film nerd stuff here, but there's a part where they do the flashback and they reveal that um that that one character is down below the floorboards, mm-hmm. and it really takes away from the it's not necessary because right after that, he jump. He's into the story. Like they should have just revealed him rather than using that whole flashback scene. It's about thirty minutes too long. I really like the whole Dahmer Gu storyline. I thought she did a wonderful job. You know, she looks so nasty and she's so uncouth and spitting that blood and like taking a punch like a fucking champ. It's great. I thought Kurt Russell's character was very good. Sam Jackson's whole story about mouth raping that guy's son <laughs> great powerful um but then it kind of la- lagged in other parts uh i thought christoph waltz would have done a better job in the no. role of uh the british character i can't tell them apart <laughs> yeah they look a lot alike i mean that's you could tell he was like doing his best christoph waltz impression mm. um i can't his name's escaping right now but he's he's been in a lot of uh tarantino movies he was in the opening scene for uh pulp fiction but yeah, it was about 30 minutes too long. I thought the I liked other it. movie was 32 minutes long. Starring DiCaprio. <clears throat> similar time frame. Fall the to Revenant? Bear. Oh, The Revenant. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was 30 minutes too long. Not movie related, but my girlfriend went to bed and I can hear my dogs in my kitchen ringing the door, the bell to go Aww. outside. So I'm going to have a bunch of shit to clean up. <laughs> they episode. ring the bell post. What, why don't you go you take them the out and I'll out. do an ad read. That would actually be good. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I'll I'll yeah. save your your linoleum Kitchen floor. Yeah, he owns that house. Yeah, yeah. We don't we don't need Taylor's house smelling of shit. Smart mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of nice odor. Oh, man, everyone hates talking to someone with bad breath. That humid, awful smell that keeps you from focusing on anything other than finding an excuse to leave. Now, just think about all the times that you were the gross, smelly one, and the other person was thinking about trying to get away. You probably can't think of any examples, and that's because we rarely have an accurate read on our own breath odor. In other words, you could be walking around with trash mouth and not even realize that you're grossing everyone out. That's why Smart Mouth was invented. Smart Mouth's clinically proven two-liquid formula combines to uh, instantly eliminate bad breath and prevent bad breath from returning all day. Rinse just once in the morning for all-day clean breath and once before bedtime to prevent morning odor from ever happening, morning, uh, morning breath from ever happening. Just two rinses uh, a day and you'll never have bad breath again, guaranteed. Whether the boardroom or the bedroom, having confidence in your breath spells success. Go to smartmouth.com slash PKA now for a free coupon. Coupon. You can find SmartMouth products in the oral health aisles of Walgreens, CVS, Target, Rite Aid, Amazon, Walmart, or wherever you shop. Once again, that's smartmouth.com slash PKA for your coupon. Check them out. They really are good. They're yeah. the best, literally. Yeah, big fan. Uh, oh, I, I'm interested in your take on this. So okay. Emma Watson says she prefers to call herself self-partnered rather than single. Yeah. And I, I, I so, so she has wrote in here, we've reached a new level of delusion. We're BSing ourselves. I looked at it through a different lens. I, I, I feel like if you are single until let's, she's almost 30, right? So let's call her 30. Then sometimes you get sort of like, comfortable by yourself and, and it, people, other people can be an intrusion you like you you've figured out how to be happy alone and you can be self-partnered and it didn't seem so insane to me and i just wonder what your take on it is yeah i'm gonna have to side with is here okay <clears throat> she's single and there's nothing wrong with that I, I don't know why she needs to come up with some other uh label 
to 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 shift herself into that she finds to be less offensive. You know, like, like, like it's almost like she doesn't like being called single because it's almost like it's like ah. Oh, that means that I'm missing a piece, you know. I, everybody else is is rolling double, and I'm a, I'm just all by myself. Like, first of all, if she if she didn't want to be single, she wouldn't be single. And second of all, and we all know that we all know that you're you're a rich, famous, beautiful person. All right, yeah, you, you, easy to get you laid. Ninety nine percent of the male population is down, and a good sixty percent of the female population <laughs> is too, probably. You know, like like you you could make that happen. I don't understand her need for that. It it it, it almost seems like she's. It almost it's seems like more self conscious. It's more descriptive to me, though. It's like <clears throat> uh, I'm I'm comfortable in my own skin at this point. Did you just say you're asexual? I feel like that's what that's what her deal is. Like maybe she just isn't into Ooh. like being with anybody. I didn't. And, and it, I didn't associate self partnered with uh, celibate. I just I associated it I, with I, happy by yourself. I don't know. I, I've never been a big fan of her. I mean, she's pretty, I, but I, I feel like Miley Cyrus would be a whole lot more fun to hang out with than Emma Watson. I, I, Miley Cyrus's voice is fucking hot as shit to me. Like, like Jolene, she's cool. That song in particular, she kills. Yeah, she's very good at that. I like her speaking voice. It's kind of rough okay. and uh, and uh, it's it's unique. She's got a very unique sound, and she's one of those. She's so talented, you know. And uh, I find her to be very attractive. And uh, I saw her on um, the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, and they do this game where you just, you like hit a, a spinning wheel type thing, and it gives you a song to sing and a style to sing it in. Uh-huh. And she just knocks out of the park, like 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 it. Really impressive vocalist. I, do you think fan. that she was really? Do you think that game was not rigged? Um, I think it's rigged, but still, she's singing the songs in right, those she styles. I don't think knew the order the, of the song and style, like, it was, but she still did it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't think that because they're really putting you on the spot, and with something like the Tonight Show, it's not. It, yeah. Time, we are burning the seconds away. You know, we've got all right. We've got ninety seconds, and then we we'll go to a commercial break, and they mean it. And so I think they brief her before, and he's like, "Hey, do you know the the words to Here's uh, your ignition?" But yeah. you know. And and she's like, yeah, yeah, I know the words. Oh, you yeah, you don't know the words? All right, well, memorize them real quick. It's a simple song. They, they're definitely doing that. Yeah, so yeah. Ariana Grande is uh, even more impressive than her. Have you heard her? Is she the hot one that dated the SNL go- dude, or the fat yeah. one? Very hot. Okay. Um, she's uh, she's Italian. Um, she's a little I petite girl. Now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she can sing, and she does like. Ooh impressions not impressions she sings like um like celine dion or uh, whitney houston she did it on snl or, uh, once they pretended Britney the Spears. radio station was broken or something and she mm-hmm. had to do that yeah they're like can, can you do britney spears i don't know i'll try and she's ah, oh baby baby like she just <laughs> nails it like she does a, and and then when she does the celine dion thing she's doing like the little sign-offs that celine does in french uh. She's got like all the mannerisms down, and, and it's 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 incredible. Uh, it's clearly that like she's just that's who's, what she loves. I don't even know who the hottest actress is right now. I'm always like ten years behind. Like who's <laughs> the hottest actress in all of Hollywood? And I name some like thirty three year old Helen Mirren. Yeah. Ooh, those jugs. Helen Mirren is still kind of attractive. She's got some big old titties. Was she in Three Hundred? Who am I thinking? No, of? no. Helen no. Mirren's seventy four. Yeah. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Ellen Mirren was hot in the seventies. I'm thinking of the the woman that was also in Game of Thrones, and she was in Three Hundred. And yeah, that's uh, Lena Headey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not good with like late model actresses' names. Late uh, model. Late Early model. model. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, you call late model like 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 a late model car is like a a, a new car. Oh okay. Yeah. But I'm I'm not great with their names. It takes me a while to to commit a celebrity to my my encyclopedia of movie people knowledge. Yeah, they don't they don't just get right in. Sometimes, Sometimes other people recognize people. an actress as like one percent hot compared to other Hollywood people, <clears throat> and I'm like I don't see it. And then two or three rolls later, it's like yeah, you guys were right. <laughs> She's <laughs> totally hot. No, thanks yeah. for covering for me with the uh, the advertisement. Well, I could take. Yeah, that we don't. How are the dogs? Are they growing? Yeah. Are they uh, happy? Are they still nervous? Uh, they're growing, definitely. Do you hate them? 
No, not at all. They're a lot of fun. I really like having them around. Like they're, it's a little annoying sometimes. I'll be sitting there. Like I was trying to play Age of Mythology the other day, and it was just me at home. And like I'd have to pause the campaign over and over just to make sure that they weren't shitting around the corner. But that phase is ending because they're really not doing that anymore. Like only if you just forget to take them out or if you're like, will they pee? Like they really don't poop in the house or anything anymore. Like they're pretty good at ringing the bell. Like they're growing, but at a glacier rate of growth where it's like one of them was six, seven, six and a half or seven and a half pounds. And they've gained one pound. So they're like eight and a half pounds now, I think. And the other one was like eight pounds and now he's nine and a half pounds. So they're both, teeny tiny little fellas but uh yeah pretty much as soon as i let them out one of them pissed and the other one shit and then like four or five minutes later they reversed roles and the other one shit and the other one pissed so that, it should a, be good for a bit it's an area where big dogs are, are strong the peeing like my dogs i think i could leave them for 17 hours and they wouldn't pee in the house it's yeah big, they, big, big dogs are good that way they say like yeah, a this, small dog thing like they need to be at least like six, seven months old before they can be trusted to hold it for most of the day because their uh, bladders are so small. And they're only like five months old now. So they're getting there. This is one of my favorite uh, actresses she currently. Yeah, she's no her from. Rats. Oh, she um, was in... Uh... Oh, wait, no. I was thinking Zombieland, but that's not right. No, she was in Kick-Ass? Kick-Ass, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah, her whole film. She was way, way so. younger in Kick-Ass. She was like a kid. Still hot, Taylor. Still Mm. <laughs> well, she was born in 97 she was so like she 11 was 13 <laughs> in, in right yeah, right. Well, like uh, well, yeah it, uh, oh oh the dog so Kyle's when yeah. we streamed together they were talking about dogs and cats but I actually didn't see the benefit of cats and one of Kyle's friends illustrated it really well he's like dogs are a pain in the ass they're always like like sure they're loving up on you and stuff and that's nice but my gosh like they they need so much attention i think of it i'm like yeah like i've had dogs where they want you to throw the ball again and again and again and again cats can say hey look i like you but we don't have to make a big deal out of it and sometimes <laughs> that's nice too like it, it, they they open my eyes to where cats can be good as well i can see that kind of but also like when i come in my garage and I walk Ooh, into kinky. the kitchen. and you know, when, when, <laughs> Well, the linoleum fucking, floor is good for that. Well, when I get home for the day, I bust in my garage. <laughs> and then I walk through the door into my kitchen. Oh. And like they're in like the caged off area in the kitchen. And they kind of like, and they see that I'm home. And they start like wagging their tails so fucking hard. And they're just, to them, they're like, oh my God, I didn't know you. Where were you? <laughs> you, you were you ever going to come back? It's been, I'm a dog. So it's either been four minutes or a thousand hours. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how long it's been, but like that like little feeling of like, oh, you know, maybe I had a stressful day, a rough day, a lot of stuff to put up with and deal with and, and, and shit and you get home and it's like oh that's kind of nice like they're just stoked to see you they love you like it, it, it's nice i really like having them yeah i love dogs i, I absolutely love dogs hate cats hate yeah, I'm cats. Not like, i wouldn't kill a cat either. i wouldn't kill, kill a cat, a cat just cat for the fun dog. of it or anything um yeah me either mostly that's that's <laughs> the level that's the level of wow um, that, that's the amount i like a cat I'm like well i wouldn't just kill you like an insect see i'm, yeah. I'm still team dog but <laughs> An animal that I'm good with, that loves up on me every once in a while, maybe every other day, and isn't a pain in the ass, like I can see the appeal of that too. Cats will eat you if you die in your in your home. Well, like, like, that, if that, that to me is all you until need I know. die, then I'm okay with that. You could still be stroking out on the ground and they'll claw your eyes out. You won't even be dead yet. <laughs> well, that's not nice. No, not at no. all. Dogs yeah. will wait until they're borderline starving and before they start to eat you. I don't know if they'll eat you even then. Some of them won't. They might just starve. I'm like, I can't eat Tyler. Tyler can't eat me kibbles. <laughs> I've seen dogs like I don't, lay by a grave or a dead owner or something. <sighs> like it's sad, but that it is. Yeah. Yeah. I like I like seeing them. Like these two dogs. Like they they have the same dad. Like they look a little different because one of them had like a more poodly. Well, no, they had different moms. So, but then also one Ooh, of them, the smaller one, will porn. like will like start to like, I haven't seen it yet, but my girlfriend swears. She's like, sometimes when they're playing, 
Teddy will start humping Fozzie. And I'm like, we will not have gay incest. In this moment. <laughs> 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 That's something we will not stand for. No. Taylor has their ass checked out by the colonoscopist. Or whatever, <laughs> yeah. <about their> proctologist. <laughs> the <colonoscopist>. <laughs> he has the proctologist to ensure that they're yeah. still virgins. I went to the colonoscopist. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, I like watching their little games they play. Like the like one of them will see that the other one is on like the desirable spot on the couch right next to me. And so the other one will run into a corner of my living room and like pretend like, oh, wow, (laughs) didn't know this was here. And like feign like chewing on something or like a toy that they already had until the other one's like, well, I'm not about to miss this. And then they'll jump down. And when they get over there, the other one just sprints over and takes the spot. And I don't know. It's neat seeing like. I'll be at low, you know, because they're dogs level of, of, well, that's actually not that low intellect. That's pretty smart. Like yeah. knowing that there's something desirable, feigning interest in order to get them to do what you Did want. Did you see that dog the, the other day that had like 20 different buttons that said words and he would communicate by pushing the fucking buttons? I was very that's skeptical sick. on that. I haven't seen that. <laughs> yeah. He was like one ball outside and I'm like. I don't know about that. I don't know. Like, I just question that he's really forming sentences. Like, he hits the, the button and goes, want. And he's going, <laughs> ball. Yes. And the other, yeah, outside. And she's like, oh, you want to go play with your ball outside? And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As if if he had hit something else and you offered a ball, he'd be like, no. <laughs> no, I don't want Murder. That. <laughs> yes. Death. Kill. Ooh. We shouldn't have put those buttons down. The buttons yeah. weren't a good idea. Banksy's a little little violent, I think. I think he is. But yeah, the, the dogs are doing well. I'm really enjoying them hanging out and everything. They're they're pretty good for the most part now. They it was like a like a weird learning curve where the first month or so, month or two maybe, I was like, these little fuckers are never gonna stop going in the house when I ignore them for like two seconds. And then now it's like, oh wow, well that changed really fucking quick. Like they've kind of put the pieces together. Jackie and I got dogs too, and and I think we were open about the idea that we were sort of like trial parenthood, you know, like let's just see how this fits with dogs uh, before we have kids, kids, and uh, I think we had kids like, well, we had pregnancy like six months later, Mm -hmm. so we'll be watching your progress, Taylor. I mean, I've said before, it's only a matter of time (laughs) because we are not using anything other than the pullout method so really this Mm. all is on my shoulders to be responsible at that in those in those last few seconds so uh, (laughs) i'm trying not to react lots of good decision making happens in those sentence taylor to me (laughs) you might as well have just said well i've been experimenting with black tar heroin (laughs) and and i'm gonna tell you the thrill of sharing the needle with the guy i buy it from Whew. I mean, rolling the dice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm rolling the dice all the time. So we'll we'll see. Eventually, that house of cards will come crumbling down. I would prefer and... that you were on black tar heroin. Pullout method is pretty effective if you actually pull. I think the reason the pullout method fails is people don't pull out. I hope you're sterile. Oh, well, that's a terrible <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> but he's using it in children. a good way. That's I something mean, that he'd way. like to have himself and, and thinks yeah. that you would enjoy it as much. <laughs> I yeah. Hope you're <laughs> no, it's coming from a completely way. selfish place. Don't worry. <laughs> I was just driving today. We can't play video games together. I swear to God, I was driving today and I was thinking, like, yeah, in a year or two, I'll be able to go on another one of those cool vacations with Taylor. Unless he has fucking children. <laughs> you can't, can't oh, look well, to your wife while she's holding the little toddler in her hands and go, hey, I'm going on a smokecation with Kyle. Ask yourself, yeah, my what would buddy. Trump no, do? Kyle, Kyle, you could she, do she anything. Would understand. She would understand because that is a work trip. <laughs> 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 Honey, I have to go to Colorado and get high with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to be, I thought you were going to be less honest. Like, oh, we have a new uh, Walmart distributor in freaking Colorado. I'll be no, with no, the, just... <laughs> my business is sending me there for this many no, days. No, I, I would straight up say, no, I'm it, for content, for to do the show, for all that. We're going to get nice and silly out in Colorado, spend a lot of money on magic cards and forget most of them there. Oh, I'll I t- took them with me. I'll I got tell you, Taylor, cards. I don't think it's a bad idea to establish the mancation precedent early in the marriage. Like I have lots of friends who, if they wanted to do the mancation thing, it would be a no. 
And some guys will see that really? and be like, yeah, you know, I can't imagine a relationship like that. But a lot of, that's not an uncommon thing. That, that guys can't just go leave their wives at home to handle all the shit when they want to. But oh, fuck that. lay that precedent down soon. Yeah, I feel like I already have probably. Not, boy. not explicitly, but, but probably passively. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah. I brought up the other day. She, I mean, she talked back, but I, right away popped her in the <laughs> nose. And I don't make yeah, a big deal out of this, but I can kick her ass. Oh. I'm getting, I'm getting quick. Yeah. Big meaty backhand. It's just right yeah. there. I mean, Ladies yeah. like it when you get violent with them. They'll, yeah. they'll say they don't, but when the police they come around, they, they never say a word. Police know this. Crying on the ground, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you read. I read between the lines. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that would be another, another smokation. That would be a lot of fun. I'd like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be I, sick. I, I want to go skiing this time. I was I'll so go sledding last time. No skiing. I was so bummed last time because I was like, I was convinced because we'd talked before it with like you and Chiz, and I was, and you guys were like, we're not fucking skiing. We're not doing that. And I was like, on team, let's go skiing. And I was like, I'm gonna be able to convince them to go skiing. I'll be able to convince them. <laughs> And I was not I would prepared have known for the, 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 the united front of <laughs> Kyle and Chiz, the stern no. You might as well have asked, hey, guys, hey, guys, let's go get let's go get rectal exams. <laughs> yeah, I know a guy. I know. Well, no, he's not licensed. C- come on. It's going to be fun. No, no, he doesn't use gloves. It's better that way. Trust me. It's all natural. He's going to get in there deep. We're just like, tell no. me more about this. I might be dead. No, <laughs> dude, you would you would love skiing once you no. got up there. And you, you didn't want to do my down. thing, Taylor. What, I've what gone you, skiing with do? Kyle. I, I don't know. if You might have forgot this. We went to Vermont and we went skiing. Oh. And uh, in spite of the fact that, that Kyle's a fairly athletic build dude, skiing didn't agree with him. Like his ankles were hurting and worn out early in the day, and it was so, there's something about like like the way my knees are shaped or the way my ankles are shaped or something where it it literally has to be a fucking medical issue where like my Probably. inner ankle becomes excruciatingly he was it, suffering it, like, early on like an hour into it like it, yeah it, i, I did wanted you get to that do when it you're ice skating as well like yes, an ankle so okay, bad that's probably an so ankle bad. thing it, it so and I've, I've broken that ankle twice and like I would love to ski. I'd love to learn to do it. It's it's the sort of thing I enjoy. It's so like, much like fun. I, I love being out in the cold. I love the snow. I want to ski. I'd like to go fast because it looks like when you fall, it doesn't even hurt all that badly. I would love to go skiing and learn to ski and get good at it. But I think maybe I, I could be convinced to do it, but I would have to snowboard because I think you can just wear like boots mm-hmm. and those just buckle in. And I know that snowboarding is harder. And I have no skateboarding experience, but I think that's the only way that I can do that sort of sport without really having like a an actual issue. Yeah, you can always try snowboarding. Like you go way slower, which yeah. not as fun. But yeah, I feel like an asshole telling people I don't want to do it because I want to do it, and it is one of those things where like we're here, we're here, we should do it. But but like I I I, I literally can't. I, I feel, would fucking I settle bad. for sledding. I just like. I, <clears throat> Fast on the snow is a lot of fun. Dude, you weren't there on the trip where we went sledding. We 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 t- we had um well um one of Kitty's friends had like a big SUV, like a Forerunner or something, and we tied a rope to it and got in a like oh, a yeah. like a, a big inflatable like donut type thing. And there's some video somewhere of like Chiz eating shit. <laughs> He's on that thing going like 35 miles per hour around a snowy corner, and that thing like does that thing where it like hits a bump. And so the next time it hits a bump, it's du- it's it's like, like you know when you super bounce, mm-hmm. like a trampoline. He's like zoom, zoom, zoom and he just sails <laughs> like, 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 five miles an hour on a sled. It feels like you're going Mach one, Mach one. Like he gets he, up and his so beard's bad. all full of snow, and he's just like that was awesome. <laughs> that, was, that was a great fucking time. But you didn't want to do the silly thing that Chiz and I wanted to do last time the I, the uh, the sensory deprivation tank. Oh yeah, that sounded like kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> i've heard it's like a trip no but, and people yeah. do drugs in the tank i don't know if that was part of the plan but that was part that, of the plan we're gonna i was i thought we should do edibles which is incredibly potent and then you get in the sensory deprivation tank you're in uh, it's it's a very high salinity uh water so you float and no audio no it, you're complete you're locked in there like a not locked but the lid is closed so it's complete darkness complete silence and no like tactile like like uh, senses yeah. whatsoever because you're floating in that salty water, 
and then to be on something too, you know, you, you could go on some sort of a weird, yeah, weird trip. I thought add some paranoia to a sensory deprivation tank. That's great. Ah, it doesn't make well, me paranoid. It doesn't make me paranoid yeah. either. Like I'm just I, being silly. I get. There were times on that smokation where I was like, like, and the thing with with weed compared to alcohol is like, if you take 15 shots of vodka or something, you're not going to be able to explain Magic the Gathering to your friends. For the for, you're just not going to be able to. But there was times like sitting there at that like shitty little table with like Kyle and Shiz, like I was first like explaining the Magic thing, and we'd like like. I went like a little, I guess, overboard with the edibles because I was so excited being in Colorado. Like, oh, this is all legal. Oh, a little pill. Neat. Oh, a little, <laughs> chocolate, a little chocolate square. Well, it's only this much. And like <laughs> just trying a bunch of stuff. And there was one time just sitting there like as I was like explaining tapping to Kyle or something yeah. where like like the world slowed down for me as I was like I was like hunched over like, explaining the game. And it hit me like kind of suddenly. And in my head, like I was with it enough to have like a cogent moment of like, you can either forge through this moment right now <laughs> or you're going to have to go to bed. Yeah. And I was just like, like, I, and like, it was like a movie where like it come, came back to me like, and my, like, my next line, I still remember it was, no, Kyle, you have to tap. It's spent. <laughs> and then i was like it came to me like you're okay you're fine and then that little mental realization was like oh oh i was being silly just there okay but it was like a crossroads yeah if i if i had been like if i had stood up then and been like i'm done i would have had to like go to bed and i would have passed out for like 11 hours just would have yeah, edibles asleep. are edibles are Take no fucking joke route. yeah I, I that was I, still fun though i love that like like i don't i mean I don't know how I feel about edibles. I would just rather smoke, you know, 90, 90% of the time. Like they're fun occasionally and they're fun to do as a group because so, everybody starts kicking in at different times and you get a real good read on different people's like uh, metabolism. Because mm -hmm. it's like, you're like, like an hour in and I'm just like, oh, this is kind of rough, huh, guys? And everybody's like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> you're not. You're not freaking out right now? <laughs> no. Like four hours later, like my girlfriend be like, I don't feel so good. Where am I? I like, Just now? Now it's kicking in? Really, bitch? Yeah. <laughs> this clip uh, Chiz yeah. just sent, I watched it earlier. Oh, um, show me your idea. I Coach didn't Jim. watch it. That is, uh, that guy has, uh, that's on the win stupid prizes subreddit. I don't even have oh, the preview in Discord. Oh wait, it's on public freakout for me. Actually, uh, yeah, I'm on public freakout too. Oh, uh, you have to sc I, honestly. I oh. prefer to watch the public freakout video because the one above uh, above is um, is a guy getting his legs broken. Yes, the, really badly. That's the one I didn't watch. That one. Ooh. Yeah, and and the one below seems to be like some sort of police brutality. A little more fun. Let's yeah. watch the one without the guy getting his legs broke. I don't want to watch okay. that. Okay. All right. I'm going to turn my I'm volume at, I'm, I'm cute at zero on this uh, police brutality nonsense. 72,000 upvotes in two days. Seems rather popular. I'm ready. Count it. Three, two, one, play. Wow. Wow, that cop has already ripped this guy's... Hey, he's no, dragging his... You have your driver's license oh, information on you? Now we show how uh, we got there. Well, what's going on? Uh, I'd be happy to tell you once I see what oh, I'm talking about. Oh, one of your phones for me. Uh... I need, I need you to let me know, like, what's going on. Like, what what, what, I, what, what happened? What, what, what? I'd be, like I said, I'd be happy to tell you once I, I see information. I'm not giving you my information until you tell me what you pulled he, me over. He's refusing to show his driver's license until the cop tells him why he pulled him over. It's a restful offense, okay? So you can either do this the easy way or the hard way, all right? I need to know what you're pulling me over for. He's choosing hard I'm way. I'm going to tell you he's once choosing I the see hard information, way. all right? I'm going to I got information, but I'm not giving you my information. Until you tell me what you Bold stance, Kyle. You either give me your ID or you go to jail. How about that? Put, put, put this on camera, man, because you're not dealing with this. Please mm -mm. tell his girlfriend to start recording. I need to know right. why you pulling me over. Give him your ID. <sighs> I hope there's not she a She says, shooting. give him your ID. I mean, stop. Give him your parts. ID. Please send me another car. Yeah. Have a cooperative action. Last chance. Last chance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to 
tags expired. Man, he is giving him a lot of chances. I'd be happy to tell you, sir. Are you a lawyer, sir? Hey, I'm representing myself right now. I like that move. I have a right to remain silent, right? So I could just sit here and ignore you. remain silent, but I will not exercise it. So I could just sit here and ignore you. I don't any questions. Okay, well, it's going to turn out very poorly for you. <laughs> oh, I love this cop. Right. This I'm going I'm to tell you what the deal is. You're probably suspended, you so you don't want to give me your license. So, am I free to go? No, no. you're free to go. This is an investigatory stop, all right? Okay, all right, here's the deal. For all I know, you could be trying to kill me right now. You're absolutely ridiculous, all right? Keep watching. I don't care. All right, because step out of the it's car. Been, it's been me. I'm not stepping out the car. I'm excited. Until you tell me what's I'm going nervous. On. Right, open the door. Oh, I'm excited. This guy deserves whatever he gets. Okay. Just give him your fucking license. You traffic you stop, you show him your license. Right? You're going Hands to on the wheel. On his, he's putting on his window breaking gloves. <laughs> he's putting gloves yeah. on. Which arm? Wow. Now you're coming out. Now you're coming out. They would they drag their door. Drag this man. Yep. Can you make out her words? I thought that was him. I thought he just reached a, a much higher pitch. Now he's being drugged from his vehicle. Oh, they're getting him out. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Okay, get out. Get out of the car. For someone who's saying he's getting out, he's not getting out. Oh, he's a big fellow. Well, that's all right, Woody. There's three or four of them. It's a three going on four. Yeah. I bet he finds that neon belly uncomfortable. It's like, it's like Ron White said, I don't know how many of them it would have took to whoop my ass, but I know how many they would have used. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently four got it done. Right hand, look up. One, two, three, four eight. handled it nicely. Come on, right back here. I want to. I want to learn the status of his license. No, well, sir. Everything checked out. Why didn't you give it to us? <laughs> all right, this, uh, this all looks good. You have a nice day, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what about my window? <laughs> <laughs> that guy. <sighs> He's not good at compliance. No, no apparently, I would say very bad. This is in Michigan. Yeah, I, I, I had no problem with what the cops did. They didn't even overdo it, right? Like, if they had pulled him out and started beating on him while saying stop resisting, that'd be a different situation. But all they really did is a little neon back pressure. I'm sure he didn't like it, but he looked uninjured at the end of that. Yeah, yeah he fine. was more upset about the fact that he's going to jail. Like, well, that was a choose to. Uh, yeah. He definitely didn't. What would happen like, if he gave him, like, you, you think it was probably suspended, like a suspended license? The cop said that. That was the cop's theory. It's a I good one. I was wondering one. what you guys thought, like what might. <sighs> warrant. Oh, yeah. That's probably the best one. Yeah. Warrant. Who knows? I mean, well, the loss, it, he like... has to provide his identification if he's driving a car. Now, if he's walking down the street, he doesn't. You can, you can refuse to give him your ID if you're walking down the street, but it he's sounds operating the fucking motor vehicle. Yeah, yeah, he's got a he's got to show ID. He has to show proof that he's a li he's licensed fucking driver. Privilege, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but there's an well, ACLU complaint, but bullshit. I call bullshit on this one, and I'm the first one to to call nonsense on like 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 uh, what are they what is that subreddit? Um, bad cop, no donut. Bad cop, no donut. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I I really hate pr police brutality and the and the and, you know cops I hate that police sort of bullying. Right. There's a certain there, there's I think a common attitude amongst policemen that everyone else is a little less than them. They are the, you know, the the super group and everyone else is this lower class of civilian. And they just feel like they can walk into your house when they want to. They can beat you up when they want to. They can do anything they want to. They're cops. They're better than us. They're in charge. And that kind of stuff that can go too far. And, mm -hmm. and it's. Per pervasive amongst a lot of cops. Then there are good cops too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you 100. I don't like that either. That a lot of cops do seem like bullies, and I think that's because they were bullies previous in life. That or they were bullied previous in life, and they're like, oh, I'm gonna get a badge and a gun and take care of this." I think the being bullied thing is just as likely. Yeah, like one, exactly. One part I, of that transaction, they probably had. 
<laughs> Remember, we were playing with my my friend Mitty the other night playing COD. He had some good games. Uh, he's he working in loss prevention at a, a a store right now. Okay, and you're supposed to be hands off. You know, he's like a security guard who's like ah. Crime. Let me call <laughs> someone. <laughs> like, like, he uh, nobody knows his real name. He he watches monitors and you know listens to podcasts while he's watching the mo- the bank of monitors like Batman Smitty. in his office. Yeah, and uh, and and you know if anybody does some crime, you know he calls the real police or or I think he'll actually like you know if he sees someone doing some something suspicious, maybe he'll go out and like stalk them a little bit and like confirm that they're doing a crime and then call the cops. But I guess his like partner or like coworker thinks he's like Dudley Do Right or something, and just like took a guy out the other day. <laughs> really, like, like tackled some guy, like took That's him hilarious. to the ground. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. But I did, thought that was, was he rewarded or chastised for that probably behavior? Probably fired. Like fifty fifty. Like, like the, the, it, the guy was an actual thief stealing some shit, and like the cops got there right away, and like you know, I, I guess they gave him like a pat on the back, like oh, you got him. Congratulations, you know, and that was that. But Did I don't you think you got any trouble. What store was? Uh, it's um like a department type store, like a big retailer. I, okay. I think it's maybe even like a Home Depot or something similar to that. Like 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 okay. some expensive tools and such around. I didn't get the. Well, this gentleman degree. is stealing two running chainsaws. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can handle him. He seems fit. <laughs> it seems, I don't know how to describe it, but it doesn't seem like this is the first time he's handled two chainsaws. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it? The one with the old school hockey mask. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 6'8 and terrifying. <laughs> uh, is it just me or do British gangsters or hooligans or whatever seem less intimidating? Right? Like not this again. I'm sure it's, it's not. <laughs> not. Is it just me? God. Yes. I see like you. six people picking on a girl in a movie and think if I was there, I'd beat up all those pasty fucks on her behalf. They would take off their caps with razors in it. And <laughs> swish you right across the face. Michael then Bisping they'd have a nice disagree. beans on toast to celebrate. What does he know about fighting? <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, I don't know. There's a couple of. Uh, I mean, I, I would. They're they're still tough. I'm <laughs> <Like, laughs> sure they they're, are. They're, like they're intellectually, I know I'm wrong, shit. but emotionally, this freaking pale skin, slightly chubby, cheesy. Okay, pale pale skin. You see a bunch of Eastern Europeans or Russians in track suits doing that. Do you feel as confident? No, no, no. no. Those guys would fuck you up. Do you know how much strength it builds to not have public benches? <laughs> <laughs> to always be squatting? Every day is leg day. Every day is leg day. They run like jackals. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> on their hands and feet. Forward back, hands and knees, hands and knees. Just like orangutans. Just... Yeah, they call that a Slav sprint. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be funny one day when they're like they're doing the sprint and like someone in fucking ukraine finally figured out like so you can act, so you can use the entire all four limbs in this it's like well that's unorthodox i mean the kenyans who have won this every year for the last <laughs> since we included kenya is uh they're doing very well on two legs they're gonna start dominating they're gonna figure out their their frog-like propulsion they're gonna use know? some sort of leopard stride <clears throat> they will yeah it's just a leopard stride <laughs> where their hands are finishing bef- behind where their feet <laughs> leap <laughs> <Yeah. Like curling. laughs> and here we see how the slav maintains its incredible speed <laughs> you are nothing but anger at the late soviet union and vodka <laughs> <laughs> i'm told even his house had no chairs <laughs> Make his way quickly for the metal bat in the back of the fashion <laughs> He did not see a chair until he was a man grown. <laughs> Kyle, have yeah, you watched but... the Netflix thing King? No, it's on my watch list. I'm um I'm watching this terrible show called Mars right now. I'm in the second season of it. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm already invested, so I'm gonna keep going. Mm, I was hoping you would be my king no, I, tour guide. I, I, it, you know, I watched the fucking trailer for it and it got me pumped because there's a part where like it, it's one of those trailers that's like kind of snappy and uh you know they've got like like three voiceovers going simultaneously and it's kind of it's like he rose from nothing and became everything. And then it's got the guy's like, Yesterday I was a poor boy and now I'm the king. And then there's like a third like audio track going, I can't remember what the king's name is, but let's just say it's Richard. Richard! 
Richard, Richard. And they're like chanting, and there's like a doom, doom, ch, doom, doom, ch. and he's like getting suited up we and getting his sword, and like doing that <laughs> if fucking I, so swishy thing. And I I'm haven't just, seen it, so right. I might have the plot wrong, but it appears that he goes from a party or prince a to prince, a yeah, yeah. war king overnight. Kind of like all of a sudden he goes from an irresponsible party prince to a, a, a king leading battles. And uh, so that's part of it. Also, there's a Netflix YouTube video that's 10 minutes long. I didn't watch it because I didn't want spoilers that explains it to you, which makes me, which implies to me that it's more complicated than, you know, a, a typical TV show or movie. So I, I don't know. I'll have to watch it and develop an opinion. But Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to watch this. I'm, I'm, I'm on the trailer right now. Uh-huh. It looks great. I, I I love the part when they're chanting his name. What is it? Is it Richard? Dick. 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 King Dick. Henry. Yeah, yeah. King it, Henry, it, it's, yeah. It's like it's like it, it like like every scene is punctuated by one of those. He's he's like, I need men around me that I can trust. And then you get like a quick scene of like a dozen knights putting their like spears forward, and then you hear King Henry. <laughs> This is the time that my life actually matters. And then you see like a guy do a sword flourish and it's like, King Henry. And I'm just like, I'm pumped as shit. I wish this guy was a baseball team. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch it when we're done here, actually. Uh, that's, that's, King I'm pumped. Yes, I'm definitely the Atlanta watch that. Kings, they make the playoffs and lose every other oh, year. Oh, boo. <laughs> boo. Boo, hiss. I don't even know who won the World Series. The Nationals, right? Yeah, I guess I do know. Yeah, I don't I know who won the Stanley Cup. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Minnesota. In, uh, uh, St. Louis is off to a good start. I think they had the second best record in the league. Maybe. Are you telling me hockey's on again? Yes. Yeah, it just ended. Same. Well, it just ended for us because we won the Stanley Cup, and I kept talking about it the whole time. <laughs> Three months later, it started again. Now, oh, Blues God. first place in the Western Conference because we uh, we were one point ahead of the Edmonton Oilers last. Edmonton Oilers were second place in the conference. Isn't that fucking crazy? They're still second, but we took a bigger lead. I was blown season. away by that. Yes. And uh, Edmonton, I think in the say. East, Boston is a true force to be reckoned with this year. But they were last year, and look at how that ended up. Ha ha! Boston was so, the second best team in the league. Second best in the league, and nobody remembers second best. So, and and that's a feeling Blues fans know very well because nobody also remembers fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, <laughs> or tenth best, which is where we finished up until last year. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm stoked that hockey's back on. Super excited about it. I, I watch every game I can. Uh, it it's so frustrating when there's like, I I know it's just my bias speaking but i'm always like why do they schedule every game for thursday night this is, <laughs> this is a fa- it's not on tonight but i got to watch the last two but uh anyway yeah we won't talk about hockey because nobody gives a fuck it's still too early in the season but yeah i'm hoping the blues really collapse and fall apart soon become terrible wait until january maybe even early february then surge back we're we're not gonna uh tarasenko Broke his shoulder, and so he's out and for the entire season. Playoffs so, too. He's, oh yeah, uh, he'll, he'll he's supposed to come back like three days before the playoffs, and so I'm he sure he'll be a hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. And so it's like fuck. Our best goal scorer is out for the entire season. So, and then we lost one of our good veterans last night. He uh, had a high ankle break or something, so he's out for like a That's month a or big so. Issue. Yeah, I had. And he's like 35, and so he's not. Not a spring chicken in the NHL. I had that too. Yeah. <laughs> At 35. Very, you and Alexander Steen are very similar. Your people mix this up all the time. You're both professional <laughs> Swedish hockey players. In bas- you know how you say like it's early season, nobody cares, right? So I'm watching the Sixers, and they're all like, I think they'll be like second best in the East and maybe you know, seventh best in the league. And uh, they started off 5-0. and oh. And then, nice. meanwhile, they're like, huh, 5-0? and oh? That team you thought was better is four and one. Get the fuck out of here. You don't know anything about basketball. The score's posted. I don't know why we're playing the rest of the season. But I they- love following the early parts of of hockey, just similar to the way you do with basketball, I'm sure, where it's like early in the season, like Red Wings fans were like, Yep, four wins, zero losses, one overtime loss. Guess we're not as bad as everybody thought, boys. <laughs> and they've lost like 10 in a row or something retarded. And they just just plummet right to the bottom and now they're like well you know guys uh 
we got a storied history to look back on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 we'll switch topics quickly. I, I promise, Kyle. Yeah, but I think that, no, no, keep it coming. The Sixers have lost either two or three since they went five and zero. Oh, and oh, the Sixers. It's true. If we're looking for a new topic, I, I, I outlined a little Bible tale for us. It's been a hot second. Oh, I'd love so that. What, those. what are you going to regale us with today, Taylor? I was going to do Easter but I wanted to do something a little less common knowledge. And so mm-hmm. are either of you familiar with the tale of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? <laughs> and Abednego. <laughs> wait, yes. wait, say it again. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yep, yes. It's, uh, Kyle yep. does know it. I oh, went to church. Yeah, no, I legit yeah. thought he made up an eeny, meeny, miny, mo type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No, go to go to uh, Daniel three through six. I think is where. Yeah, I know because I reread it. Uh, reread it. Please don't tell me the story, and I just disappointed my parents. Yeah, no, uh, and your parents, Mister and Missus Woody's parents. Uh, I dare you to find one thing wrong with this. <laughs> one factoid wrong with this. So basically, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, three Jews hanging out in the Old Testament. Uh, and this is one of the many times that the Jews or the state of Israel was just getting, uh, or maybe Judah at the time, I don't fucking remember. They were just getting butt-fucked by whatever powerful people there were at the time. There were the Babylonians, like Assyrians, like all throughout the ages. This was a Babylon time. And so they were under the thumb of King Nebuchadnezzar, the original Chad. And King Nebuchadnezzar was, he had his hanging gardens of Babylon Like they were the most powerful empire in the world, in their known world at the time. And he had all this dope shit. And he had so much extra gold sitting around that he was like, you know, it would be tight. I'm going to build a 90 foot solid gold statue of like myself or some like guy who's kind of like me that are some, you know, God, they don't even like really say what it was. And so he built some dope ass statue, gold, 60 cubits high and what six cubits wide and i looked that up that's like 90 feet high and nine feet wide like a cubit is apparently like one and a half feet okay Hmm. so this is a lot of gold it's a real flex on the rest of the world and so he builds this and he's so stoked on it that he invites all of his i don't remember all the words i read them down all of his officials from the kingdom governors senators satraps i assume some kind of mayor judges treasurers, everybody from every corner of the Babylonian kingdom, all the high ranking, you know, hullabaloo people show up and they're like, you're right. You're right. King Nebuchadnezzar. This is, this is really cool. And he's like, it doesn't stop here, guys. Anytime you hear music from, and I'll read this list (laughs) as I'll just read what the town crier said, nation and people of every language. This is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of the gold king Nebuchadnezzar. And so, first of all, pretty sure a lot of those instruments are made up. (laughs) So he sends all the governors and everybody back. They relay that same message. And... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they weren't just like three random Jews walking around the street in like shitty ass sandals. They had like not the the overruling part of a province, but they were like a couple levels down. They they still had nice houses, nice shit. Like they, they weren't in poverty or anything. And pretty much immediately, as soon as this town crier said that, he added an addendum, which Nebuchadnezzar also instructed, where he's like, and make sure they also know anybody who doesn't bow down as soon as all these made up instruments start going they're going to be brought back to me they're going to be brought in front of me and i'm going to burn them alive in a really cool big furnace i also made and believe it or not that was compelling to most people that got them on board and so as soon as they heard the zither and the lyre boom right down like almost like mecca they're like even if you can't see it from whatever province they're in they're like i'm not risking some ancient cop finding me and ratting me out i'm aiming right there and praying to nebuchadnezzar shadrach meshach and abednego say fuck you they don't say fuck you they say no thanks no thank you their overseer goes to king nebuchadnezzar goes hey neb neb goes don't call me that because i understand (laughs) he goes king nebuchadnezzar these three jews they're not bowing down 
Did you tell him about the furnace thing? Yes, I led with the furnace thing. <laughs> it's, of course I told him. <laughs> of course I led with it, you fucking, you brilliant king. Uh, and, so, and so Nebuchadnezzar is like, okay, well, bring him to me. Bring him to me. As far as I can tell, they're doing a good job on paper, but if they're not going to do what I want, bring him here. <clears throat> so he brings him there and he tells them, hey, and King Nebuchadnezzar, is like in the opposite situation of like a rock in a hard place. With He's between like tits and ass. No matter which way he goes, it's positive. If they show up and they say, I'm not bound down, he gets a handful of tit, so to speak, where he gets to throw them in the furnace, burn them alive, and ensure that everybody's like, yeah, that bitch is not playing. He will burn you alive, bow. Or... If they do what he wanted them to do, nice handful of ass, and they bow down, it's a little ego stroke where he's like, yeah, all it really took was them seeing me in my glory for them to bow down and do it. And so they show up. He says, bow down or you're going in the furnace. No other options. They say, I will not, I will not bow down. No, I'm not bowing down. No, that's not my God. I'm not bowing down to your, your false idol or whatever the fuck. And he goes like probably a little like kind of like happy about it. Like, okay, time to break in the furnace. But he tells his furnace guy first, he goes, turn it up seven times as hot as normal. And in my head, I'm thinking like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego at this time were kind of relieved where they're like, oh, oh, he said seven. Seven's one of those numbers that works out well. God, if he had said turn it up twice as hot, I would have shit myself. But seven... (laughs) We should be okay. Thank God. And so, <laughs> okay. and so Nebuchadnezzar, well, seven, it's a biblical number. Like, yeah, it's all you see it a lot. I mean, you're talking yeah, to me, you like, know, I know that. Yeah, yeah. Things happen in sevens all the time in the Old Testament and in the New. And so, Nebuchadnezzar wasn't just content with normal soldiers tying him up because he's brought some of his governors and satraps and people to see this whole thing because he thinks it's cool. It is cool. And he brings out his most burly, ripped soldiers to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then he tells them, throw them in the fire. And he says that the fires were so hot that when they went to open the furnace to throw the three Jews in, that the men throwing them in themselves died. And so he wasted a bunch of juicy man muscle <laughs> just in trying to get his point across which i wouldn't have done i would have used worthless soldiers but what do i know i'm no neb mm. and so he throws him in there and he's sitting on his cool gold throne the extra gold that was left over from the statue just kind of watching and i guess there's a fucking window in this furnace that you can <laughs> kind of see what's going on and so after a couple minutes he's like pure what i see how many how many jews do we Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, was there another one? They got goofy-ass names. Was there four? There's four people standing in there right now. Well, don't take them out yet, because even if it is their god, maybe he'll run out of magic, and, and they'll eventually burn. You know, like, maybe he can only stave off the flames for so long. So he leaves them in there a couple more minutes to simmer. Becomes clear, god's not going to run out of magic. And so he goes, take those guys out of there. Take them out of there. And so he opens up the furnace. Three, the three, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego come out totally unscathed. It says they don't even smell of fire. Are they, they naked? Don't even smell like they've been there. No, their clothes were fine too. Ugh. And so they all come out, and all the governors, the satraps, everybody's there. They're looking. And so King Nebuchadnezzar has to pull a World War II Italy, where they switch sides and pretend they've been on that side the entire time. And so he goes, Wow. Your guy's God is really cool. I'm on board. You guys don't have to worship this statue. Everyone, we are keeping the statue. It looks awesome. We don't have to pray to it, but you're not getting, no, I don't, we're not getting rid of it. That's fine. You go in the furnace. You're not protected by their God. We're keeping the statue. Does anyone not want to keep the statue? We're keeping the fucking statue. And so he keeps the statue. And then also he's talking to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and being like, wow, your God's like legit real. My gold statue didn't do anything but shine brightly. And so he asks them about their God. They kind of have a little back and forth. And then because King Nebuchadnezzar still has to appear hardcore, he goes, all right, we're all following the Jewish God now. And any of you, anyone in my kingdom who questions the Jewish God, I will have you and your family cut to pieces and your homes razed to the ground. 
and everybody's like, 40 minutes ago, we were talking about the statue. <laughs> <laughs> and so everybody unanimously is like, yeah, whatever you say, dude, we're all on board with the Jewish God. I don't want to get cut to pieces. And then to end it all, he gives Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego a raise and a promotion. Oof. So what did we learn? Uh, um, hopefully I was we're hoping fireproof. For, yeah, I was hoping for insight because I didn't learn anything. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing at all. At all. It's it's a little similar to David in the lion pit, you know? I David feel like Einstein, yeah. I feel like they maybe they they just recycled that one at some point. You know, they probably did. Uh, I mean, if you, if you think about it, they're like there? identical stories, right? Except you yeah, got lions they're... instead of fire. You think that like one scribe or whatever prophet back in the day was writing that and the scribe's like, oh, this is very similar. I'm British. This is very similar to to David and the lion's den. He's like, no, it, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not named... Name ten similarities. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think the teacher fire, handed out a project, and she's you. like, "No group projects." Yes. <laughs> you guys can't. Did you guys work together on yours? <laughs> <laughs> mine's got lions. <laughs> got, no, mine's got a cool statue and a, a king named Nebuchadnezzar. We should run so. both through one of those like uh, plagiarism checkers they use in colleges now. Oh, yeah. Let's see if anyone Definitely. gets busted. That would be funny. It's like the you know, Jeremiah ripped all of his shit from like Leviticus. <laughs> it, it, it's and like that year that end of it that um um the two mo- Deep Impact and Armageddon came out the same year. <laughs> yeah, you're like, wait a fuck, <laughs> what, <laughs> what? Well, in ours, the asteroid hits. <sighs> I all right. <laughs> what I've learned the most is the more like I read these Old Testament stories and like I've got a couple more stories outlined for the future. I just like doing them in our Just Us Girls chats. Mm-hmm. Is I'm not learning anything. I'm not learning any morals, any sort of compass for my life. For most of these stories, really? it's really it's just pretty, like, come on, I, you, you get it though, right? You do, you, you do get it. I get it's, that it's you're about, supposed to praise this God. No, it's about faith under fire, literally. Yeah, but that's it's not trust in funny. God, no matter what. And and in God real life, will, uh, that doesn't work at all. And yeah, you become no. a martyr. Lots of people get cancer, and they yeah. pray to God, like, like, and they oh, believe just as much as these fucks. Well, that was part of God's plan. Yeah, that's a convenient out. That's the truth. Question it, and you can burn, too. I, I just feel like if I had put my faith in God instead of my reserve parachute two months ago, this show would be down one host. Yeah, dude, if, if the afterlife is real... And that would have been God's plan. If the afterlife is real, Praise his name. fucking St. <laughs> Peter next to the pearly gates is going to pull up one of the many YouTube compilations you <laughs> listeners have made of my Bible stories, and I'm going straight to hell. So thanks <laughs> for that. Thanks for that. But it's not real, so don't worry about it. Yeah. That's the lesson. I'm like learned. 99% <laughs> sure. Yeah. If it is, are, are real, you 100%? Jesus. Or because because I'm only like 99%. No, I would say I'm like high 90s percent. But if it yeah. if I die and it turns out it's real, poof, I am not going to be pleased. Me either. And yeah, you, if you think about it, foolish. you would. You wouldn't risk like 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 how do, how do the seatbelts work in your car? Uh, it says high nineties. four percent of the time they work. Not really. It, doesn't that concern you? Like, aren't you always worried about it every time you get behind the wheel? No. Nah. No, nah. no, nah, nah, not really. I mean, that was that like they taught us that in school as like an argument to believe in God. It was called Pascal's yeah. wager. And it was, if you believe in God and it doesn't exist, you haven't lost anything. If you believe in God and he does exist, you go to heaven. If you don't believe in God and he doesn't exist, nothing happens. If you don't believe in God and he doesn't exist, you go to hell. So it was like, well, mathematically, you should believe in God. And my thought even then was like, he's going to know I'm faking it. <laughs> like, he's he's going to know that I'm only doing it out of fear of not going to hell. And like, he's that's okay not enough to that. get into heaven. I don't, I don't think so. Based on what I've read, he seems pretty okay with f- scaring people into worshiping him. Yeah. Old Testament God was much more into the fear. Jesus was a little nicer. But Jesus also did, uh, well, not even mean funny stuff, like whip people in the uh, when they were like using his 
like the Pharisees and Sadducees were mm-hmm. using the church as a like a bartering ground and, and trading and financial place instead of using it as a worship place. He just goes in there and starts cracking the whip on all these Pharisees and overturning their tables. That was a that was fun. Yeah, good for him. I liked that. Yeah, that was a good scene. I brought that up in my uh, my drug class in prison. Um, I don't remember how. Yeah, yeah. The the, the teacher was an absolute <laughs> moron. And, uh, and, and he brought up something like, like he'd get, he'd get like really stuck in the mud with the conversations. Like, like he'd start arguing with, with us and we knew how to just like drag him down into the mud. So he didn't get to teach us anything. And something <laughs> came up teachers. about something came up. I don't remember where it came from, but he, he was just like, you know, Jesus it would, wouldn't, would never did anything violent. Jesus was all about peace. And I'm like, what about the time he whipped all those guys? He's like, what are you talking about? The time he went to the where the tax collectors were in the temple and he whipped the shit out of those people and, and turned their tables over. He's like, oh, well, those yeah. were Jews. And I went, oh. you said that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think I just won. <laughs> I looked Dude, around. It was just, it was just three white guys and eight black guys. And I was like, shit, none of them are here to complain about this. Damn it. <laughs> I mean, well, they were Jews, were but they weren't just Jews. They were Pharisees, Pharisees. and Sadducees, like the bad kind of religious people that were just manipulating the Old Testament into making money. Are you but saying also, like, Jews are the bad kind because they make money? No, no, the Pharisees, the, they, the Pharisees, Pharisees were the bad kind. Were evil. Of, yeah, yeah, just, that's why Jesus was so against them. He's, I choose he was to whipping. believe you said that. And also, like he said, Jesus never did anything violent. There's literally in Matthew a verse that says, "I bring not peace, but a sword." Well. This guy didn't that, know his fucking me- Bible. That was a metaphor. Not the way I do. Even better than Woody's parents. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I, if they want to dispute that. No joke. I think they're in Israel right now. <laughs> that is so fucking funny. <laughs> they're, 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 like, yeah, they're getting extra lessons straight from the source right now. Wait, I would Israel? Love- yeah. So they, like, just they, go walk around Jerusalem. Does she not know that like, like people in Israel aren't Christians? I don't understand uh, most of them are why it's so cool, but yeah, that's like their favorite place to vacation now. They go to Israel probably more than once a year. They the call me if they're not in Israel right now, then they just came home. I wonder if they have like nice beaches and stuff there. Like they're yeah, right on the Mediterranean. But that's not what they're doing. They're like taking camels and checking out Moses's forty mile walk or something like that. Yeah, they do oh, have nice beaches. Awful. So I've, I've definitely seen them on the. Let me let me try to find a picture. Yeah, I mean, it's I think a they have nude beaches. Israel does? I figured they'd be yeah. way too conservative for that kind of thing. I don't know. I'll just look up Israeli nude beaches. Let's see. Where can I sunbathe nude in Israel? Mm, you go to Masada. I'm pretty sure like, even shit like porn isn't legal in Israel. There you go. Nudist beach at the... Oh. I found a YouTuber. Nudist <laughs> She's beach at heading sea? to the nude beach on the Dead Sea in Israel. The Dead Sea is right, in well, Israel, and she's naked. For some reason, I thought it was in like Eastern Europe or something. Like, was this uploaded September twenty third, twenty fifteen? Sure was. Uh, we're on the same video. You're gonna want to skip on forward to when she gets naked. She blurs everything, but I'm still pleased. She's got some of that Dead Sea mud. She's rubbing it on her face, like 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 like, like war paint. Oh, she's got a tattoo. Big no no in Judaism. Hmm. Well, and Christian well, anyway. too, I guess. <clears throat> uh, I yeah, care. definitely nude beaches in Israel. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the more you know. The more you know. The Dead Sea is somewhere that would be Let really Let your mom know. Buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she might have gone to the nude beaches. You don't know. Yeah, your parents, I wouldn't put it past them. Nothing wrong like, with it, right? We're going to yeah, gonna 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 hike the... We're going to hike the Sinai Desert Trail. Going to Masada. And then we're going to get our freak on. Because that's how Woody's parents go. (laughs) Is is Masada. Yeah, fuck me. Oh, this is right where Abraham almost killed Isaac. (laughs) (laughs) Is is Masada the one where the Israelis held out against the Romans for like a long time and then they suicided at the end so the Romans could claim no victory? Uh, I don't know. Is this a Bible story or is this like in the... Middle area, like where the Maccabees were. Oh, I don't, I don't know my Bible that well, but I'm, I'm, I, I thought that that was the story of Masada. Um, Masada. It would make sense because Masad's like their CIA, so it makes sense they name it after something like that. Um, I don't. Well, that's the Masad. I don't, I don't know if that's. I mean, maybe Masad, Masada. I don't know. Yeah, you yeah, that's Masad, what happened. I yeah. say Masada. So, um, Let's call the whole thing. Up. 
Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Yeah, in 66 AD, Masada was a Roman garrison. Um, a group of Jewish extremists overcame it and settled there. Uh, in the next several years, uh, more people joined them, and then they were uh, there was a siege um, led by Lucius Flavius Silva in 72 AD. It lasted about two to three months, and it culminated in the construction of a siege ramp and tower to try to get at them. Um, but it seems like 960 Israelis held out for like a really long time, like over a year or something like that. And at the end they did like a mass suicide so that like the Romans could claim no victory. That's a really cool story. I can't believe I've never read about this. That's yeah. That might be a fun one. (laughs) Also like, like what'd you say? Flavius fucking whatever the hell. Yeah. Romans had cool names. Sick fucking names. Why can't we bring that back? Black people have, I went to school with an Octavius. (laughs) Okay. Well, was his Octavius Flavius Caesar or whatever? No, or just, no, he's no. dead now. He's dead now. And his like, like the that maybe it was just like my part of the world. But man, like I, I started elementary school with like six or seven black guys. Only one of them graduated, and I know of like three of them that have died since. And one of them just died last week. Farming like, accident. Like, <laughs> he, thresher caught in a thresher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the guy, the guy, <laughs> sucked into a thresher. Accident. He was thrown from his vehicle. He was ejected. He was uh, uh, DUI. <laughs> fling or something like that the other one has been in prison since i was like 22 because he, he, him and his buddies like somebody owed them some drug money like some middling amount of money you know like somebody owes you 70 dollars. i think you should go by like like that movie um uh that 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 gangster movie brooklyn, when, when, like, uh brooklyn tales tales uh, bronx tale you know, the, the guy owes him 20 dollars and he's chasing him down the street yelling at him and and uh the the, the, the main gangster's like hey 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 don't do that. Do you like that guy? It's like, nah, I can't stand him. Well, think about it this way. For $20, you'll never have to talk to him ever again. He's gone. He's out of your life. He's like, ah, that's a good point. They should have said that about this $70 worth of drug money. Instead, this person I went to school with, who was my age, and two of his buddies kidnapped him. They rolled up next to him. And this is in small town Georgia, like, like farming idea. community where I'm from. They roll up next to him on the sidewalk. He's with his girlfriend. And they have this ridiculous... They're armed like they're playing PUBG. All right? <laughs> it looks like when you first land and everybody's got this mishmash, one of them has like an actual submachine gun, like a little Whoa. Mac-10. <laughs> one Will of them's auto? got a... So- yeah. One of them's got a shotgun. The other one has a hammer. <laughs> I like to think like just, PUBG. They're like in one wore a pot as a helmet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? It's level one, one in a armor. Frying pan. <laughs> yeah, so he's got, he pulls out the hammer, and so they 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 grab him, throw him into the car, and they drive off. And it's like this was 15 years ago, but cell phones existed. So his girlfriend just goes, "Yeah." um... Octavius Johnson just kidnapped my boyfriend and drove away in a silver Honda Civic. Yeah. Yeah, they're heading there in Livonia right now. Yeah, there's three of them in there. They had guns. Yep. All right. They go get them right away, of course. And they, 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 kidnapping is like a 25 it's year a big offense. deal. It's like third worst thing you can do behind like murder and rape is kidnapping. Like Sounds a lot of people right. don't know that. It's a huge deal. Yeah. They, 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 and it wasn't one of those kidnappings where it's kind of like borderline, where it's like, all right, nobody leave this room until I, we get this shit straightened out. You know, people can, ah, oh, I was kidnapped. He wouldn't let me leave. Like, this was like, they scooped him up like they're the fucking mafia and, and <laughs> drove off with him. They're still in prison. That, that, that was so long ago. I don't even remember the finer details of it. I don't remember what the other two guys' names it's were. Serious but. crime. <laughs> it was <laughs> very but serious I, crime. <laughs> I, I, if it was their first crime, it was. Oh, if it was their first crime, I can almost be like, I think they didn't realize what they were doing was as bad as it was. Oh, they definitely did not. Dude, if your first foray into crime is at gunpoint kidnapping someone, you need to be put in jail (laughs) because you're not going to go, oh, what was I thinking? No, what (laughs) what What if that guy was robbing you and you decide to keep him? Oh, well, if he was just robbing... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, right, and you fine. say, "Well, he's a thief, so we should probably." You're describing a citizen's arrest, Woody. Share. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, you think that, but then when you brand him, you know, oh. <laughs> shave his yeah. head, maybe scarlet letter of some sort. You know, I was reading my Bible last night. 
I just feel like in a situation a like different. that, it's defense. Yeah. It's not kidnapping. You, well, it was yeah. a defense of kidnapping. Right? I, I, I read you. I read yeah. you. Well, yeah. it, you don't kidnap people. But yeah, everybody, all those guys I went to school with, and like they had every opportunity. I, I don't know what happened. Um, and it, I don't. It wasn't institutionalized racism for sure because like they had every opportunity. Like like my mom was one of their teachers, and it, and it was just like you couldn't do anything with those guys. They had. It was definitely their home life. It was definitely their home life. Some people they just, just had a hard shitty. time. I think that I think they had a hard home life, and uh, and that made them shitty, and that made them like have a real rough time. But like I said, I, I had a decent sized graduating class, and there were only two black people in it, and one of them, um, her mother was a teacher, and the other one um, just decided to like, he was a football player, and he decided to like really buckle down his last two years of. Uh, of uh of high school and like got a mentor who was uh in the faculty and and made it but a lot of those guys didn't just not graduate but they're dead and like we're, we're not from like some rough town it's is I'm, I'm i'm like chael son and you know it's 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 one of those, oh yeah i saw a guy just spit on the sidewalk just walked away like <laughs> i feel nothing, like i almost you know, know your town because <laughs> i spent so much time in hartwell mm -hmm. they're like sister towns mm. um super similar yeah Oh, I had a. I was thinking about a. I had a friend in high school, and friend is an exaggeration. We like uh, sometimes ate lunch together and talked when, if we were next to each other, we'd talk, but we never hung out after school. And uh, he was cool. He transferred to the school, and there were just aspects of him that made him cooler than the rest of us. Like his hair was spiked, and he had a jean jacket, and I don't know. He just had a vibe about him that was cool. I didn't think about it until way later, but he was a cutter. He used to like mm. cut bad words into his forearm and shit. And uh, now I look back and I'm like, I bet that guy was fucked. Like I, yeah. I bet that his home life was like, I don't know. Like he used to just cut. I remember he wrote I don't bitch like, that. like in big letters on his forearm one time. Oh, why would you do that? You're just Wait, did he do it or was someone torturing him, Woody? I think he, like he showed it to me like. I, I like, think it was a call for help that I misinterpreted. Like, like if I could go back and replay that day, I would have told a guidance counselor or something. Yeah. But yeah, you truly are a bitch. <laughs> I just I saw it and I was like, damn! Like his pain tolerance is high too. It's like another cool <laughs> thing I didn't know. Like that was my dumbass interpretation of it. How old were you? Twenty-seven. Nah, <laughs> twelve or thirteen. Yeah, thirteen well, or fourteen. Know at that age. Thirteen. Like, who probably. fucking knows anything? Yeah. I don't like people who self harm. I, no, I, it's, I, it's not that I don't like them. It's just it makes me so uncomfortable, and I and I don't understand it myself. I'm I'm really ignorant about it, and it just really rubs me the wrong way. I I I want them to stop. That's my main. That is stop, stop. Yeah, you got to be and on your own team. There's gonna be people in this world who aren't on your side. You can't be one of them, right? Yeah, yeah. you're not gonna, gonna get far if the first roadblock you run into is you. Damn. Do you yeah, I don't understand do it. That like ice and salt thing. Oh like, God! Oh, I'm gonna put a bunch of salt on the back of my hand and hold ice on it, and it's gonna give me a burn. And it was like, but, but why? Yeah, it like, burns the top layer of your skin bullied. off and leaves nobody a nasty wants scar. You to do this. Yeah, I, I. Is it permanent the scar? It can be if you hold it there long enough. Yeah, the, it, the, it's the a closest... serious. It's a serious like uh, frostbite that it creates. The, the 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 salt lets the ice go to a really low temperature, and you know you're numb from the ice, so you don't really feel the pain. Like if you were branding yourself after a while, you'd be like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa that's enough of that." But with ice, you can just be like, "Yeah, this is cool, huh? Yeah, I'm super oh. hardcore if I hold it longer, right?" And before you know it, you've got a really nasty scar. Hmm. Yeah, that very dumb. Very dumb things that yeah, there were so many of those do. weird things that we did and that kids did, and like especially like the mid like around 20, 2008 to 2015, it seemed like like and I think the news media was was just ma blowing things way out of proportion and a lot of times like like find out the new craze snorting condoms tonight at seven. It's like how many people snorted a condom to make you do this news story because I think it was three. Yeah. I think three condoms got snorted nationwide. And all of a sudden, you've got to do a whole fucking expose on it. And now tomorrow, 300 kids are out buying Trojans. Oh, it's the same thing that like the media does now with social media, where they'll be like, there's a craze of kids eating Tide Pods. And then it's like, well, really, you found five tweets and three YouTube videos. And 
and now there's a huge glut of these things cropping up. Yeah, oh, like, like a legit one. Like, like I remember the cinnamon challenge. Like that was cool. Yeah, I think like, I, like nobody funny. got hurt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was funny to watch. Or the ice bucket thing when they were raising money for whatever neurological disease that was. Luke um, Eriks, maybe a. <sighs> I have three letters in it. Anyway, L H L H S or something. I'm 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 spacing out on that one. But in any case, you know, all those celebrities dumping water on themselves, and and some find some found a little funny twist to it, and when everybody was doing that stupid dance, um, and Harlem the shake. Harlem Shake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did a Harlem Shake. I did a Harlem oh, Shake. Funny. I did. It wasn't bad. Yeah. Um. I, I, a woman is That's trying what... to end the cinnamon challenge after her son's death. <laughs> oh, fuck no. you. Your son was a pussy. You know if what? cinnamon killed your boy, then he was not going to make it too deep <laughs> into the world. All right? I... Cinnamon? This is really funny. <laughs> Should you be one of those internet types, an avid YouTube watcher, a Tumblr pre-user, a safe... This is like 2014. A Facebook scroller? It's quite likely you are. And if you've made it this far, beware. Memes can be deadly. No, you probably won't have a conniption fit from watching too many GIFs or a stroke from scrolling through the Jesus. fat Jews Instagram feed. But should you try to replicate some of the allegedly harmless idiocy that occurs in those slapstick videos of assorted challenges, you might not come out alive. Okay, Apparently, boomer. Apparently someone breathed enough fucking cinnamon to ruin their lungs. Dude, you'd <laughs> think I'd be anti-okay boomer because of my age, but I'm not. I fucking love the whole OK Boomer thing. My Facebook feed is filled with insults on younger people that aren't <clears throat> that aren't accurate, and that bothers. Me. Like, a, you know, these guys think they're going to start a revolution. They can't even start a lawnmower. OK Boomer. Oh my God! It's just all these dumbass old people like me insulting young people with these sweeping generalizations that are bullshit. I love that OK Boomer is an effective comeback that apparently older guys don't like. I saw some funny like tweet where someone was like, I'm dreading when Kamala Harris or Pete Buttigieg calls Biden a boomer and ruins the whole joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, OK Boomer. Yeah, it's... It, they I, rip I on millennials ruthlessly. They rip on Gen Xers. They think they're so much better. And of course, every old generation does that to every young generation. But... Uh, I don't know, something about this time around. They just seem to genuinely think that everyone who's 22 is a boy in a dress and, you know, doesn't understand genders or something like that. And it's just, okay, Boomer, shut the fuck up. Yeah, shut the fuck up, Boomer. <laughs> All of our Boomer listeners, that's you, Woody's parents. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, name a more Boomer vacation than going to Israel. <laughs> I don't know what a boomer vacation is. It's a cruise. Uh, oh, a cruise. Okay, fair enough. That's a, a cruise around Israel. <laughs> <laughs> That's a boomer one. But yeah, I, I don't know. Boomer memes are funny until they get too big and just like every meme, it stops being funny. You have to wait is for the new thing to come. I was surprised that Trump got booed at the UFC event. That was surprising. I, 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 heard, seeing but I thought that was his I thought that was his fucking crowd. And you but know, he's, he's got a close Yeah, it's it's New York, right? Mm. It was Madison Square, Square Garden, Garden, right? Yeah, so there's going to be mm. liberals there. But it's also his hometown. Still, you know, it's, it's a, a cage fight. You, you know, the, he's got a close relationship with Dana White. Mm -hmm. um, you see Dana's Instagram that, that he, he and Trump were like by themselves, like backstage watching the prelims in the green room and stuff. And then they booed the shit out of him, though. Yeah, the, he had some bad election results, too, on Tuesday. Like the... Uh, in Kentucky, the governor's a Democrat now, and in Virginia, the Democrats swept all the House and Senate and what have you. Yeah, I mean, they haven't had total control in decades, and they do right now. Let's go, Bernie! It, it's getting closer and closer to the election, and I just don't fucking care this time. Like, I'm not getting sucked into it. You better I'm not get energized, absorbed. I'm not, <laughs> you, you better start it, feeling the burn, Taylor. Kyle, you if better it helps start. you, I'll vote. Actually, I'm not going to vote. I'm not taking. Fuck it. No, because I'm. Maybe still if Taylor sure. votes, he'll carry Missouri. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. No, Missouri's not. This going. just That's in. Missouri goes to yeah, Biden by one vote. <laughs> <laughs> no, it could have been Bernie. No, 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 no. no yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just am not into it this year very much. Maybe when it gets closer, I will, but I still... I like, follow just it not... every day, but I try not to talk about it on the show. Yeah, they need to narrow that shit down. There's there's way too many of them. There's been way too many for a long time. When, when they get down to like the top three, mm. I think we'll have uh, something interesting. Um, I don't know how any... Warren is so... 
anti-charismatic, uncharismatic. Like, uh. like, like I can't stand to look at her and hear her talk. She looks like a like a, a like a bitchy school teacher. Okay, I like Bernie way more yeah. than I like her. I like I like Bernie and I like all of them better than her. She is my least favorite. Although I didn't, mm. I, I mean, Beto, Be, Beto was my least favorite. And actually, then Biden would be pretty funny. Like he's already clearly losing his mind. I'm fine with Biden. Biden's a, Biden's Biden's cool enough. You know, like if it's gonna be somebody, it, it, number one choice is obviously Bernie. Uh, dude says he's gonna legalize marijuana the first day and expunge everybody's fucking records. I gotta go with that. No, he's not. Trump said we were going to get out of wars the first day and all this sort of stuff. Bernie Sanders has promises. never told a lie. I've never knowingly told a lie except <laughs> for a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, Bernie Sanders is honest though, right? Like, 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 he doesn't have he Trump's really, honesty problem for sure. Yeah. You know, Trump, Trump tells, has told a thousand or so lies. They it's keep like track 10, of them. 10,000. It's at outrageous. Trump doing this. Look at literally every president who's ever run in modern history where they're, day one, we're doing this. And then they get in and it's like, well, let's take it slow. That's not actually true. A lot of people, when they have a first day thing, it's things they can just sign, and it is true. Yeah, Obama said he was going to close Guantanamo Bay day one. It said he was going to pull people out immediately. Like, that didn't fucking happen. Uh, Turns out, not such a good idea. Turns out, (laughs) people there are pretty fucked. (laughs) I went. They called me a terrible (laughs) word. word. It's six letters, two G's in the middle. You can guess what it is. It starts with an F, actually, surprisingly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just not into it. Every, every time hockey season comes around, it's like, yeah, oh, whatever. What do you mean every time it comes around? It, to, to, to hear you tell it, it's nine months out of the fucking year, right? It's only nine months when we do well. Otherwise, it's like six. That is half. shocking to me. That has it, is it the longest sports season that exists? No, it matches up with basketball pretty much exactly. That's why There's you don't get many basketball, basketball and hockey fans. Like I, Because I, basketball starts like one week a week and a half after hockey and ends like a week to a week and a half after hockey. Ends. I know that I'm the weird one that I'm not into any of these team sports. They just don't mean anything to me, but, but I, they just don't, I just don't care. You know, like, like if, if, if I just don't feel like they represent me at all in any kind of way. And I don't understand being a fan of the Lakers. It's like, all right. Yeah. Why? Because they're good at basketball, right? And you like seeing basketball perform well. Oh no, no, no! Lakers for life. Even when they're bad, I like to watch. Well, I, I don't get that. Like you're a fan of like the colors that they wear. You just like the gold and purple or whatever. Like like. I mean, well, they're, I like- they're from Los Angeles. Represent. It's like, no, they're not. No, no they're not. The team, they, they imported them from every fucking other state because they're the best that they could afford to buy. These are mercenaries. It's a mercenary sport. Uh, all right. sports are. And I, don't I just get that. I like. I like the sport of hockey. Like I'll, I'll watch like if the fucking, like if we weren't doing the show tonight and yeah. the Islanders were playing the Penguins, both very good teams this year. Mm-hmm. Islanders are better. They're on a, they were on a 10 game win streak until the Penguins won in overtime. I would have watched that game. Like I like watching the sport of hockey. I enjoy I'm glad it. you said that because that's how I define an actual sports fan. In my opinion, you know, I, I think that if you will watch the sport being played, regardless of who's playing it, as long as it's at a high mm-hmm. level, then you're just a sport, a fan of the game. And by doing that, maybe you can come to admire a player or a team. But I don't. But but I think bandwagon fans are the best fans because those are the fans who give you honest feedback. They're giving you honest feedback, and they're like, "Hey, I like what I'm seeing right there. I'm a fan of this, not a fan of like some nostalgic bullshit from from when I was 13 and the Bulls won. Like like not that because that doesn't matter. Jordan's not playing ball mm-hmm. anymore. There's Scotty Pippen's no. dead, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, no, I, really. I, give, I, give shit. I know he's not. For the, for but, the longest time, I gave shit to Hawks fans because, number one, they're our rival and we have to give them shit. And they had such a ridiculous bout of success with three Stanley Cups over the course of like five or six years. Like, But even then, like now I'm seeing friends of mine who didn't give a fuck about the Blues just being like, oh, I'm all about the Blues now. They're awesome. They're great Like because we won the Stanley Cup. And so they're getting really popular. But even yeah. that, like, I don't dislike... Like, I don't actually dislike the bandwagon fans. It's just a nice little chirp to throw out there and, and be like, oh, you didn't even know. And at this point, like, it's been long enough that, like, Hawks fans, even on the hockey Reddit, will be like, I've been a fan ever since the team was created in 2010. <laughs> <laughs> because that's Yeah, I, I understand being a fan of a, of, of a player, you know, in the same way I understand being a fan of a fighter. And, like, like, I, could, like, like I would totally understand it if somebody was like, a Colts fan because they liked Peyton Manning. And then when he goes to another team, they're like, oh, 
now I'm a Vikings fan or, you know, wherever he goes. You know, I, I get Denver, that. Yeah. I, I just don't. It was Denver. Yeah. I was spacing out. Um, but, but still, I, I just don't understand being a fan of like the mascot and the, 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 the Jersey. It doesn't, it's never and made you can sense. Also to me. Like, like the way it is for me, like I like different styles of hockey. So like the blues are a very big defensive, slow the game down, hit really, really hard. And like play a little dirty, frankly, like the blues are like of the teams existing now, they're probably the dirtiest. I like that style. It's more old school hockey. They grind you down and then like going into game day threads and seeing like, you know, I don't know. I'm just picking a random team, like a a fucking Philly fan being like, why are they being, this isn't hockey. Why are they just grinding us and hitting us so hard? A Philly fan would not say that. I, I know I was fucking with you. <laughs> just but uh, let's say uh for let's say a Penguins fan. Oh, perfect, right? Agates. Yeah. <laughs> Look at these people with their manly beards. Yeah, like a Penguins fan. Like I, I, I like seeing that. But I also like my Eastern Conference team, the Tampa Bay Lightning. They're all run and gun, super fast. They try and make the other team play their game. And if you can't keep up with them, you're not going to do well. They have too many high skill players. And so I enjoy the different styles and the way the game can be played. And like you can watch the Blues play the Lightning. And if the Lightning is able to force the Blues to try and play catch up with me, Lightning are going to blow us out. They're going to win for sure. If the Blues are laying heavy hits and making the Lightning players a little bit scared because there's a team on the smaller side, Blues are going to win. Like you'll see a puck battle going in and you'll see fucking Kucherov going and then you'll see Petrangelo going in and you, you'll you see Kucherov pull back a little bit. Like, uh, that Kucherov, I don't want to get fucking Petrangelo hammered. Petrangelo matchup for the ages. <laughs> for, the, for the ages. <laughs> yeah. Or Pareko, who is... Oh, right. I, I love... Uh, Pareko is one of the best defensemen in the league. He's like six foot six. Or, he's an enormous guy who plays for us and he has the hardest slap shot in the league now at this point, I would say. And so often when he winds up to take one from the point, he'll hit a player. And if he hits someone on the other team, they'll like, he's shot the skate blade off of people before. And so like the blade will come off and the guy who got hit will try and put his foot down. And then he just eats shit and falls and has to have like another player <laughs> wow. push him to the bench. The fuck? But other times he'll take a wind up and slap it and it'll hit one of our guys. And the guy will be like spitting blood. Like, <laughs> it's like come on, man. You're in the NHL. Get a little more accurate. With that. Please just, <laughs> just hit the other players. If you're going to hit someone, don't ruin our guy's teeth. They do that enough on their own. Anyway, enough hockey. We can move past that. What did you think? Right. Oh, I just bought that Nerf blaster. No big deal. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's a $50 Nerf gun. It's do, 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 do. <laughs> No, I, I can infer the do, 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 the sound yeah. it's going to make. But what's the purpose of this? You know, on a Nerf blast. <laughs> Kyle's new girl gun. is like, I'm into toys. And he misunderstood. Well, I, can't have, I can't own real guns <laughs> anymore. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm going to play with my Nerf. I, I saw the commercial on YouTube and I was like, man, I used to love Nerf guns when I was a kid. Oh, it's Nerf or nothing. It's Nerf or nothing. And, and and I was like, wait a minute. I'm being honest. I still like Nerf. Yes. <laughs> and I got $50 to spend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should have bought two. I feel like it'd be more fun if you had an opponent. No, buy a shitty gun for your opponent. <laughs> right, right. Buy some, dude. You, this belongs on a Tinder profile. Come on over. I got dueling Nerf guns. I, I'm, I I'm you, into toys. Standing I like shirtless. Just, just, I hope you like toys. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've got lots of toys, and she gets there like showing up, and we're like, check this out. <laughs> vibrator or uh, like a jackrabbit or whatever. Nope, you just fire. She's got a suction cup rifle. on her forehead. Yeah, just, <laughs> you know, like, not just one, just... <laughs> little yeah. unicorn. I fucking love Nerf guns. That was so much fun. I didn't like Nerf as a kid because you would always try and establish the rules in someone's basement. Like, if you get hit, you gotta be dead. You gotta be out. And there was no honor system as eight-year-olds. No. I would know. I cheated so much. Completely different than adult and paintball. Totally different. <laughs> yeah, we switched to uh, airsoft not that long after that, and then and then to paintball as soon as I, as soon as I could get a paintball gun. Um, yeah, that, that, that paintball's the best. No, we don't. 
Paintball's the best because like that was always the dream for anybody who played with Nerf guns as a kid. It's like, well, I hit you. No, you didn't. I hit you first. But now we've got a gun mm-hmm. that fucking shoots balls of paint at 300 feet per second. We're going to know. That's why paintball's better than airsoft. Yeah, Cuts down is. on cheating. I, yeah. Everyone says that. I've only played airsoft one day and it seemed like it hurt enough that people would desperately want you to stop hitting them. Nah, they wear like super, it depends where and how you're playing. But in my experience, like I've played in out here in Atlanta in like the indoor se- close quarters battle airsoft. And it's like a, a gigantic room filled with like um, plywood, like rooms, you know, like, 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 yeah. like, like mocked up YouTube. houses. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're just laning people to <laughs> like shooting like that. And people are wearing such things. Thick fucking army combat nonsense that like they don't care if you hit them. I played. I went with fucking my paintball pants and a t-shirt. I it played in the hurt. desert, and, and that might have made the difference too. Like you would yeah. suffer in a whole different way if you were really padded up. Yeah, wow. they were so padded up. I was I was not happy with it with like playing with them because like everybody had this like they, they had like the big military bullshit and knee pads and elbow pads and big like gloves with the like kevlar knuckles on them and shit like they don't feel it i mean they could they could tell if they've been hit but it it doesn't hurt them enough to quit Mm. it was hurting me enough though like like you know you're going room to room like you are you know in call of duty when you run right into the guy and you both spray each other down real quick when that happens in real life (laughs) it is excruciating because we both have like fully automatic m4s that shoot four or five hundred feet per second and we just spray each other down at close at like point blank range until somebody lets off the trigger and just it, it hurt. It really hurt. Yeah, it's no joke. Yeah. But yeah, I, I didn't I never liked that because of the cheating. And then um, laser tag just never really works for real. But so paintball has always been my thing for sure. So you mentioned a while ago about horses and movies charging into like foot soldiers and just wrecking them. Mm hmm. What's I, I have my suspicions that in real life, that's not cool at all. Right. Like I'm, picture I'm on a horse and you and your hundred people are on foot. I feel like I'd get, I don't know, I take out two or three guys as I plunge into the mass and now I'm surrounded by people. My horse is freaked out. We're getting poked at with swords and spears. You're just going to your death. Right. No, those guys were like the um, the height of military technology of their time. Like they're they're covered in armor. Um, you know, the horses got a lot of armor, and the guys they're attacking are those foot soldiers. You know, there, there weren't a lot of professional armies back then. A lot of times, it's just some a- bunch of assholes out there, and he's just swinging that sword. And and if he's on that, if he's a knight, like an actual knight, it's like the Spartan story we always hear. It's, it's like it's like Athenian. What is what is your profession? I'm a potter. <laughs> and then he looks back, Spartans, what is your profession? And then, Haru, Haru, <laughs> Haru. It's like the guy on that horse, like that's all he's up to. Like, like he's, it's just like Game of Thrones. The most realistic part is probably that those, those noble born people like Jon Snow, you know, they've just been training with a master of arms their whole life. So when he gets up north of the wall and he's, he's like going ham on everybody and the main guy's like, he probably didn't have a master of arms when he was eight. That's the first time he's ever picked up a sword, John. Maybe slow down. And John's <laughs> like, fuck. Hey, they, I guess you're right. Shit. I, I mean, I, am I the asshole? Like, yeah. Yeah, you are. So I, I think it's like, if, that, it's like if John showed up in like the pottery house and was trying to do it. And he's like, get it better, retard. <laughs> Can't you do it, retard, idiot, dummy. I wouldn't. I wouldn't serve my dog milk out of that jar. Spill all out over the place. Yeah, yeah but you're you're right. You know, you you're crashing into that line of people, which probably isn't that thick. You know, the line of people depends on the ma- line too. Because I've what that's the problem. You get four, eight people deep, and now you're surrounded, and you've got an issue. Yeah, it depends. You know, a lot of those. Every time we see a, one of those battles in a movie, it seems like it's like twenty thousand versus ten thousand. But yeah. I think in reality, it it was you know a lot of those battles was like ah oh, the English have three thousand men and and the, and the Scottish had brought eighteen hundred. It's like well how and and by the time they spread the lines out and they've got you know it's just a few thick. It, it's all that weight going that fast. 
Mm-hmm. It would be a crushing blow. I, I'm scared of horses. I like, like, like I've been around horses. They're, they're frighteningly powerful when they're just yeah. like moving around you. Just like, oh, I hope he doesn't decide to murder me right now. He can. And what was that clip of like the camel, like just biting some guy's shoulder once and just throwing him over? <laughs> I like, love just that clip. Ease. Just like, get the hell out of here, dude. Just like bit his trap muscle off and threw him. Yeah. Camels are powerful. Are there any good UFC events coming up? Uh, Max Holloway and Amanda Nunez are on like the next card. My money's on Holloway. He's going to beat the shit out of her. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Unfortunately, they're not fighting. Uh, Uh, There's a, there's Kuznetsov versus Hall. (laughs) You just made that up. (laughs) I'm just going to use, I'm just using hockey players. (laughs) 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 Dude, dry sidle versus fucking, uh, Agostino, <laughs> tell me you're not excited about that. Those <laughs> names I almost made up. I I, I, ha- I wanted to look up some like famous cavalry charges with sabers drawn. About 600 Italian cavalry men yelled out their traditional battle cry, Savoie, <laughs> <laughs> and galloped headlong toward 2,000 Soviet foot soldiers armed with machine guns and mortars. It was August 23rd, 1942. The cavalrymen, part of the Axis invasion of the Soviet Union during World War II, were attempting to close a gap that had been opened between the Italian and German lines, the Italian and German armies along the Don River. It was to be the end of an era. Though experts believe that smaller and less well-documented cavalry charges likely occurred later on in World War II and possibly as late as 1970s in Rhodesia, they generally describe this as the last major charge in history. In closely packed formation, the Italian cavalrymen hurled themselves at the left flank and rear of the Soviet line, tossing hand grenades and slashing with their sabers. Despite heavy losses, they then passed through the line in a reverse direction and helped dislodge the Soviets from their position. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> they won. <laughs> they, won? <laughs> they won. Yeah, that's a win. Wow. The that's final awesome. U.S. The final U.S. charge took place in the Philippines in 42 when the pistol-wielding horsemen of the 26th Cavalry Regiment temporarily scattered the Japanese. Soon after, however, the starving U.S. and Filipino soldiers were forced to eat their own horses. So that ended the, <laughs> the 26th Cavalry's charging days. They ate their fucking Should horses. have ended the story on the Italian victory. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably should have. Probably should have. Yeah, man, imagine how upsetting it has to be to be one of those guys where you're like, are you shitting me? <laughs> like, I'm a tank guy. You want, me to, you want me to hop on the back of this horse and charge in with a saber? I'm going to get molested over there. Especially with those Russians. They're, they're tough. They don't Will live they on be- the Mediterranean and, and <laughs> engage in mafia shit the way we do. <laughs> that's, uh, you know, that's the whole premise of that movie, We Were Soldiers, with Mel Gibson. Is like That was the first time the cavalry was, had transitioned you know, post-World War II into the sort of the air cavalry. Yeah, that's a good fucking movie. Yes, when he, when he tries to drag that guy off the battlefield, and the guy's been napalmed, and all the meat slides off his legs like a fucking barbecue rib. Uh-huh. Ooh, you don't heal from that. I, no. I forget which one it was. I think it was his like gunny sergeant, like a second. He didn't have a gun, and they're like, "Don't you want a gun?" And he's like, "Ah, oh, they're gonna be all over the place in no time at all." Fuck. Like, <laughs> they get to me, it's over anyway. <laughs> he's, he just had that pistol. He had that 1911. Did that guy's a good actor. Did pick up a gun and use it? Am I, I thought yeah, at one good. point, like he was yeah. like, if I must. <laughs> and, 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 like kills a guy. Yeah, it's a good fucking movie. Mel Gibson movies are almost always good. Can you, yeah, wh- What's the director. worst Mel Gibson movie? Cra- Passion of the Christ. Oh, no. I just a said that. I haven't actually people, even yeah. seen it. <laughs> it's powerful. Like, like, like You don't have to be movie. religious to be like... Fuck, just just kill him or let him go. Pick one. <laughs> Pick one. Just He's, they're just like, him. all right, now let's whip him even harder. <laughs> I was whipping him as hard as I could, sir. Well, give me a bigger man and a bigger whip, too. And they just, they just, just all day, they're just beating the shit out of this guy. Just, just worse and worse. I, I and he's just recently, like, bring it on. I watched recently the South Park from when the Passion of the Christ came out. Oh, God. And uh, Cartman uses it to, like, try and 
get Nazis going again. You know, oh God! Like, and the Jews, they're the ones who killed Jesus, and they killed Jesus, and and like he gets like a big group of people who all love the Passion, and they think it's all about like reinstilling Christian values and things. And he's like, yeah, and he's standing up there in like a Hitler suit, and like nobody's <laughs> catching on. And he's like, when I say. They're like, oh, that must mean like Jesus is the bomb. <laughs> like, is that Arabic? Oh, that's Arabic. Yeah, that means praise Christ for all time. And then it's Cartman marching to the street going, he's shooting down Jordan as Russian. And they're going, I shoot at the Jordan as Russian. Which I think means the Jews killed Christ. <laughs> I don't know, but, but they're all like, oh, yeah, praise Christ, praise Christ. <laughs> yeah. South Park has some, some bad. It's good this year. The, the, this whole China thing, like, kind of, I bet the season wouldn't have been nearly as good if China hadn't banned them. Uh, now they have somebody to fuck with. Now they have yeah. somebody to, to, like, go after. Like, when that happened, they're like, ah, these write themselves now. Although I hated the any, Halloween yeah. episode and wasn't I, very I didn't good. see the Halloween. I haven't seen, I saw the first two, I think. But the good thing about them being able to go after China, I would imagine, is that's a target that you can say whatever you want and nobody's going to get upset. There's not an yeah. interest group here that's going to be like, hey, be cool to Xi Jinping. Like, yeah, LeBron be, James would get chill. upset. Okay, well, well, they made fun of LeBron, didn't they? Yeah, they went right after him. <laughs> yes. They literally, yeah, as didn't yeah. Cartman say exactly, exactly word, word for word, word Cartman's, ex, or I'm sorry, Le LeBron's excuse? Yeah, it's a he absolutely did. I go to the NBA subreddit. And uh, I can't quote it very well, but you know how they do a thing where they change like 5% of the LeBron quote and they reply. It happens all the time now. Like, you know, yeah. people get, people could get hurt emotionally and physically. Like they just do the whole thing, but it's, it's, it's just now see, it's copy pasta. Yeah. Did you but see Randy like Zach, killing like they, Winnie they, the Pooh? They rephrase it for the situation. Oh yeah. Did you see Randy killing Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> no. I'll watch uh, an episode or two after this. If I'm yeah, you got you got at least one more good one ahead of you. It's uh, well, did you see Randy go to China? I saw him go to China when he's like, "Oh yeah, that's that's my weed. That's integrity." And they just take him and throw him in Chinese. <laughs> he goes prison. marijuana, yes. <laughs> and they're just like, "Oh, very illegal." And then just fucking they throw him in that horrible prison. I love when he's sitting there and he looks over, and that guy just takes the most uncomfortable squat shit in that hole in the floor <laughs> and then he looks out the window and the guard just blows a prisoner's brains out for no fucking reason it's dark they don't, Do they're not pulling any, any punches yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's real fucked up and yeah they're well they're banned in china now i wonder uh, i wonder how easy it is if you're in china to like if you wanted to watch it to to make that happen probably super easy with the internet like could do could they get like a get a vpn I, I don't I don't know the don't answer know. to that question. I don't know I either. Have no idea. I don't know how China works. I just know there's like four times as many of them over there as there are here, and they're yep. they're catching up, man. We'll <laughs> see. I, I wonder. I wonder because um, I think everyone agrees that China's economy is going to pass ours, and there's a lot of stuff that supports that. Like I, I get that. Um, and by one measure, I forget which it's already passed. But Japan looked like this too. If you look at it, Japan, it was like their economy reached 85 or 90% of the size of ours. And it looked like they were going to pass us by. And then they kind of fell apart. When was this? Call it Just... the late 80s. You know, that Japan was oh, catching okay. us like that. And um, China, it, you know, in some ways, brilliant economy. They haven't been wasting all their money with pointless wars in the middle east like we have they've been investing into their infrastructure and so like that's great 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 on the other hand they also have lots of shady bullshit all sorts of incomplete buildings really low quality that like a, a lot of the things that they do is built on sort of lies and bullshit and uh i wonder if that haunts them if the u.s did ever collapse china would collapse as well like it is what i've heard like they can't maintain any part of their economy without their advantageous exports and import relationship with us. It's weird. Like, yeah. They, we they, buy way more of their shit than they buy of our shit by an order of magnitude. So people smarter than me point that out as a real like weakness in what they have going on. You know, like, like, you know, America's doing, America's okay, but you know, like China's really dependent on exports. They don't have all those exports. Their whole world crashes. And it's like, yeah. wow, I thought that was good. 
I thought it was good when everyone in the world wanted to buy your stuff. And, you know, we're, we import too much. I thought that was bad. Mm-hmm. But apparently... Well, it is bad for being sustainable. Like, we need more manufacturing here. Maybe they'll get some sort of a horrible, like, uh, virus going over there <laughs> that'll kill, like, half of them. I just wonder <laughs> if, like, all this infrastructure they built up, there's, like, no building codes or building codes that they ignore, you know? They, they, and that starts to bite them at one point. Like the Russian Olympic Village? Remember that? Yeah, stuff like that. Like it, it's... Yeah, that was a joke. I... <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny to see like the social media come back from like uh, our athletes. And like, like they, they like turn on the faucet and the shower comes on. <laughs> <laughs> the doorknobs like... don't lock and stuff. Yeah, like it, it was crazy. Dude, it was that... some Dr. Seuss shit. I know it's UFC stuff, but uh, two things. One, John Jones announced his next opponent. Kia. Dominic, how do you pronounce it? Rise? Reyes? Reyes? R-E-Y-E-S? Reyes. Reyes. Um, I don't know. what Dude, the guy's undefeated. He's big. He's strong. He's a 205-er. He's not just a 185-er that came up like most of his other fights. But something about the dude's uninspiring to me. I, I think I'm judging him by his physique too much. But Dominic Reyes has dad bod. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm not seeing that in the image. I mean, I mean here he is at a weigh-in. I think that's usually pretty telling. Um, I'm showing him on fight night right now, and he's just... Um, there's a link. Okay, let's see what you got. Six foot four. Uh, that's Ooh, the that's best of boy. him. Yeah, he's six I mean, four. He... I don't know how tall Jones is or if he's a true six four. Um... Really, I think the beard and the and the fact that he's not ripped, right? Like he he definitely has a bottom half body for the UFC, right? Even a bottom quarter. But he's undefeated, so I guess he's this good guy at in the fighting. picture. You're saying, yeah. Oh, this guy's this guy's pretty fucking built, dude. Just search his name. Do a Google image search on his name of Dominic Dominic Reyes. 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 Yeah, okay. and just I don't know. Look around at the different pictures that show up for him. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. No. Yeah, I I mean, look, he's no Paul Costa or whatever, but he's also probably not a cheater. You know, like like, like John Jones. Um I we we we're gonna have to agree to disagree on that <laughs> one. I, I'm not aware of any proof that John Jones has ever done any cheating. Except that maybe on some girlfriends and And the eye pokes did, and he, the steroids. Well, you know, the eye pokes were incidental, and I'm not aware of any proof that he's done any steroids. <laughs> um, but it d- it did seem that he did hit and run that uh, pregnant chick, pregnant woman, which I think just gives him another victory on his record. Yeah, no two. That's right. He got the little one too. That's, right. <laughs> That's a one-two punch there. Um, you know, un- undefeated, undisputed champion. Just we'll just see how he game. does. I'm convinced he's. Due for a loss, and let's not convince this guy can give it. I mean, to he's him. definitely due for a loss. Yeah, never, okay. Never. Um, oh, and the other thing is, you were talking about Nunez and Holloway. Oh, yeah. Olby versus Usman's on that card. That's a massive card. It really yes. is. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. I, yeah. Uh, I'm going to pick, I'm going to, I'll make my picks now. Uh, Nunez, who's Holloway fighting again? Volkanovsky. Yeah. Uh, Nunez, Holloway, um, um, uh, Colby wins his, and uh, John Jones is on that card. No, no, he just announced. I was going to say, God damn it! Yeah, what's the other fight then? Those are the three big ones. Uh, okay, do you want the well, other... I definitely pick Holloway, Nunez, and uh... wow, I'm really spacing out here. Camaro. So I'm going to say Nunez wins. I agree. Colby. I'm going to say Holloway wins. I agree, and I'm going to say the Colby fight doesn't happen because Camaro gets busted for peds. Ah, well, if it, 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 that's a Colby win no matter what then, because if they do fight, I, my money's on Colby uh, for, for sure. I look, is uh, Nunez fighting Duran to me, eh? At 135 or 145? I thought it was 35. Uh, you're right about, it would be 45, right? Um, it could be either, because Nunez is 35, champ champ. It says on Yeah, the... I thought it was. Yeah, I, didn't, I don't think Duran to me wanted to fight at 145, okay. uh, and it, you know. I hate Duran to me, so I'm really looking forward to Nunez beating the dog shit out of that horse faced. She's the one fucking... that was cheap against Holly Holmes, right? Yeah, yeah, and and it's it's taken about two and a half, three years for her to get her comeuppance, but it's coming. 
This is Nunez my this was always no my dream. Whenever I saw like even back in the day, like some asshole was a jerk. Like, give him a title shot. Let Chuck Liddell have at him. You know, because that guy will will put him to sleep. And, and like Duran to me, I'm with you. She's one of my least favorite. Amanda Nunez is gonna take care of it, but I'd feed her to John Jones for all I care. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. For real, yeah, I would be fine watching her be assaulted. I hate that woman <laughs> yeah. so much. Like, like, I'm with you. <laughs> like, like I, I would be okay if, if it was a situation like when um, um, Jorge Masvidal beat that guy up at the press conference after the fight. Leon like, Edwards, if, if, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If, if Jorge happens to be around after the fight, you know, hands behind his back and Durand <laughs> me bucks at him, and he just unleashes one of those elbows he hit Diaz with, then I, I won't Dude, I won't say a word. I just happened to catch uh, that... Uh, why am I spacing? Masvidal was interviewing JRE today. It happened like eight months ago or something. Yeah, and uh, his story was fucking hilarious to me. Because he's like, you know, Leon Edwards asked me when we were going to fight. I started to tell him he told me to shut up. <sighs> so I went over to him and I feared for my life. I was I was scared. My hands were behind my back. I was defenseless. There was nothing I could do but hit him four times. <laughs> like, are you fucking kidding me? He's like, he had all these hooligans around him. I was concerned. It's like you're so yeah, there was a writer from ESPN and there was this, uh, this lady passing by and I believe that his elderly father was there too. And he, he made a move toward me. I was like, I think that was his breath. I think he was inhaling. Like, was yeah, scared. yeah. It looked very offensive. And, and, and the mask would all just hands come from behind his back and just starts going fucking ape shit. On yeah. Guy. He's pretending he's handcuffed. Like, oh yeah. Can't get me. I'm a little concerned. <laughs> There's no handcuffs on. Just beat the shit out of him. Masvidal's fighter of the year, man. I hope he wins it. He deserves it. It's fighter of the year. I mean, I mean, I mean, well, it could be Cejudo. It could be Nunez. Um, and it could be Jones. He fought a lot. All right, you know, he he did. What do you get? Three decision wins though. He's gonna fight four times this year. You know. Oh, is that right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you fight, you win four, you know, decisions or split decisions or not. You you win four fights in the UFC in one year after being off for that long and then coming right back. Might be fighter of the year, but my money would go to Jorge just on entertainment value. He's been the most entertaining, entertaining, <clears throat> entertaining out of all of them for me with that Askren KO. And I love Askren, it's, but goddamn. He's fought twice this year. Oh, he's twice or so three for the year then. Yeah, it, it might be four times within a year because he fought December 29th. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. It's... I'm counting that then. Come on, give me the two days. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Uh, um, but yes, yeah, so this will be his third. Oh, well, I'm not even sure it'll be this year. He just announced the fight. I don't get the date. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. But yeah, th- I think those are the contenders for fighter of the year. Um, Cejudo obviously went in two belts um, and coming back against Dominic Cruz, I believe it was, it really convincingly in that really crazy fight, the championship fight. Cruz. Who'd he beat? Yeah, I could. It, maybe it wasn't. Um, I don't know that weight class is fighters very well. I don't. I don't care about that weight class, frankly. Cejudo's the most interesting thing in it, and he's the yeah. only interesting thing in it. You know, um, especially with Mighty Mouse gone. I'd love to see just him and Mighty Mouse fighting every three months forever. Let's just do that. Keep rolling it back. Dillashaw. Dillashaw. Oh That's yeah, that that was a good win. But that. there was another one where he came back. Yeah, Morales um, is the one you're thinking of. Morales, that's the one, yeah. yeah, for sure. And then Nunez taking Cyborg apart. Um, and I think she also beat Holly uh, in the same year. Um, so that's super duper impressive. Not so much for Holly, but Cyborg. And the way she took Cyborg down. That wasn't some five-round point fight where she like danced around and ran from Cyborg. She out cyborg cyborg. She mauled her and just hit her with bombs like you've never seen in that weight class. Holly Holmes has any women a weird career. Like she's I I, like uh, she has a crisp Weidman career, right? Some really impressive wins and some really nice losses in there. Mm -hmm. You know, she lost to some quality opponents. She looked pretty good prior to the knockout. You know, like like there's a lot of parallels with her and Chris Weidman. Yeah. But she's a fan favorite, and they just keep bringing her back. I don't know how many she's lost at this point. No. Like out of her last five, it's four. Look her up. It's not good. 
It's not good. Like I, I bet her last 10 is probably something like six or seven losses. She's another one that I look at for peds a lot. Yeah, you don't like her big pussy. <laughs> I don't say not like is the is your your phrasing is you off. I don't like the look of that big cunt I, you have no, there. No, no, no. I, so I'm, too much. Bit, I'm totally fine so with the look of it. I'm just suspicious of its development. Yeah. But she <laughs> one, two, three, four, five losses out of her last seven. Yeah, that's nasty. That's that's no good. Right. Um you know, Connor's coming back soon. I I I think. Interesting you know. fighter. I it's never it's hard to tell though. All he does is like pretend to take fights. He says that he's uh, said yes twice, but I and I believe him because here's the thing: there was a time, obviously, when like all if he said yes, they were like, "All right, yeah, fill in, get in there, go." But he's such a big name now, and he gets whatever his contract is. God knows, like he's getting such a big piece of the pie that they need like three months to promote this guy to get their money's worth out of him. I think, and he's and good so, at it, right? Like half yeah, of the value that Connor brings is the media tour. So when whenever somebody drops out, like 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 I think there's been twice that he says there's twice where like fighters have dropped out and and he's been like, hey, I'll jump in, and they were like, no, no, we can't pay you. I'm just making it up. We can't pay you ten percent of the fucking pay per view that we take in tonight without use without getting like a sixty days of you pumping this thing up and traveling to fucking Ireland and getting getting people getting the Irish to fly over here to Vegas and and getting the whole like a montage cooked up and everything without, without the promo tour, you're literally just not as valuable. And that just makes sense. Unless so, he'd fight for less, right? Like if he, uh, I guess maybe that's pay him his worth move. as the man says, well, but he's not worth as much without the media tour. If he was like, Hey, if I could not do the media tour thing, maybe he'd be interested in like, I'll take 7 million and I'll just go fight. Yeah. You know, instead of, Traveling all over and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I'll watch when he fights, and I'll be a fan till he does. I, I like the guy. I find him he's just so fascinating. Um, I dislike the guy, but I like him on my TV. You know, I'm yeah, interested in the Nate Diaz is that way too. It's he's already complaining, saying he didn't really lose. He's a bad loser. He's a bad winner. Terrible loser. He's he's uh, it, it denies what's obviously truth. He uh, thinks he beat Connor that second time. He did. I don't. Though. I've watched that fight three fucking times. Like, like whenever I bought like the ESPN <laughs> fight thingy, the monthly subscription Plus, service, I, that, yeah. I was like, "Holy shit! I can just watch this fight whenever I want." And I watched it once by myself. And then my dad came over. He didn't know who Conor McGregor was, so I was like, "Let's just watch every fight he's ever had." <laughs> and uh, and and after watching it three times, like I think I'll agree with the professional judges and the the vast majority of the human beings who also watched it and say. It looked like he was gonna chop him down by round three. Connor did like like he was somehow the leg kicks just stopped working. Nate was <laughs> limping and at the end of round two and like having a mobility problem. And then somehow in rounds four and five. three and four, like it just stopped. It was almost like they snuck him a fucking shot in the <laughs> in the in the corner. Leg went numb and he didn't have to worry about it anymore. But Honestly, that's what it looks like. It, it's it's almost like his legs went numb and now he could no longer feel them. He's a real fucking warrior. He was, it, like, there's that part in Sin City where they're, where uh, Clive Owen is doing the voiceover and he's talking about Marv, Marv's character sitting at the bar. And he's like, Marv would have fit in fine on some battlefield 1,200 years ago, putting a battle axe through some other fool's head. They'd have thrown him girls like Nancy back then. And it's like, yeah, he does not belong in our time. He's a goddamn barbarian. I feel like Nate Diaz is almost that kind of guy. He'd have been a great fucking... Nate Diaz says ass. that. He's like, I'd be the baddest caveman out there, you know? And and I think, you know what? If no one else is on steroids, he's way up there. Now, I don't think Masvidal's on steroids. But mm -hmm. um, I, I'm sure he's fought guys who are. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, wonder, I think Masvidal's a bad motherfucker, though. I think that about Lozon's career, too. Like, you know, how much yeah. better would his career have been if everyone else was clean? Mm hmm Yeah, I agree. He he definitely have a couple more wins, and the, those right. wins might translate themselves to win streaks and translate themselves to different fights in front of him that are better matchups. You never know. Right. You know, there's an alternate universe where Joe beats Pettis, you know, You're and right. gets a title shot. Uh, you know, that that would that that, that his definitely career fell off there. with USADA. Mm hmm you Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that was the case. I think if he'd beaten Pettis, especially if he'd like KO'd Pettis or like submitted Pettis, like like I think handily. so too. Yeah, that 
the guy he beat before him was fighting for a title fight. It was a uh, black guy name with um he dyed his hair oh yeah blonde. edgar melvin gallard oh, melvin gallard yeah melvin gallard would have had a title shot if he beat joe right so that's the joe was like that level he didn't when joe and pettis were on the card one of them would have filled in for the title shot on the card it was edgar versus henderson they got them to go out to japan by saying hey you know what one of those guys falls through you, you, one of you two is going to fight for a title or an interim title. It was either Joe mm. or, or Pettis. And, uh, and clearly the winner of that got a title shot. Like it, it was kind of a title eliminator and it didn't yeah. go Joe's way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah, what are you going to do? Won his last one convincingly. I hope, I hope we get to see him fight yes. again. Or I hope he just rides off in the sunset and enjoys his, uh, his, his <laughs> life. Either way is cool. Every way, either way is cool with me. The man's got a great life. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> Any outros? There are no outros. All right. By the way, Mitty loved you guys spamming him um, with with messages. So keep that up. Keep on spamming. I don't know what we're talking about. Uh, on on the PKN, I told people to message Mitty if they wanted to play with me because they have these Steam. <laughs> I don't know how to like my Steam settings like disallow like messages and friend requests from coming in. Uh huh. And. Uh, so I just directed right. them to Mitty. Well, hey, if you want to play with Taylor or I, send a message to Mitty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and if you have any packages you'd like to send to me or Taylor, Woody's address, easily Googleable. <laughs> yeah. No, you so, know what? Send those to Mitty also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It would. yeah. Actually, and he'll forward them to Woody. <laughs> 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 All right. PKA 464.